My mother is a woman who loves to have secret affairs with beasts, she disappeared in the mountains for three days and nights ten years ago. After returning, she inexplicably gave birth to me. The villagers all say she was violated by a wild animal, either a wolf or a snake, or a wild boar. Faced with the village gossip, she never explained. She quietly raised me, although I don't believe my mom gave birth to me with a wild animal. But her behavior and actions became increasingly strange. What I can't understand the most is that she goes out on the third of every month. Since I can remember, she's never home on the third of every month. At first, I didn't know where she went. But the people in the village gossip and say I'm a wild child, a wolf child. I couldn't bear to listen to it. Once on the third, I secretly followed my mother out. I eventually found out that she went up the mountain alone. I waited alone until night and saw her come down the mountain looking exhausted. Although I didn't dare to ask, from that day on, I knew that I might really be a monster's child. Otherwise, what does my mother do up the mountain on the third of every month? I thought my mother wouldn't break her appointment. Until one time, I fell from a tree while picking fruit and broke my hand, very seriously. She took care of me day and night for three days, including the third of that month. In my memory, that was the first time she didn't go out on the third. But that time, I saw her in a hurry, really wanting to go up the mountain. After I got better, my mother went up the mountain. She came back very late and extremely exhausted that day. I didn't dare ask about it, thinking it had passed, after all, nothing happened when she didn't go out on the third. But the next day after she came back, she did something I never expected. She spent half a day rusting two characters onto a piece of cloth herself. It looked like a signboard, and I only realized it said fortune-telling when she hung it up. At that time, I simply didn't believe that my mom knew anything about fortune-telling. The fortune-tellers under the bridge are all smooth-talkers, just deceiving people. My mom doesn't even talk, so how could she tell fortunes? But with my mother and me being such an odd pair, the word spread. Some people came over just to see the joke. After all, my mother only charged 10 yuan for a fortune-telling, very cheap. Some people were attracted and came in, so my mother would do the fortune-telling. Then in less than 3 minutes, my mom wrote it down and let me read it. It turned out to be quite accurate after I read it out. In less than 3 months, my mother became a well-known fortune-teller in the surrounding area. In addition to being accurate in fortune-telling, there is also a rule that made my mother even more famous. That is, she stops once she earns 30 yuan each day, and she only charges 10 yuan for each fortune-telling. She won't take more or less, which means she only reads fortunes for 3 people a day. Even if others offer 100,000 yuan, my mother won't do the reading. And my mom has made sure I remember this rule. However, my mom's habit of going up the mountain on the third of every month remains unchanged. That day, just like every third of the month, my mother made breakfast early and then said she had something to do and left. I actually wanted to follow her up the mountain to see, because last time I only saw my mother going up the mountain, but I wasn't sure what she did up there. What if I really see my father whom I haven't seen in 15 years? After my mother left, I planned to secretly follow her up the mountain. But just as I was about to close the door, Zhang San from the neighboring village, who is a dealer in antiques, stopped me at the door. Every time there's a new treasure, he comes over and spends 10 yuan to have my mother tell him whether it's worth acquiring or if it will bring in money, and so on. I told him that my mom wasn't doing fortune telling today, but, Zhang San anxiously pushed me into the house, saying my mom wasn't there, so I should give him some advice. I looked at the center of Zhang San's forehead and found that it was shining. Plus the part of his nose that represents wealth was also glossy, indicating that he was about to have good financial luck. This indicates that the treasure he received yesterday can help him make a fortune. Zhang San took out a red envelope and stuffed it into my hand. He said, Li Chen, I know you have some skills. Let me take a look, and then I'll give you a big red envelope. Seeing that he gave me money, I immediately told him what I had just seen on his face. He looked a bit surprised after hearing it, quickly said thank you, and walked to the door. However, he stumbled at the door while leaving. He got up from the ground. He must have stumbled into something in his pocket. He took it out and looked at it, then cursed at the door. I walked over in confusion and discovered. He was holding a seal similar to a jade seal in his hand. There were several ancient characters carved underneath the seal. I couldn't see them clearly, but this jade-like seal had its left hand broken just now. This antique could be sold for a good amount of money. Now that it's been bumped and broken, it's ruined. I instinctively looked at his appearance and noticed that the glow on his nose had disappeared. With no more financial luck, it means this seal is also worthless. After Zhang San left grumbling, I quickly headed towards the mountain, but halfway there, I was stunned. Because I saw my mother actually walking back. Every time on the third, my mother has always been unwaveringly out all day. 
I thought I was mistaken, but no, my mother stood me up on the third again today. I quickly hid and watched my mother hurry back home. I felt puzzled, then couldn't resist sneaking back. I secretly peeked through my mother's room window and saw her close the door with a corner of the curtain open. She was looking for something inside the cabinet, her forehead covered in sweat, as if her body was in pain. Seeing her like this, of course I was shocked. Did my mother fall down, so she missed our appointment today? I was anxious to go in and ask, but I saw her take out a box from the cabinet. But with a crack, her left hand suddenly broke. I was scared and rushed in. My mother saw me, her face full of surprise. I hurried to support her, wanting to take her to the hospital. But my mom touched my head and said, stay at home and don't run around. She gritted her teeth and, enduring the pain, repositioned her broken hand. She walked out again, and threw out, she didn't utter a word of pain. Today is the third, and she still didn't break her promise, even with her hand broken. What does she want to do? I was really worried and hurried to follow her. But when I caught up to the foot of the mountain, I found my mother had already gone up the mountain. I searched for a long time but couldn't find her, so I had to dejectedly return home to wait. On the third of every month before, she would always be home at six o'clock, but today, I hadn't arrived home yet. From a distance, I could see it. Just now, Zhang San, who came to see me for fortune telling, came over again. It seems like he waited for a long time at my doorstep and seemed a bit anxious. I thought he came to find me for fortune telling, the word refuse was on the tip of my tongue. But he hurried over and said, I've been waiting for you for half a day. I left something at your place. Quickly open the door, let me in to get it. I shook my head, thinking to myself, is this guy confused? He didn't even enter my house just now, so how could he have left something behind? I looked at him speechlessly and noticed a spot two inches above his eyebrows. We call this place the palace of virtue and morality, where a person's moral character is displayed. His spot was just right, as if it had touched a layer of red. This is a sign of moral deficiency, indicating that this guy is up to no good. But there's nothing valuable in my house, he can't possibly be planning to steal from me, right? I opened the door and asked him what he had left behind. After all, we run a shop and there are always some customers leaving things behind. Usually, I would put them in the cabinet. As I walked towards the cabinet next to the door, I heard the sound of someone running away. I walked to the door in confusion and found that he had already run far away without looking back. I turned around helplessly and saw a seal on the table, next to it was a severed hand. Isn't this the strange seal he dropped at my doorstep this morning? The broken strange seal? I couldn't be bothered to deal with him, so I sat anxiously by the door waiting for my mother to come home. When I was bored, I glanced at the seal on the table that Zhang San had left, and found three characters, Mountain God Seal, inscribed underneath. Thinking it was a pity that the seal was broken, I decided to just go ahead and fix it. So I took out some blue from the room, put a little on each end, and connected the broken part, restoring it to its original state. I didn't intend to ask Zhang San for money either. So I just put it away in the cabinet where I usually keep forgotten items from customers. I thought that if Zhang San ever stopped giving it to me, he would come looking for it, after all, it's an antique. So I just let him find it in the cabinet himself. As I waited in a daze, I heard the sound of the door opening. I opened my eyes and saw that it was my mother who had returned. I instinctively said I was hungry, and she nodded and went to the kitchen. It was only then that I suddenly noticed her left hand, which had been broken during the day, had somehow healed. I walked over and touched it, curiously asking my mother where she had it treated. She showed a hint of pain and gently said, be good, go play, don't touch it. My arm feels a bit dry, as if there's something inside the bone, very uncomfortable. This was the first time she had spoken so much to me at once, and her words made me quickly refrain from touching her. I obediently went to the living room to wait, and after a while, she made dinner for me to eat. After finishing, I went back to my room to sleep. The next morning, I opened the door to do business, but I saw my mother sitting in a chair, constantly pinching her left arm as if it was very uncomfortable inside. I quickly went over and suggested going to the hospital to get it checked. She shook her head, sighed, and stood up, saying she still had to go out today. I couldn't help but say, but today is the fourth. My mom replied that she knew and then left. Seeing this, I felt relieved. My mother's hand was uncomfortable, so it seems necessary to see that divine doctor again. I was bored watching TV when I noticed Jang San lurking around my door. I helplessly went out and asked him what was wrong. When he saw me, his expression was as if he had seen a ghost. He asked me to stand in the sun. I asked him speechlessly what he was up to. His eyes seemed to be checking something inside the house. He asked where my mother had gone and why he didn't calculate the hexagram today. As soon as he heard that my mom had gone out, he started muttering to himself again. He said that if she had gone out, it meant everything was fine. 
That guy actually lied to me, saying that I couldn't touch that thing. He just can't stand to see me doing well. Zhang San immediately said loudly to me, Li, where is the thing I left on your table yesterday? I gave him a dirty look and said, it's in the cabinet. You can get it yourself. He opened the cabinet himself and found the seal. At a glance, it turned out to be fine. He took it out, puzzled, and asked me what was going on, and if I could repair antiques. I shook my head and said straightforwardly, it's glued with adhesive. He immediately burst out cursing, this is a freaking antique. If you don't know, then don't mess around. The glue is so visible, what's the point of me selling it? Being scolded like that by Zhang San, I can only feel embarrassed. But thinking about it, he's right. This is an antique. If it can be repaired with 502, wouldn't that make me a master? I walked over and said, why not break it again and find someone to repair it? It's just glue, it will break as soon as you pry it. Zhang San snorted and this time he behaved, carefully taking out a pre-prepared box. He put this strange mountain god seal inside, worried about breaking it again. But I feel like he didn't need to do this. The bridge of wealth he represents didn't shine. Even if he put this mountain god seal in a gold box, it wouldn't earn him a penny. Zhang San wrapped up the mountain god seal and left with it directly. But suddenly I felt that his expression was a bit strange. The center of his forehead dimmed. What's going on? After seeing Zhang San off, I continued waiting for my mom in the house, but she still hadn't returned by 6 in the morning. I was worried that my mom had hurt her hand and accidentally fallen somewhere. I hurriedly left a note on the table saying I've gone to look for you, then grabbed a flashlight and ran outside. But as soon as I ran out, I saw a figure appearing in the darkness. I quickly shone the flashlight and found it was Chao Shouzhang from the neighboring village. Chao Shouzhang can fix anything, from pots and pans to ancient artifacts and jade. When Zhang San has damaged antiques to sell, he usually goes to him for repairs. But today, Zhang San should have gone to him to repair that mountain god seal. Oh, how come he's come to me? I greeted him with confusion. He looked at me with strange eyes, shining a light at me, which made me feel uncomfortable. I asked him what he was doing, and after muttering to himself, he finally came over and said, Li Chen, that guy Zhang San, did he place a strange seal at your house yesterday? I nodded and asked, what's wrong? Uncle Zhang lowered his voice and said, Li Yi, I have to tell you something. Stay away from Zhang San in the future. He almost caused harm to you and your mother yesterday. Seeing that he was serious, I quickly asked what he meant and how Zhang San had harmed me. He asked me about the mountain god seal, and I replied that I knew a little about it. The mountain god is a deity of the mountains. Usually, they are some spiritual beings that have achieved enlightenment. He nodded as he listened to me and said, the one he took is not just an ordinary antique. It's a status symbol of the mountain god, equivalent to our ID card. But if we lose our ID card, we can just get a new one. However, if the mountain god loses its ID card, it's not that simple. This could cause chaos on the mountain, and the mountain god's identity might even be erased. So the mountain god will definitely find a way to reclaim the mountain god's seal, no matter what it takes, even if it means killing or eating people. Moreover, it's been damaged, so the mountain god is likely to be angry. As he spoke, Xiao Shouzhang couldn't help but subconsciously look around, as if he felt something staring at him. Listening to him, I felt a bit creepy. No wonder when Zhang San put down the mountain god seal yesterday, I could tell from his expression that he was up to no good. So it was all because of the trouble he caused. I was annoyed to hear this, but I was also puzzled. I put the mountain god seal inside the house yesterday, and no one came over. Xiao Shouzhang shook his head and said, It can't be a person. It must be some kind of animal. Think carefully, was there anything unusual last night, like a rat, snake, or yellow skin? I shook my head and said, there was no unusual activity. Hearing this, Xiao Shouzhang also became puzzled. Could it be that the mountain god can't track the mountain god seal? How is that possible? Or does your home have some kind of evil warding treasure? There's nothing like that in my house. We don't even have any small idols, let alone evil warding items. As Xiao Shouzhang spoke, he suddenly looked strange and took a few steps back. Could it be because of you? Your mother went up the mountain and came back with you in just three days. Maybe you are the son of the mountain god, so the mountain god seal wouldn't harm you when it was in your house for one night. You and your mother narrowly escaped a disaster. I helplessly replied, I am entirely human. How could I be the son of a monster? Xiao Shouzhang didn't continue and probably didn't believe it too much. I asked what the mountain god near us is like. Xiao Shouzhang quickly shook his head and said, Anyone who sees the true form of the mountain god will die. I don't want to see it. My words have already reached the mountain god seal. Don't touch it again. I told that guy Zhang San not to touch it, but he insisted on it. I didn't care anymore, so I left. He turned and walked away, and I just followed him. He asked me why I was going out. 
I said my mother hadn't come back home yet, so I was going to look for her. It's good to have someone with you. We walked to the village entrance. Xiao Xiao Zhang hesitated for a moment and said, I'll go and advise that guy. He should quickly get rid of the mountain god seal, otherwise, he won't even know how he died. The mountain god's anger is no joke. After saying that, he went straight to Zhang San's house. I hesitated for a moment and then asked him if the mountain god seal could still be fixed. He shook his head and said, anyway, I don't have the ability. If the mountain god seal is broken, the mountain god will also be affected. It would be unlucky if it's repaired carelessly and something goes wrong. As we were on our way to Zhang San's house, Xiao Xiao Zhang, who was walking ahead, suddenly shivered and shouted, what ghostly thing is this? It was fine until he mentioned it, but then I got scared too. I quickly shone the flashlight. We heard some commotion from Zhang San's house, like the sound of clothes tearing. It was really eerie in the middle of the night. Xiao Xiao Zhang gritted his teeth and walked to Zhang San's door. He picked up a shovel to bolster his courage and asked toward the house, Zhang San, are you home or not? Xiao Xiao Zhang pushed the door open and as he was speaking halfway, it seemed like he saw something. Suddenly, he bolted out in fear, stumbling in with a terrified expression, muttering about the mountain god's anger. I saw Xiao Xiao Zhang suddenly rushing out like that, so I hurried over to support him. But Xiao Xiao Zhang managed to escape from here using all his skills. He ran far away, still saying things like don't look for me, don't kill me. I shivered, pointed the flashlight at the door opened by Zhang San, and tremblingly shone it inside, only to find no sound at all. But there was actually a crimson reflection on the ground. I was so scared that my legs went weak. Could it be that Zhang San was killed by the mountain god? I dared not think further and just ran for it. But suddenly I heard a sound coming from inside the room, help me, help me. The voice was particularly eerie, but it was indeed Zhang San's voice calling out like a wandering spirit. I gritted my teeth, picked up the iron shovel on the ground, and bravely approached the house step by step. My eyes were fixed on the increasing amount of blood on the ground. When I stepped inside the door with one foot, suddenly, a blood-drenched figure pounced at me. I screamed in fright. He stumbled backward and fell to the ground with a thud, this blood-drenched figure lay motionless. It was only then that I realized it was Zhang San. He lay on the ground, hands clutching his neck. His neck had been bitten off by something, and his throat was a mess. Blood kept flowing out. It was the first time I had seen a dead person. I was in a daze, completely unsure of what to do. Seeing the mess inside his house, I thought that the mountain god must have been looking for the mountain god seal just now. But I didn't know if she had taken the mountain god seal. My legs went weak, and I wanted to leave, but when Xiao Shuzhang tried to escape, he shouted loudly, which might have made the people in the village suspicious, so the village chief and others came looking for us. When they entered the house and saw Zhang San on the ground, they were also scared out of their wits. Seeing my terrified expression, the village chief hurriedly asked me what had happened. I shook my head and said I didn't know anything, I hadn't seen anything, but I heard Xiao Xiao Zhang saying something about the mountain god getting angry. The village chief is quite old, probably in his 60s, so he might have heard about these things before. When he heard me mention the mountain god, he was also scared out of his wits. At the village chief's command, a few villagers immediately went back to get some things. They were preparing to bury Zhang San that very night. The village chief probably saw that I had turned pale, so he asked me to go home quickly. Before I left, he looked at me and said, Li Chen, as per your mother's request, tell the people in our village not to touch the mountain god seal anymore, and ask the mountain god not to kill anyone. If things escalate, people from the town will come down, and that won't be good. I shook my head and said, my mother doesn't even know the mountain god. I don't know whether she knows the mountain god or not, but your father should know, the village chief said, looking at me with a different expression. I understood what he meant. He still thought I was the son of a monster. From the way he spoke, he even seemed to believe that my father was the mountain god, but how could that be possible? Hearing the village chief say this, I ran home as fast as I could. From a distance, I could see my house door open and the lights on. Sure enough, I saw my mother standing at the door. She breathed a sigh of relief when she saw me running back. I ran over and told her about what happened in the village. My mother's expression turned somewhat grim. The mountain god seal on the altar was broken, it must have been taken by the mountain god. The place was ransacked, it must have been the mountain god's doing. My mother shook her head and said it hadn't been taken. I asked my mother nervously if the mountain god would come to kill me. My mother firmly told me that it wouldn't happen, and I also told her about using 502 glue to stick the mountain god seal. Hearing this, my mother was stunned, murmuring to herself, no wonder I felt so uncomfortable. When I returned to the house, I asked the question that I hadn't dared to ask for a long time, Mom, you said the mountain god won't kill me, is it because I'm the mountain god's son? My mother shook her head and quietly said, you are human. Relieved, 
I said my stomach was hungry, and my mother went to the kitchen to cook. After eating, I lay on the bed and fell into a drowsy sleep. I dreamed of a black beast suddenly tearing towards my neck. With a gaping mouth, it bit my neck off in an instant. Just as I was about to go back to sleep after waking up in fear, I suddenly heard a painful sound coming from my mother's room. I jumped out of bed, opened the door, and ran to my mother's room. There was no response inside. Worried that something had happened to my mother, I kicked the door open. It was better not to go in, as I was almost scared to scream as soon as I entered. Because in the pitch black room, there were suddenly a pair of glowing green eyes. I bravely rushed forward and shouted not to hurt my mother. As I swung my fists in the darkness, suddenly a hand grabbed me, and I was so scared that my back instantly became soaked. Don't be afraid, this is my mother's voice. My mother is fine. I quickly shouted that there's a monster. But when my mother turned on the light in the room, I was stunned because apart from my mother and me, there was no one else in the room. When I mentioned the green eyes, my mother said I was mistaken. But I still feel that the owner of those eyes just now is the one from the rumors, the one who made my mother pregnant, even though it was my father. I saw my mother next to me, sweating profusely, as if she had just endured a lot of pain. And her hands seemed to be broken again. What's going on? My mother shook her head and said it's nothing. Li Chen, I need to go out for a few days. Stay at home and behave yourself, don't run around. Mom, where are you going? You're not going to find my father, are you? I asked anxiously. My mother's whole arm seems to be dislocated now, and it hurts me to see her change in color. My mother sighed and said that the bones in her hand were uncomfortable yesterday but still usable. Today it seems that something has happened. What's meant to happen will happen, but I didn't expect it to happen so soon. She muttered to herself, tidied up some things with one hand, then walked to the door and told me to stay at home and that she would be back soon. I was really worried, so I took out some gauze to bandage her and asked if she was going to see a doctor. It's like she found me to help her mother, said it and then turned away. But then she thought of something and said, Right, Li Chen, you should do your own business these days, it's best to earn 1,000 yuan. I need it. After she finished speaking, she quickly disappeared into the darkness. After my mother left, someone came to tell fortunes that night, but most of them left when they saw my mother wasn't there. Only one woman I didn't know stayed. When this woman looked at me, I felt a chill down my spine. I suppressed the strange feeling in my heart and asked her what she wanted to tell fortunes about. What can you do? She spoke very haltingly, as if she had an unclear speech, even giving me the impression that she had just learned to speak. This made me look at her again and I said, fortune telling involves reading facial features, palmistry, and observing the aura. But my mother was the one who could divine, I can't do it yet. As I said this, she looked at me and said, for palmistry, I can let her show her hand. She stretched out her hand and said, this will be the payment. I instinctively said 10 yuan would be enough, but she opened her palm, which surprised me. In the palm of her hand, there was actually a finger-sized object. Wasn't that the broken left hand of the mountain god seal? I waved my hand and said I didn't need it. I didn't want to get into trouble. Although my mother clearly said the mountain god wouldn't kill me, I believed her, but if I brought trouble upon myself, no one could guarantee my safety. You won't regret it, she said haltingly, and then she put away the broken arm of the mountain god seal not giving me a chance to back out, as if she really thought I would regret it. This made me hesitate involuntarily, but she collected it so decisively. I guess it's useless for me to regret. I asked her if she wanted to continue the calculation, after all, palm reading only costs 10 yuan. It's not expensive for me to say that. She glanced at me, rummaged in the large pocket of her clothes, and took out a crumpled bill, saying that I and your so-called mother know each other. I took the 10 yuan and let her hand come over. She didn't say anything, and I involuntarily glanced at it. Suddenly, I felt fear out of nowhere, and my back was soaked in cold sweat, because this is not a human palmistry at all. Her palmistry is like a human's, with lines and very clear, but her lifeline is unexpectedly long, far beyond the length of a human's life. This means she is not human at all. I looked at her extremely incongruous face, and the fear in my heart became even stronger. Stay calm, stay calm. She said she knew my mother, so she shouldn't do anything to me. I looked at her again with certainty, and more cold sweat ran down my back. What's taking so long? She frowned, snorted, and I pulled myself together. She knows my mother, does she know my father too? I didn't dare ask, afraid she would turn hostile if I pried. She said she helps people see things, but how long do I still need to see this thing? You tell me. What do you mean by see things? I asked involuntarily. She stared at my back, making my hair stand on end. I could only look at her palmistry. Her career line is very single with no branching lines, which means she basically has no career. The career lines of ordinary people have many wrinkles. Basically, each line represents a job. 
Some people have more than 10 fork lines, indicating that they have changed jobs more than 10 times. In other words, now it means she doesn't have a job. However, she mentioned helping people look at things. I actually saw a forked line on her career line, but the location of this line is very strange. It was originally a single line, but it actually formed a square with three other lines. This is what is usually referred to as a coffin line. A coffin represents Ian, represents death. Now I can see that when she helps people look at things, she is looking at the remains of the dead, treasures, or even a corpse, possibly. Can you do it or not? When she impatiently urged me to speak, I could see that her teeth were actually very sharp. This scared me to death. She really isn't human. I quickly said, that's enough. The coffin line on her career has changed, with obvious differences in thickness, indicating that the coffin line is about to disappear, all about to disappear, of course, almost there. I added, you can still know that what I see is dead people. She withdrew her hand. I felt creepy at the thought of whose body she was looking at. Could she be some kind of grave guardian, like the grave snakes often seen in cemeteries? But it doesn't seem like it. Her teeth are sharp, but they are not the teeth of a snake. I didn't dare to look at her, but when I looked down at her, the cold sweat from the ten yuan she gave me came out again, because the money she gave me was actually a tuft of hair. I was scared to death, hoping she would leave quickly, but at that moment, someone suddenly ran in from outside. It was the village head. He took a look at the woman, maybe thinking her strange attire made her look like a beggar, then he didn't say anything, just asked, where's your mother? I said she went out. The village head quickly said, then lock the door at night, don't go out wandering around. Something has happened in the village. What happened? I asked, shivering. Zheng San's body was dug out by someone, and the body is gone. The village head's tone was filled with uncontrollable fear. I was shocked. Wasn't Zhang San buried overnight? How could someone dig up the body? I told you to pass a message to your mother. Did she receive it? The village head asked me in a low voice. What does that mean? She thinks it's the mountain god's doing, I said. I passed the message. The village head sighed and said, there's nothing we can do. No one can stop the mountain god's anger. Remember to lock the door tightly at night and don't open it for any sound. After saying that, the village head ran out to tell the other people in the village about this incident. I looked at the pitch black outside the door and felt that something was wrong. What does the mountain god want with Zhang San's body? When this inhuman woman appeared, I felt scared, and now this has happened. I really don't know how to describe my current feelings. I turned to look at her, gesturing for her to leave quickly. I was about to close the door, and I hadn't finished what I was saying earlier. Do you know whose body I was looking at? She suddenly looked at me. Her eyes were too confident as if she was certain that I wanted to know. And once I found out whose body she was looking at, I would be horrified. Why was she so confident? Could it be that the body she was looking at was someone I knew? But I didn't know many people, and judging by the depth of the coffin lines on her palm, the body she was looking at could have been dead for several years, maybe even more than 10 years. It's unlikely that I would know them. Because I'm similar to my mother, although I'm not as reclusive as her, my activities are limited to the vicinity of the village and the urban area 30 kilometers away. I only go there once or twice a year. Apart from the people who come to my mother for fortune telling in the village, who else could I know? The key is, the implication of what this woman said just now is that once I know whose body she was looking at, I would be very sad. I couldn't help but ask, who is it? The woman's eyes suddenly didn't stare at me as much, but instead showed a hint of inexplicable sympathy. You will find out, she said and then walked out. I hesitated for a moment, didn't say anything, but she stopped again at the door. She turned back to look at me and said, considering that you showed me your fortune, don't open the door for anyone tonight, remember that, she said intermittently. I anxiously asked, I can't open the door for anyone, but what if my mother comes back? Your mother? She glanced inside and squinted her eyes. She asked if there were any incense for grave sweeping at home. I said that after I took it out, she took it from my hand. From the loose clothes, she took out a white bottle and poured the slightly yellow liquid directly onto the box after opening it. What poured out was a slightly wax yellow liquid, like oil, but with a strange smell. This oil seemed precious to her, as she only poured a small drop onto each incense stick. The oil slowly seeped into the incense, enveloping it with a scent of burning. I asked her what it was, but she didn't say anything, just inserted the incense sticks one by one at the door. She handed me the last one and said to put it in your mother's room, not to waste it. This kind of oil is hard to come by now. Dead oil is easy to get, but live oil is hard to obtain. The regulations are too strict now. It used to be easy, just catch a person. Her words were eerie, and with her sharp teeth, she formed a strange smile, making me feel creepy all of a sudden. Hearing this, I shivered and dropped the incense in my hand on the ground. Dare to waste it, 
I'll eat you, she squinted her eyes, giving me a chilling look. I quickly picked up the incense from the ground, feeling a chill running down my spine. Put it in your mother's room, then burn them together. I completely don't understand why she did this. This should belong to the field of Yin and Yang. I don't know if my mother understands, but she has never done this kind of thing. For wrongdoing, there is always someone to take the blame. Remember, when someone comes, hide in your room and don't come out. She said that and then turned and walked away, disappearing into the darkness. I shouted anxiously, has my mother come back? Let me tell you, your mother now is not a good person. Once you know her true face, you won't let her in again. The woman's voice came from the darkness. Until there were no more footsteps, her words stunned me. She said my mother is not a good person. She was insulting my mother. My mother is so good, and she said such things. I'm very angry. And the meaning of her words just now is that someone will really come tonight. I don't know if it's psychological or what, but I always feel like there are eyes watching me in the dark. I felt a bit scared, quickly took out a lighter, and lit the incense on the ground one by one. The oil seeped into the incense, and after lighting it, the smell turned charred. The flame wasn't red, but had a hint of green. I felt like it was lit, but it didn't give warmth, only a chilling cold. I held my breath and didn't dare to smell too much. After lighting them all, I closed the door. But this woman told me to put the incense in my mother's room. I hesitated and didn't do it. This woman is definitely not human, but I still can't judge if she's good or bad. What if her purpose in telling me to do this is to harm my mother? I might as well just put this incense outside. I placed it at the door, lit it, closed the door, and went back to my room to sleep. I don't know how long passed, but the eerie sound pulled me back from my sleep. It's like someone is using their fingernails to scratch at the door, one scratch at a time. The appearance of these eerie sounds in the dead of night scared me half to death. Just then, the tightly closed door was suddenly kicked open. I held my breath, suppressed the fear in my heart, quickly jumped out of bed, walked to the corner of the wall, and picked up a hammer. Looking through the crack in the door, without turning on the light, I saw a person standing in the dark hall. A little moonlight shone in, illuminating her feet, covered in mud, as if she had just walked out of the earth. I took a cold breath, my legs trembled. This is Zhang San, who had his neck bitten off by the mountain god last night. How could he move after death? Could it be that someone else didn't dig up the grave, but he walked out of it himself? I thought I was mistaken, but I wasn't. As he turned in the hall, drops of blood dripped from his neck. Through the crack in the door, I saw him in the hall, like a headless fly, turning around, and then suddenly disappeared, as if he had entered the darkness. How could he come to my house? Could it be that those incense lured him here? I was tricked by that inhuman woman. When I was angry, I didn't dare to breathe. Zhang San must have gone outside. I have to take this opportunity to get rid of the one outside and lure Zhang San to another place. My sweaty hands grasped the door lock, preparing to carefully unlock the door and walk out. Outside the door crack, suddenly a pair of eyes without pupils appeared. I was just one door away from him. In that moment, we locked eyes. I was so scared that I covered my mouth and my legs were shaking. Zhang San noticed me. I could even see some mud in his eye without pupils. Covering his vision, he absolutely couldn't see me. I didn't move at all, allowing Zhang San's heavy breathing to pass through the door crack and hit my face. He was about to kick the door in, so I quickly moved to the side of the door, crouched down, and didn't make a sound. Zhang San walked in step by step. When he walked to the middle of my room, I shivered and quickly crouched to walk out, allowing him to rummage through my room. Is he looking for the mountain god seal? I didn't have time to think. When I got to the door, I saw the person on the ground, the oil incense still burning. The smell was getting more and more burnt, permeating the air with the smell of charred meat. Could it be that Zhang San was really lured here by this incense? Why would that non-human you make me put the last oil incense into my mother's room? If I did, would Zhang San not even come into my room? But why would she do that? Zhang San is in my mother's room again. What could he find? I listened to Zhang San rummaging through my room. I quickly pulled out all the oil incense from the person on the ground. I have to lure him out, otherwise my house will be in chaos. But even after I did that, Zhang San was still rummaging through my room, with no sign of being lured out. What's going on? Just as I hesitated, it suddenly became quiet inside. I thought of something and quickly found a place to hide. Shortly after, I saw Zhang San walking out of the house. I was so scared that I didn't dare to breathe and quickly extinguished the incense by sticking it into the soil. After glancing around, Zhang San walked away as if he was about to leave. I forced myself to calm down. At this point, I still had a hammer in my hand. I had to figure out what was going on. I held my breath and followed behind Zhang San. He seemed to be walking like a zombie along the village road. Because the village chief went door to door saying so, 
tonight every household not only had their doors tightly closed, but the lights were also extinguished. There was not a single person to be seen on the road. I was so scared, following behind a dead person. I didn't even know where I got the courage. After a while, I saw Zhang San actually heading towards the cemetery on the edge of the village. Could he be going home? Sure enough, I saw Zhang San walk into the village cemetery. After walking around, he stopped in front of a freshly dug grave. He lay down in the deep pit as if he was going to sleep in a bed. I saw his muddy hands, as if he was covering himself with a blanket, scooping and piling the soil onto himself. In the middle of the night, seeing this scene scared me almost to the point of screaming. I think I should immediately go and tell the village chief to gather everyone in the village. Zhang San must have faked his death. He must be cremated overnight, otherwise, what should we do if he reappears tomorrow? However, just as I was about to run back, I suddenly saw Zhang San sitting up again, looking very uncomfortable. This scared me so much that I didn't dare to breathe. What is he doing? Is he going to come out again? I hid behind a tombstone, witnessing everything, unable to move, just as I hesitated. I heard a voice, full of ignorance. They bury people recklessly, without considering where they are burying them. I recognized this voice. It was the woman I saw Palm reading just now, the one who's not human. How did she come here? I saw her walk up to Zhang San, and I was so angry. She's really messing with me, but why would she do this? In the dark night, she squatted down and asked, feeling uncomfortable? Zhang San seemed to understand, nodding slightly. Do you know why you feel uncomfortable? Zhang San shook his head, like a puppet. Because when those villagers buried you, they found a place randomly, but it's not yours, she continued, her voice eerie in the dark night. Zhang San seemed to understand, climbing out of the deep pit and actually using his fingers to dig beside it, as if to dig a new place. Seeing this scene, I was completely astonished. What is she doing, finding a place to bury herself? People always talk about resting in peace, didn't expect someone like you to care about these things. She was a bit sarcastic. Zhang San's reputation here is indeed not very good. He makes money by selling antiques from the dead. I heard that when he was young, he even robbed graves with others. What did you find in her house? Zhang San shook his head silently. She snorted and muttered, that little brat, I knew she wouldn't listen. I told her the method to avoid you, but she didn't use it. However, she's quite clever. If not for your corpse eyes being unable to see anything, that little brat would have been scared out of her wits today. She spoke intermittently. I was surprised to hear that she really didn't want to harm me. What about the mountain god seal? She asked Zhang San, but there was no response. She became angry, you are quite smart knowing the purpose of the mountain god seal, deliberately hiding it or selling it, and only leaving a broken arm. You should know, if the mountain god seal is broken, someone will be very uncomfortable. I don't know if you are really smart or if someone is guiding you, but you better not keep it to yourself. Then, a hoarse voice came from Zhang San's mouth, unclear and unintelligible to me. But this scared me to death, the corpse actually spoke. Soon, Zhang San dug a deep hole. I saw that all of her ten fingers were covered in mud, and three of them were bleeding profusely, even the fingernails were scraped off due to digging. Zhang San sat in the pit, and began to dig the soil to cover the body. And when she looked at the grave where Zhang San originally lay, her heart sank. Who covered up this grave again? If you don't bury me, I'll eat you. After she said this, Zhang San indeed emerged from the grave. He started using his hands to fill in the original grave, obediently, as if he was particularly afraid of this inhuman figure. If you lie, I will make sure you have no peace even in death, she said and then left directly. After this woman left, I watched her from a distance, wondering what she was up to. Was she going to seek the mountain god? As I hesitated, I suddenly witnessed a surprising scene. After Zhang San had filled the grave back up, he lay down in the hole he had dug. I thought he was going to dig up the soil again to cover himself, but instead, he actually started writing on the ground with his hands. After writing a few words, he covered himself with soil. There was no sound in the graveyard. Unable to resist my curiosity, I gritted my teeth and moved closer, wanting to see what he had written. As I cautiously approached, I could see the twisted words he had written with his fingers. It said someone beneath me. After reading those twisted words, I shuddered and stepped back immediately, thinking about the woman who had just asked Zhang San if he was uncomfortable and mentioned that villagers had casually buried her in a place. Plus, Zhang San had just come out of the original grave and dug a new one to lie in. Could it be that there was someone beneath the grave where she originally lay? There was originally someone underneath, a coffin and a body, which means that the original grave had an owner. So, Zheng San, who was buried later, took up someone else's space, so he's uncomfortable lying there. This is the village cemetery, it's empty, and besides, the village had asked to bury Zheng San that day. 
The villagers are all honest and reliable, it's impossible for them to have thrown away the original tombstone and just buried him after digging it up. The only explanation is that the place where Zhang San is buried doesn't have a raised grave mound, and it's buried very deep. So those villagers didn't notice anything, they just dug it up and buried Zhang San overnight. From the behavior of that woman who's not human just now, she scolded and asked Zhang San to fill up the grave again. I thought about when I showed her palmistry, she said she was helping people look at corpses. Could it be that the corpse she saw is buried underneath? As I thought about this, it suddenly dawned on me. But who is the corpse she saw, and how could it be buried in our village cemetery? Thinking about this, I really want to dig out the corpse that the woman who's not human saw, to see who it is. At this moment, it's so quiet all around that I can hear breathing underground. This is Zhang San's doing. He dug the hole too shallow, so it doesn't cover up his breathing at all. I was so scared that I didn't dare to continue analyzing, but my curiosity made me unable to help suppressing my fear and asking, is there someone down there? And is the buried person a man or a woman? But Zhang San's heavy breathing continued, and he didn't answer my question. It looks like he is not the woman who's not human, so he simply won't pay any attention to me. I ran to the village chief's house, knocked hard on the door, but no one answered for a long time. There was some movement inside instead. A cautious voice of the village chief came through the crack of the door, asking who it was. It's me, the village chief. Something's wrong, something's wrong, I shouted several times. I was scared to death. The village chief breathed a sigh of relief and opened the door. I hurried in, closed the door behind me, and quickly told the village chief about the matter of Zhang San's transformation and burying himself in the graveyard. The village chief's face turned pale, and trembling, he asked Li Chen, You're not joking, are you? No, I shook my head. How could I make this up? The village chief looked worried and anxious. You go back and lock all the doors and windows. Don't come out tonight. Village chief, are you not going to do anything about Zhang San? He has transformed into a corpse. There's no one in our village who understands these things. Who would dare to dig it up or burn it? What if that thing of Zhang San's doesn't burn and we don't handle it properly? Then his spirit won't leave. Our village will be finished. We need to bring someone in to handle it. I know someone. I'll go find him now, and he should be back by tomorrow afternoon. The village chief said as he packed up. All right, village chief. Why don't I accompany you to find him? It's okay, no need. That person doesn't like strangers too much. You go back by yourself and be careful. Remember to lock the door. The village chief shook his head, sighed, and carried a bag on his back. But then he looked back at me and said, You didn't just dig up that corpse to take a look, did you? I'm afraid even without tools. I quickly shook my head. Zhang San was lying next to me. Even if I had tools, I wouldn't dare to dig like this. What if Zhang San gets up and attacks me? The village chief nodded, his gaze somewhat strange, but he didn't say much and went out overnight. But as I walked out and looked at the departing village chief, I felt a little strange. Just now, I deliberately paid attention to his facial expression. I mainly wanted to see if his search for people this time would be successful. If it wasn't, I would tell him what to pay attention to. But I saw a slight blush on his forehead, which represents the moral area, different from the last time Zhang San wanted to harm me. It means the village chief lied just now. Could it be that he didn't go to find people? I shook my head. If the village chief didn't go to find people, what did he go out for? I think I was just confused earlier, so all my face reading was wrong. I ran back home and closed the door tightly. I tidied up the house a bit, feeling exhausted, and fell asleep in a daze. When I woke up in the middle of the night, it was already bright outside. I checked the time and found that it was already afternoon. I quickly got up and ran to my mother's room, only to find it empty. I was worried about her. But thinking that it was now the afternoon, the village chief should have called people over, so I closed the door and ran out. When I arrived at the village cemetery, I did see that almost everyone from the village was there. You could hear whispers from far away. I hurriedly squeezed in. I saw a stranger man directing something. Some strong villagers are digging in the pit, sweating profusely. They are digging at the exact spot where Zhang San was buried first. They are trying to dig out the person under Zhang San. I was curious too, but I saw that Zhang San had already been dug out and set aside. His hands and feet were tied with peach skin ropes. Several villagers at the scene looked pale, probably because Zhang San, who was just dug out, might still be haunting them. Thinking about it, I'm a little scared. If we had really burned the body last night, something might have happened because we don't know how to deal with him. Corpse transformation is very terrifying. How much longer does the master have to dig? Someone in the pit asked. We've already dug two to three meters deep and still haven't found anyone. It makes me doubt whether Zhang San's words were true or false. Keep digging, the man said. 
The villagers in the pit had to continue, but as they dug a little more, suddenly someone's shovel hit something, making a loud noise. They had dug into a coffin. We've found it, we've found it. The villager whose shovel hit the coffin below breathed a sigh of relief, but before finishing the sentence, he closed his eyes and fainted. This scared the people in the village, and they all asked what was going on. The man looked into the pit and said, don't panic, it's just the interaction of yin and yang. It means there's a female corpse inside the coffin. Everyone, come up first, ladies. I find it strange. The woman who is not human saw the body. Could she be a woman? Then who is the female corpse in the coffin? All the people who were just digging the grave listened to the man's All the people who were just digging the grave listened to the man's words and climbed up. They also pulled up the person who had just fainted. This man is skilled in Taoism and was specially invited by the village chief overnight. Of course, his words carry weight, and everyone looked at him and followed his orders. In fact, my gaze had already been withdrawn from the pit. After the villager fainted just now, I deliberately looked at his face. His forehead was dark, but his cheeks were a little flushed. It was really as the man said, a clash of yin and yang. This indicates that the person in the coffin below is indeed a woman, but because she has been buried for too long, the yin energy may be too heavy. Most men cannot bear it, so they will faint. I scanned everyone present, and basically saw from their expressions what this man would do next. It wasn't to let the woman continue digging, nor to let other villagers continue digging, but, my expression changed, and I suddenly felt uneasy. Because there were only about 20 villagers present, of all ages and genders, but there were no signs of darkness on their faces, specifically on the forehead, indicating that they would not come into contact with the coffin inside the pit. In simpler terms, they would not continue digging, so there were only two people left at the scene. One person was him, and the other person was me. He probably wouldn't do it himself, so did he want me to dig? I found it a bit strange, why would he want me to do it? The man didn't speak, but first went to the villager who had just fainted, took out a yellow talisman, and directly swept it over the villager while chanting some words. Something miraculous did happen, although there was no amazing sight, but as a fortune teller, I saw the color slowly returning to the villager's forehead, although there was still some darkness that wouldn't go away, and he just needed to rest and he would be fine. Sure enough, the man just reminded the family of the unconscious villager, and his family took him back home. The scene quieted down again, and a minute later, someone asked the master how to handle it. The meaning was that it was getting dark, and they needed to resolve it quickly, otherwise the people in the village would definitely be anxious at night. After all, the body of Zhang San had not been completely dealt with yet. The man didn't speak, but scanned the people present. And I didn't speak either, I picked up a shovel and jumped into the pit. The people in the village were surprised, Li Chen, what are you doing? Come up quickly, your mother is not here. What if something happens to you? You are a man, haven't you heard the master say that yin and yang counteract each other? They tried to persuade me, but I didn't say anything, I took a deep breath and started digging slowly with the shovel, because the villager had just touched the coffin inside the soil, and the man looked at me, showing some surprise, as if he hadn't expected me to be so proactive. How did you know I would choose you? I shrugged and didn't answer, some things didn't need to be revealed. Although I didn't know why he wanted me to dig, but with the expressions of the onlookers, it was meaningless to pretend to be confused, it was better to resolve the matter quickly. I also wanted to see who the female corpse in the coffin was. Master, he. A villager asked with concern, and the man said, among all the people present, he is indeed the most suitable, as for why, I won't say for now. When the onlookers heard him say this, they breathed a sigh of relief, and told me to be careful, and if I felt something was wrong, to come up immediately. I nodded and started digging carefully. They had already dug almost to the bottom, and with a few more digs from me, the coffin inside was basically exposed. Although there were no signs of decay on the coffin, there were damages on the surface, indicating that it had been buried for more than 10 years. This made me curious instantly, how could someone in our village have been buried here for so long without anyone noticing? What kind of inhuman person buried this female corpse so deep? The last time I read her palm, I saw that she probably didn't need to look at this female corpse again, could it be that her mission was completed today? I felt curious, but at the same time relieved, as I dug and nothing happened, not even a slight reaction, I didn't know why. But such a large coffin, I definitely couldn't handle it alone, but the people in the village said that this was an ominous coffin, and the man in charge should burn it before dark, after all, they believed that the reason for Zhang San's body change was because of this female corpse. A fire should be set, a villager said anxiously, as it was late afternoon and the sun was about to set. Everyone knew that evil spirits would become rampant at night. This might not work. Someone buried this coffin 5 meters deep, indicating that the person who buried it attached great importance to the female corpse inside. 
If we rashly burn it, we will surely face retaliation. I may earn a little money, but do you want me to risk my life? Besides, the female corpse already has heavy in energy, and being buried so deep, the corpse's energy is even heavier. Ordinary fire won't work. It would take the three-flavored true fire to be effective, but I don't have the ability to summon it. So, it's not possible, the man shook his head. His meaning was clear, acting recklessly could lead to death. What should we do then? It's getting dark, and will the female corpse inside the coffin undergo a transformation? The villagers started to panic. I don't think the corpse will undergo a transformation, the man continued to shake his head. Master, please think of a solution. We can't afford any more trouble in the village, the village chief, who had just joined the crowd, pleaded. The man glanced at the village chief and hesitated for a moment before saying, I think we should have this young man secure the rope below, and then we can all pull the coffin out together and figure out what to do next. All right, we'll follow the master's plan. Li Chen, the rope, someone tossed down the rope. I hesitated for a moment and asked, what should we do after pulling it up? The expressions on the faces of the onlookers made it clear to me that even if the coffin was pulled up, I might still need to handle it. It seemed that the man wanted to temporarily store the coffin in my house. My mother was not at home, and I definitely wouldn't agree to have a coffin placed in my house. How could I sleep tonight? The man looked at me and said, since you were able to dig up this coffin, it means the female corpse inside won't harm you. So you should understand what I mean. Let's first place the coffin in your house, and then I will figure out a solution in the next few days. After all, I took on this business, so I will try my best to complete it. But I need your cooperation during this process. I immediately shook my head and refused. If my mother were here, she would definitely not allow it. The villagers were in a dilemma. It was clear to everyone that bringing the coffin into the house was not a good omen, especially a stranger's coffin. The village chief tried to persuade me saying that my mother could divine and had divine protection. He even mentioned that I was the son of a mountain god. Everyone tried to convince me as the sun gradually set. I became angry and said to the village chief, please stop. I climbed out of the pit, and the village chief, feeling helpless, discussed with the man. The man's gaze on me was strange and made me very uncomfortable. I didn't want to deal with this matter anymore. My mother had told me to stay at home and not wander around. I decided to go back home. With my firm stance, the villagers couldn't stop me. They could only watch me leave with a mix of worry and hesitation. I ran back home, not caring about how they would handle the female corpse in the coffin, whether they would burn it forcibly or rebury it. It was none of my concern. I closed the door, made some food for myself, took a shower, and then lay down in bed to sleep. But in a daze, I had a dream. I dreamt that I was once again in that grave, with a shovel in my hand, directly inserted into the coffin. I didn't know why I did this, but with a creak, I pried open the coffin lid, revealing a gap. I looked through the gap and saw a woman lying inside. I could tell from the clothing inside the coffin that it was a woman's corpse. The style was somewhat old but very clean, indicating it was clothing from over 10 years ago. In other words, the woman inside had been dead for over 10 years. What surprised me was that the woman's hands looked just like those of a living person, showing no signs of decay. But the inside of the coffin was quite dark, and I couldn't see the woman's face. I instinctively forced the entire coffin lid open, and with a creak, it fell to the ground. Through the dim light, I saw the woman's face, and in that instant, my eyes widened. I suddenly woke up from the dream, drenched in cold sweat. Seeing the woman's face in that moment, I felt fear, a deep fear from the bottom of my heart. I shivered, feeling as if I had been left in an icy wilderness, cold. I couldn't believe it. How could it be? How could it be her? I slapped myself hard. What kind of dream was I having? I sat on the bed, panting, with the image of her in the coffin filling my mind, trembling with fear. I couldn't hold back any longer, I jumped out of bed, got dressed, grabbed a flashlight and a hooked hammer, and ran outside. In the main hall, I stopped and looked at my mother's room, my trembling reaching its peak, but my mother hadn't returned yet. I hesitated for a moment, but my questioning mind made me fearless. I opened the door, closed it behind me, and ran towards the graveyard. Impossible, impossible. That's all I could think, the more I thought, the colder I felt, this must be a dream I had made up, it must be. I ran to the graveyard, passing by each house, all tightly closed as if afraid of someone entering. By this time, it was well past midnight, and the graveyard was empty, just rows of tombstones standing silently in the dark night, their black and white portraits particularly clear under my flashlight, some smiling, some expressionless, and some with empty eyes. I was alone in the graveyard, but I felt as if I were being watched by so many people, that creepy feeling spreading through my whole body. I quickly looked away from them, the cawing of crows making me even more frightened. I suppressed my fear and bravely walked over, shining the flashlight, and first saw traces of burning on the ground, 
with some ashes as if from a pile of firewood. Was the coffin burned? I was suddenly scared, anxiously scanning around, and was relieved to see that the coffin was still in the deep pit, lying quietly, reflecting the moonlight. The place of ashes was where Zhang San had just been lying. Had the people in the village put a pile of firewood to burn it? But why hadn't a new grave appeared? Shouldn't the body have been reburied after being burned? I didn't have time to think about this, I had come in the middle of the night just to open the coffin lid and see if my dream was real. I shone the flashlight and saw that the pit was the same as when I left in the afternoon, nothing had changed. This meant that I was right, the people in the village had not touched the coffin, and neither had the man. After I left, they had temporarily ignored this place and had not reburied it, but they had used a Taoist method to prevent the corpse from decaying. Nine peach with sticks of varying lengths were inserted into the ground around the pit, which was a method to prevent the corpse from decaying. It should have been arranged by that man. I stared at the coffin below, took a deep breath, and slowly slid down, approaching the coffin. Surprisingly, I did not feel afraid, which made my heart tremble even more. I took the iron hammer with a hook in my hand and directly inserted it into the gap of the coffin lid, trying to pry it open with force. However, no matter how hard I tried, it remained motionless, making only creaking sounds echoing in the dark graveyard. Open, open. I urgently tried to pry it open, but it seemed to be stuck inside, no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't open it. At that moment, suddenly there were footsteps coming closer and closer. I was startled and quickly shone my flashlight behind me, only to find a shadow looming over me. Someone was approaching. Sure enough, you came by yourself. There is corpse gas inside the coffin, which has sealed the lid. How could you possibly open it by yourself? Suddenly a voice sounded, and I became alert. You knew I would come? A person appeared at the edge of the pit, looking down at me from a high vantage point. It was the man who had conducted the exhumation during the day. He had not left. Yes, when the village chief came to find me, he roughly told me about the situation in the village, saying that there couldn't be a stranger's coffin in this graveyard. It might have been a mistake on your part. But he mentioned that something had decayed, which I found strange. So I came to take a look and had the people from your village dig, and indeed, they dug up this coffin. The man spoke in a calm voice. It's strange. This is a shared graveyard for several nearby villages. How could a stranger be buried here? So after you left, I asked the people in your village, and they all said that no one had gone missing, meaning that no one had suddenly died and been buried haphazardly. I also asked people from the nearby villages, and they told me the same. So I found it strange. There were no sudden disappearances in the nearby villages, including yours. So who could have been buried here? Did someone from elsewhere kill and bury a person here to avoid detection? That shouldn't be possible. If someone killed, they would also use a coffin to handle the body. So I thought of something. His tone changed a bit as he said this, just looking at me, and the light from my flashlight made his eyes gleam. You should know what I mean, otherwise, you wouldn't have come here in the middle of the night. He said slowly, the reason I had you dig up the grave is that the village chief said you are a strange child, and even if something decayed, no corpse would dare to bite you. When you dug, indeed, nothing happened, but it was this that made me suspicious. I trembled all over, and my hand holding the flashlight was unsteady. I heard from your village chief that your mother went up the mountain for three days 18 years ago, and when she came down, she was already pregnant with you. Her belly grew day by day, and her personality changed drastically after coming down from the mountain. She became unusually quiet, not speaking or interacting with anyone. After 10 months of pregnancy, she gave birth to you. On the surface, there doesn't seem to be anything suspicious, just an innocent girl who was violated while on the mountain, came down pregnant, and unwilling to part with the child in her womb became a pitiful single mother who raised the child alone into adulthood. This is the surface story that evokes sympathy, but the female corpse inside the coffin made me have a thought. He said slowly. Don't, please don't say anymore, I interrupted, trembling. It's impossible, it's impossible. Are you sure you don't want me to continue? Or have you thought of something? He asked. I remained silent, feeling a chill throughout my body, overwhelmed by endless questions, standing beside the pit, not knowing what to do. This coffin had been buried here alone for over 10 years, and I had never known. He paused for a moment and continued, well, let me finish. You came here in the middle of the night and demanded to open the coffin for verification, which only confirms the suspicions in my mind. Your mother, or rather, the person we thought was your mother, actually didn't come down from the mountain after three days. She wasn't pregnant, and she didn't give birth to you, because no one had ever considered that she had actually died on the mountain during those three days. As I listened to the man's words, I felt an endless sense of discomfort and doubt. His analysis that my mother had actually died on the mountain during those three days was painful for me to accept. The evidence pointed to my mother being the female corpse inside the coffin. 
And the dream that had made me break out in a cold sweat just now was too real, so real that it terrified me. But if the female corpse inside the coffin was indeed my mother, and she never came down from the mountain, then how was I born? I couldn't have just emerged from a crack in the rocks, could I? And there was another reason that I couldn't believe, if my mother had died 18 years ago, then who was the woman who raised me? I was born from her womb, she couldn't be fake, how could I not feel it? I had called her mother since I could remember, and she had raised me from a young age, caring for me in every way. Apart from being unusually quiet and speaking little to me, there was nothing about her that made me feel she was different from anyone else. She was a good mother, and I knew that clearly. I know you can't accept it for now, but the truth is right in front of you. The man continued. Please help me open this coffin. I want to see who's inside. I said. I had come here to confirm if it was as I had dreamt. If I opened the coffin, everything would become clear. But as the man had just said, the coffin was sealed by the corpse's gas, and I didn't understand these things, so I couldn't open it at all. I had tried to pry it open with force, but it was really sealed shut. Did I need that woman who wasn't human to come and open it? But that woman was probably off to find the mountain god seal, after all, she had a severed arm with the mountain god seal. The gas inside is not ordinary. My skills are not enough, and the risk is too great. Even if we could open it, what would we do if the gas escaped? You should know that a body buried so deep underground for so many years intentionally gathers corpse gas to maintain the integrity of the female corpse inside the coffin. However, the corpse gas can cause confusion in ordinary people upon contact, and in severe cases, it can lead to immediate death. The man shook his head. I asked what should be done. The man looked at me and said, if it can't be opened, then how will you handle this coffin? After all, leaving it like this is not a long-term solution. If the people in your village find out that your mother has actually been dead for a long time, I don't think you and your mother can stay here anymore. Do you want me to take this coffin home? I asked. You said it yourself. What is your real purpose? This man, who is skilled in Taoism, was brought in by the village chief overnight. I don't know much about him. He claimed that his skills were not high, but I didn't believe it. After all, his appearance was not very pleasant. Usually, people like him would have an aura that ordinary people couldn't see, concealing their appearance. I couldn't see through him, indicating that his strength was much greater than mine. In other words, he might be able to open the coffin and solve the problem of the corpse gas, but for some other reason, he chose not to open it. I don't know for the time being. To make money, he replied simply. I was at a loss on how to handle the situation. It shouldn't be too difficult for the two of us to carry the coffin back, but is it really my mother inside? I couldn't believe it. He saw that I was silent and jumped down, all right, if you don't believe me, I'll make you believe. I can open this coffin, but only for a few seconds, which should be enough for you to see who is inside. After you see, you can decide whether to take the coffin home. I nodded eagerly. Indeed, I was right. He could really open the coffin, but if it really was my mother, then I would take her home. After all, when I dug the grave, there was no reaction at all, indicating that she inside wouldn't harm me. He saw me nod and immediately started taking out some yellow talismans, sticking them directly on the coffin. After doing all this, he said to me, hold your breath and don't inhale any air, otherwise, even if the person inside won't harm you, the corpse gas will. I nodded and held my breath, shining the flashlight directly at the coffin. I wanted to see the appearance of the female corpse inside clearly. I asked if he needed help. He shook his head, no need and began chanting directly. At the same time, he inserted a yellow talisman into the gap of the coffin. With a swoosh, the talisman entered the coffin, and he spat out a word, ignite. I heard a muffled sound coming from inside the coffin, and then the man took the hooked iron hammer from my hand and pried open the coffin lid with a creaking sound, revealing a large gap. He urged, quick, look. I had already shown the flashlight's beam along the gap, and in an instant, I stood there in shock. I saw that the person inside the coffin was almost identical to the person in my dream just now, wearing clothes from over 10 years ago, unmoving. Her hands were folded on her chest, fingers pale but plump, just like a living person. Her face looked very young, probably 18 or 19 years old. I had never seen her before, but I could still recognize her, and it was definitely her, 100%. It was unmistakably my mother when she was young. The ashes of the yellow talisman had fallen on her clothes, making everything seem so eerie. I felt as if I had been doused with icy water, my whole body chilled. Countless questions suddenly enveloped me. The man was right. My mother had indeed never come down from the mountain 18 years ago because she had died on the mountain after three days. But who was the pregnant woman who came down from the mountain three days later, looking exactly like her? Who am I? Whose son am I really? What is all this about? At this moment, my mind seemed to explode, chaotic and confused. Bang! 
The coffin lid was closed, and the man continued to seal the entire coffin with yellow talismans, sealing it shut. I was brought back by the sound. Have you seen clearly? The man asked me. I didn't speak, my mind was blank, I just wanted to know what was going on. Who exactly is my current mother? Why is she the same as the one inside the coffin? Since you've seen clearly, let's work together to pull the coffin up and then take it to your home first, he said. I know you can't accept it for a while, but if we delay any longer, when the sun rises and shines in, it won't be good for her inside. He continued. I remained silent, suppressing all my questions. Yes, I must take the person inside the coffin back home. I want to wait for my mother to come back and ask what's going on. I said we probably couldn't pull it up by ourselves, such a big coffin. He didn't answer my question, but directly took out four paper figures, like paper cutting, with no eyes, ears, mouth, or nose, they looked ordinary, but in his hands, they were different. He muttered an unclear spell and then pricked his finger, directly touching the heads of the four paper figures. Rise, he said in a low voice, and the four paper figures actually moved like puppets on strings. I was amazed, his Taoism was very advanced, but I felt something was off about him, but I couldn't pinpoint what. Tie up the coffin and pull it up first, I can't stand it, he said, immediately climbing out of the pit. I saw that his face was a bit pale. Was it because of the mutual restraint of Yin and Yang? It should be, but I didn't feel it. Was it because of the person inside? I didn't think much, quickly tying the rope to the largest end of the coffin and then climbing up. I saw the four paper figures grabbing the rope and starting to pull with great force, as if they were strongmen, actually slowly pulling the coffin out of the earth. But as soon as I climbed up, maybe this man didn't notice me, I saw him not far away, secretly taking out a paper figure and saying something to it, then he put the paper figure on the ground, and it moved, running towards a dark place and disappeared. I was surprised to see this man suddenly make such a move. Even though I didn't understand Taoism, I knew what he was doing. He was using a paper figure to tell someone something, a bit like sneaking a message. Who would this paper figure go to find? Why did he do this? I saw him do this secretly, he definitely didn't want me to know. I hesitated, feeling that I couldn't expose him. I had just met this person, I definitely couldn't trust him completely, but he was right about who the female corpse in the coffin was, and his series of deductions, his ultimate goal, for me, it seemed like he wanted me to take the coffin back home. What else did he want to do? I wasn't sure for the moment, but his actions made me have to think more. When he went up while I was tying the rope, his face was pale, was it intentional, or was it really because of the mutual restraint of yin and yang? I pretended not to have seen anything, made a sound as if I was going to climb up, and after a few seconds, I climbed up. Sure enough, I saw him looking at me calmly as if nothing had happened. I didn't speak, and struggled to climb up. He just glanced at me, didn't say anything, and continued to control the four paper figures, pulling the heavy coffin out of the pit. These four paper figures were completely like machines, and I really felt that this person's Taoism was powerful. The female corpse inside may not be heavy, but the coffin is heavy. This man is definitely pretending to be a pig to eat a tiger. He must be a master of Taoism. Otherwise, how could a few paper people do this? Isn't this like a living immortal? He controlled the paper people to bring up the coffin. I thought we would carry the coffin back together, but what surprised me again was that he pointed at the four paper people and then uttered a word, and these four paper people actually lifted the heavy coffin as if it were a jack. The paper people are not big, but lifting it up like this in the dark gives a strange feeling of suspension. Others would definitely be startled if they saw it. Go! He uttered this word again, and the four paper people immediately moved, carrying the coffin towards my house like monks carrying water. Fortunately, it was early morning and no one was around, otherwise, some timid people would have been scared to death by this scene. However, when I saw him leaving, his gaze intentionally or unintentionally glanced back at the coffin pit, which made me feel strange. Could there be something else inside the pit? Like something else buried there? When he wasn't paying attention, I also looked back, but all I could see was a rectangular depression, the imprint of the buried coffin underground. I didn't find anything, and I was worried that he would notice, so I didn't look for long and followed his footsteps back home. With these four paper people lifting the coffin, I easily brought them to the doorstep. On the way, I asked him his name. He simply said his name was Yang Chao and didn't say much else. Of course, I didn't ask further, I could tell that he didn't really want to talk to me. After opening the door, the four paper people were about to push the coffin inside, but suddenly stopped. I turned around in confusion, and Yang Chao made a hand gesture, causing the paper people to stop. I asked why they didn't go in. He seemed very cautious. Could it be that my mother had returned? I shouted, but no one inside responded. It's not that I don't want to go in, it's that your so-called mother doesn't want me to go in, Yang Chao said slowly. 
I said my mother wasn't home, so why wouldn't she let you in? Besides, my family runs a fortune-telling business, and anyone can come in. Don't believe me? Yang Chao glanced at me and took something out of his pocket. I saw that it was a Taoist peachwood sword. He inserted the peachwood sword into the ground at my doorstep, but to my surprise, the peachwood sword seemed to be forced out, flying out three or four meters. Yang Chao walked over and picked up the peachwood sword. Do you believe me now? I found it strange. When did my home become like this? I didn't understand this method, but I knew that it wasn't something Yang Chao was deliberately doing. When did my mother set this up? Has your mother had any rules for her fortune-telling business all these years? He asked. I hesitated and said that she only tells fortunes for three people a day and absolutely won't do it for less than 30 yuan, but there are no other rules. No, your mother's rule is not a problem, but you probably haven't noticed that she absolutely won't tell fortunes for people who know Taoism. Have you noticed that? Yang Chao asked. Hearing him say this, I thought about it. I had been exposed to fortune-telling since I was very young and knew the difference between ordinary people and those who know Taoism and Feng Shui. These people have a certain aura on their faces, which ordinary people don't have. He reminded me, and I did notice that the people my mother told fortunes for were all ordinary people. She really didn't tell fortunes for Taoist priests or Feng Shui masters. Did my mother deliberately avoid them using some method? I said this, and Yang Chao slowly said, that's normal. Why is it normal? I asked subconsciously. You actually know the reason yourself, you just resist thinking in that direction, he said. I didn't say anything. 18 years ago, your mother died on the mountain, and three days later, someone who looked exactly like your mother came down from the mountain and has been living as your mother ever since. What do you think about this? You don't need to avoid the question. Your mother didn't tell fortunes for people who know Taoism or Feng Shui, only for ordinary people. The reason is simple, your mother is not human. She was afraid that people like us would see through her identity, so she set up defenses at the doorstep. This explains why a person who died 18 years ago is still living here. He continued. I felt pain in my heart. He said that the mother who raised me from childhood is not human, and it pained me to hear it. But besides this explanation, there is no other way to explain how someone who died 18 years ago can still be living here. But if she's not human, could my mother be some kind of monster? But living under the same roof, I see her every day and haven't noticed anything unusual about her, except that she's particularly quiet and reclusive. What else sets her apart from others? I don't think there's anything. So what is she, really? It's ridiculous that demons and monsters can still tell fortunes. Can you tell fortunes? Do you have the qualifications? Man can conquer the heavens, and with effort, can surpass them. How dare something that's not human tell fortunes and challenge fate? Aren't you afraid of shortening your life? Yang Chao coldly snorted and shot his peach with sword directly. What are you going to do? I was shocked. It's highly likely that my mother is not human, I admit that, but my mother has never charged anyone for fortune telling. As long as there are three slots available each day, she tells fortunes for people of all ages and genders, always dedicated and conscientious. Why can't she tell fortunes? Does fortune telling have to be divided into different levels? But it was too late. With a bang, the peachwood sword shot directly into the wall at the entrance of our courtyard, and I faintly heard a mournful sound, as if something had broken. I didn't know what had happened, but Yang Chao pointed at the paper person propped against the coffin and once again uttered the word go. The four paper people carried the coffin, and without any hindrance, walked in and gently set the coffin down. The four paper people then collapsed next to Yang Chao, just like ordinary paper people. Yang Chao collected the paper people and then walked to the wall, pulling out the peachwood sword embedded in it. At that moment, I realized that he had broken my mother's defenses, and now, anyone who knows fortune-telling, Taoism, or Feng Shui could enter. I looked inside the house in confusion and saw an extra coffin, dark and emitting an eerie aura. But I wasn't afraid, I just had countless questions and hoped my mother would come back soon and tell me everything. Li Chen, I see you as a standard person, Yang Chao said as he approached. This was another reason for my pain. My mother is not human now, but she has always been good to me. No matter what she is, she's still my mother. But if my mother is not human, how could I be a standard person? Stay away from her. Humans and those things should not come into contact. You have to understand, if it's not human, then it will never be human. Humans can be good or bad, but these things will always be bad. They will do anything to survive, only bad things. Do you understand? Yang Chao said. I shook my head. No, my mother is not a bad person. She has never done anything to harm anyone. I can testify to that, because for so many years, except for the third day of each month when she goes out all day, she stays at home every day and doesn't go out. When would she have time to harm anyone? I shook my head and said, not going out means she won't harm anyone? 
what about at night? I just said, she is not qualified to tell fortunes, and that kind of thing, none of it is good. Wait, Yang Chao frowned, but as he spoke, his expression changed, what did you just say? She goes out every third day of the month? I hesitated and nodded, his expression was very surprised. No exceptions? Yang Chao asked me. I said there was one time, it was when I was a child, when I broke my hand, she took care of me, that was the first missed appointment, she went out the next day, and when she came back, she hung up the fortune telling sign and started doing fortune telling business, and since then, she has never missed an appointment again. How long has this been going on? Yang Chao frowned. Since I can remember, I said, probably 13 or 14 years. It's always been like this, I'm too curious about what she's doing when she goes out on that day. While I was pondering, Yang Chao suddenly snorted, as if he had come to some conclusion, do you know why she has to go out every third day of the month? I shook my head, at first I thought she was going out to see my father, after all, she had to see him once a month, right? That's what I always thought, but now it may not be, because she's not human, I'm not even her biological son, who does she see? So is she going to her cave on the mountain? After all, she might be some kind of animal that is cultivated into a spirit on the mountain, that is, some kind of monster, otherwise she wouldn't look exactly like the woman in the coffin, it can only be said that she has transformed herself, because she's a monster, and monsters need to maintain their human form, it's not that simple, usually it's crossing the tribulation, after crossing the tribulation, they can transform into any human form at will, but in this area, in your mountain, I checked, there hasn't been any monster successfully crossing the tribulation for 200 years, not even the tribulation thunder, it can be said that the talent in this mountain has declined, that is to say, she has been lucky, barely, cultivating a human form, but unable to maintain it for a long time, in this situation, she needs to absorb some young energy at specific times to maintain her human form, not to be discovered by people, usually these things like human blood. Yang Chao said slowly, with a hint of killing intent in his tone. I shook my head, you're talking nonsense, my mother would never do that. I followed her, every time she went up the mountain, how could she go and suck human blood? Moreover, it's been more than 10 years, there have been no news of anyone missing in our village, nearby villages, or even the entire town, where could she go to suck human blood? It's simply impossible, not to mention she's usually so quiet, she wouldn't do such a thing. As I said this, he sneered, the reason she's quiet and doesn't speak, that's even simpler, because she's barely transformed into a human form, how could she speak? In other words, she's just a barely awakened spirit, she can't speak at all, she's incoherent, so she speaks less, but in your eyes, that's quiet? And, the reason I say this, I'll tell you, there have indeed been no missing persons in your area, but in other places there have been, she's not human, it's no problem for her to travel back and forth within a 300 mile radius every day, and besides, in another place, there have been deaths for more than 10 years in a row, all within this 300 mile radius, I'm sure it's her doing, even a rabbit knows not to eat grass near its burrow, I suspect she's a rabbit spirit, Yang Chao continued, my voice trembled, is what you're saying true? Are there really people dying in another place? He nodded and said yes, I was instantly in pain, no, my mother is so quiet, how could she go and kill people? Maybe this time she went out to suck more blood to maintain her human form, that's all I have to say. You tell her, I will definitely get rid of such a harmful thing. Yang Chao said coldly, turned around to leave, but then he turned back, if you don't believe me, I'll give you something. When she's not paying attention, shine this mirror on her face. You can see her true form. If her eyes are blood red, she has just killed someone. Remember. He took out a mirror from his pocket, it was octagonal in shape, and you could vaguely see a gossip pattern on the mirror. Is this a demon revealing mirror? I asked instinctively. He nodded, yes. Snakes, rats, weasels, foxes are usually the easiest to become demons. I think she's either a rabbit demon or a fox demon. This demon revealing mirror can reveal them all. My hands trembled and I didn't intend to take it but he stuffed the demon revealing mirror into my hands. I immediately grabbed him, she hasn't killed anyone, and I won't let you kill her. Can you stop me? He glanced at me, shook off my hand, and walked away quickly into the distance, soon disappearing into the darkness. But a voice came from the darkness, she must be the one who killed the person in the coffin and then transformed into her appearance. I stood still, what did he say? I don't believe it. Yang Chao is definitely hiding something. The paper person and the peach would sword just now, I think he could have killed my mother. After all these years, my mother has been too quiet, not like her usual self. I can't stop him, but my mother raised me alone since I was a child, and I can't believe his one-sided words. My mother is definitely good. I looked down at the demon revealing mirror in my hand, hesitated for a moment, and decided to put it away first. I won't use it. When Yang Chao comes back, I'll give it back to him. Because she raised me, whatever demon she is, it doesn't matter to me. 
and I decided that when it's light out, I'll go find my mother and tell her that someone wants to kill her. But where has she gone? She went to the mountain, right? Her hand was broken, and I thought she had found a divine doctor at that time, so she recovered so quickly. But no, she's a demon, of course she would recover much faster than an ordinary person. I closed the door, but suddenly I thought, where did Yang Chao go? Did he go to find my mother, or did he go to the pit where the coffin was dug out just now? There's something inside, I can tell, is he going to get it? The more I thought about it, the more upset I became. I looked back at the coffin, and I definitely won't be able to sleep tonight. But there's nothing I can do. I walked up to the coffin, and for some reason, as soon as it entered the house, the temperature inside dropped, it was chilly. I can't tell if Yang Chao is good or bad for now, but why did he put this coffin in my house? I wanted to open the coffin, but it was no use, I couldn't open it. I sighed, what's going on with all of this? What did you encounter on the mountain those three days? How did you die? Yang Chao said you were killed by my mother, but is that true? I don't know what I'm thinking, and I fell asleep in a daze. When I woke up, I was awakened by a creaking sound. I opened my eyes and heard a noise at the front door. I just realized that I had fallen asleep leaning against the coffin just now. I'm also brave. I quickly got up, said sorry, and didn't care if she inside could hear me or not, and hurried to the front door. I looked out through the crack in the door. Who? Who's knocking on the door? I didn't see anyone through the crack in the door, and I became alert. There was no one. So where did the knocking sound come from? Could it be some dirty thing? I retreated cautiously, and suddenly the sound appeared again. I was instantly covered in goosebumps because I saw a small shadow under the door, as if a small animal was knocking on the door. I shivered and crouched down to look through the crack in the door. I was startled to see a white rabbit outside, scratching at the door with only one front paw moving, as if its left hand had been broken. When I saw this white rabbit through the crack in the door, I immediately remembered what Yang Chao had said before. He said that my mother might be a rabbit spirit. And now, with the rabbit outside having a seemingly broken left hand, does this not perfectly match the condition of my mother's severed hand? Could it be that the one knocking on the door outside is the mother who raised me for over 10 years? Is my mother really a rabbit spirit? If so, then I shouldn't be afraid, because for over 10 years, although she was quiet and didn't speak much, she was truly good to me, and I was well aware of that. Regardless of what she is, I cannot forget the kindness of raising me. I just find it strange in my heart, how could she have suddenly reverted to her original form this time? Why can't she maintain her human form? I didn't have time to think much about it and quickly opened the door. In fact, this was the first time I had seen such an amazing thing. This white rabbit was very clever. How many years of cultivation did it take for her to become a spirit? Whose cultivation is higher, my mother's or that woman who looks at corpses? The white rabbit came in, injured as if she had been in a fight with someone. I called out mother in confirmation, but she didn't answer me. It seemed as if she was frozen, because as soon as she came in, she stared straight at the coffin in my hall. How can I describe her expression? She looked very surprised. This relationship made me feel conflicted. Yang Chao said that my mother killed her 18 years ago. Could it really be true? Mother, I crouched down and looked at her, calling out to her again. I was deeply moved in my heart. The white rabbit came to her senses and quickly shook her head making squeaking noises as she tried to say something to me. I was immediately puzzled. If my mother couldn't revert to human form, and although she spoke little, Yang Chao said it was because of her low cultivation, she should still be able to speak. Why couldn't she speak at this moment? Could it be that she wasn't my mother? Are you my mother? I asked tentatively, speaking softly because I was afraid of hurting her pride, making her think that I didn't recognize her. She would definitely be very sad, after all, she had raised me for so many years. The kindness of raising me should be repaid like a gushing spring, not to mention the kindness of raising me. She decisively shook her head, which puzzled me. If she wasn't my mother, then who was she? I asked her, and she gestured with her paws, still making squeaking noises, unable to speak. How could I understand? But when I asked her how she got injured, she continued to gesture, and this time I understood. She had been in a hurry when she ran over to find me and ended up breaking her hand. I asked her to wait a moment, and I went to my room to get a few small pieces of wood and some gauze. I wrapped her hand first. This was the first time I had seen an animal so obedient. When I touched her broken hand, she just whimpered and shed tears, with a particularly pitiful and human-like expression, not pulling away, allowing me to bandage her without resistance. She knew I was helping her. After doing all this, I asked her who had sent her here. This time, she clearly pointed with her paws to a place, which was my mother's room. Could it be that my mother had sent her here? I was a little puzzled. Why did my mother send her here? When I was curious, I saw her stand up, 
but perhaps realizing that she was female, she felt embarrassed to show her furry belly in front of me, so she quickly turned her body around. I saw her searching in her belly fur, and quickly found a piece of paper. She turned around and handed it to me. I took it with doubt. There were words on it, and with just one glance, I could confirm that it was written by my mother. After all, these years of fortune-telling had always been written by my mother. I said that I could recognize her handwriting with just one glance. Delicate yet with a hint of strength, few women can write such characters that others cannot imitate. However, the few words written above unsettled me, do not trust anyone. I was stunned. Who did anyone refer to? Everyone I knew, or Yang Chao, the village chief? I indeed had some doubts about Yang Chao, as I still couldn't figure out his true motives, and his strange behavior near the grave was something I had witnessed. But as for the village chief and the others, I could trust them. They had watched me grow up. However, with my mother's warning, I was now inclined to distrust everyone. I nodded and said, okay, I understand. She breathed a sigh of relief and gestured with her paws. I asked her what she wanted, and this time she spoke in a human voice, though her speech was unclear. Money, she said. It took me several tries to understand, but I didn't have much money. I remembered my mother telling me to earn as much as I could before she left, but I hadn't. I hurried into the room and took out a few hundred yuan. After she saw it, her anthropomorphic expression seemed to ask why there was so little. I felt embarrassed and explained that I hadn't earned much. She stuffed the money into her fur and was about to leave. I was curious about what my mother needed the money for. As she ran to the door, I was about to follow her to tell her that a skilled practitioner was trying to kill her. But as the white rabbit reached the door, its fur suddenly stood on end, and it let out a shrill cry. It seemed to have been startled. I then saw a sharp peachwood sword thrust unexpectedly from the door, and Yang Chao's voice followed, Humph, a human and a demon are not the same. How dare you appear in front of humans without permission? I'll destroy you. I was startled and shouted, No! The peachwood sword pierced the rabbit, and it let out a wail, its white fur now soaked in blood as it lay twitching in a pool of blood. What are you doing? I angrily rushed over and saw the rabbit in agony, filled with pain. I see you're seriously ill, you're almost a demon, and you still believe? These things love to deceive people the most. They deserve to die. Yang Chao walked in, his face cold and indifferent, blood dripping from the peachwood sword in his hand. I was filled with anger. My mother had sent her, and now she had been stabbed to death by him? I could imagine the scene of my mother being stabbed by him, blood flowing, barely alive. It deserves to die. A demon should stay on the mountain and behave itself. I won't bother it. But appearing in the human activity area at will is not allowed. Yang Chao said coldly. I looked at his indifferent face. Who was he really? What did he want? Was he really called by the village chief? I didn't trust him, and my anger made it hard for me to control myself. This white rabbit might have been my mother's relative but now it was dead. She didn't do anything, just, I roared, didn't do anything? These things rarely honestly absorb the essence of heaven and earth for cultivation. Most likely, they have consumed something, be it human, heart, or even a child. Once they become demons, their animal nature erupts. Do you know how many people will die? Yang Chao said coldly. How dare you say she consumed? I hadn't finished speaking when Yang Chao coldly snorted, bold, how dare you deceive me? His peachwood sword thrust out again, filled with anger and surprise. I quickly grabbed him because I saw the white rabbit inside the pool of blood suddenly climb up and run out, holding her stomach and giving me a glance. I saw blood continuously flowing from her stomach. She let out a mournful cry and then ran away. But there was a long trail of blood on the ground. After being stabbed and bleeding so much, how long could she survive? Did you see that? These things are best at deceiving people, playing dead, confusing people's sight, and seeking sympathy. They shouldn't die, right? Yang Chao looked at me coldly and said, Li Chen, humans are humans, and monsters will always be monsters. No matter what they do, their ultimate goal is for themselves. Your mother can raise you, and she can also eat chicken. Don't you understand this? You are seriously ill. After Yang Chao finished speaking, he did not leave this time because it was almost dawn. I stared at him, and he said I was seriously ill, but he was the one who was. I looked out the door, and the blood of the rabbit extended all the way. I didn't know if the rabbit could still survive, or if she could take the money to find my mother. After all, Yang Chao's stab was too heavy. She might not be able to hold on and die halfway. I glanced at Yang Chao. He had just gone out, probably to bring something from the coffin pit. He might have achieved his goal. I have no other thoughts now. I have to avoid Yang Chao. According to what my mother said, I shouldn't trust anyone. I have to find my mother and tell her it's dangerous. Otherwise, if she suddenly comes back and is caught by Yang Chao, it would be extremely dangerous. 
I turned and walked into the house, tidied up a bit, put the remaining tens of dollars in my pocket, just in case. But when I finished packing and walked to the door, Yang Chao stopped me, you can't leave. Why? It's simple. Since the coffin has been dug up, the corpse gas inside will leak sooner or later. At this stage, you must help me deal with this coffin. Because the female corpse inside has no malice towards you, only towards you. Yang Chao said slowly. I could indeed feel that when the coffin was placed in the house, I didn't feel uncomfortable, but rather cool, like turning on the air conditioner. A ridiculous thought popped into my mind. Do I have any connection with this female corpse? But what could the connection be? She didn't get pregnant before she died on the mountain, and when she came down the mountain, my current mother transformed into her appearance. I actually have no relationship with her, but why didn't she restrain herself towards me? Even if I agreed to put her in the house, it was because I wanted to thoroughly understand what was going on. I turned back and glanced at the coffin. Did her body change? It shouldn't have, and it's not that easy to change. Otherwise, the world would be in chaos. Haven't you achieved your goal? I felt there was no need to hide it from him. What do you mean? Yang Chao frowned. Since the conversation had reached this point, I had to be clear. When I was pulling the coffin, you secretly used a paper person to pass on information. I saw it, and I also saw you deliberately or unintentionally looking at the coffin pit when we came back. There must be something inside. You just went out and brought something from the coffin pit, right? As I said this, I felt relieved. When I said this, surprise appeared on Yang Chao's face. He looked at me deeply and hesitated for a moment before nodding. Yes, I did use a paper person to pass on the matter, but it's not what you said about passing on information. It's to inform someone about the progress of this matter. As for who this person is, I can't tell you for the time being. In addition, your observation is good. You are indeed a fortune teller. You are also right. There is indeed something in the coffin pit, and I did go out to get it. There's no need to hide it. I can even show you what it is. He said as he took out a damp, muddy box, and I was surprised. Why was he so frank? What did it mean? I looked at the box in his hand, and he opened it directly, only to find it empty. My expression changed slightly. Believe it or not, I just got this box, and it's empty, Yang Chao said. I believed him, because although the box was empty, there were no traces of anything inside. Normally, if something had been placed inside and buried underground for so long, even the slightest thing would leave a trace, but there was nothing. What was going on? How could it be an empty box? Could the box itself be strange? I took it out and could only tell that the box was quite old. I could only guess what this box was for, and only that woman who wasn't human would know. Yang Chao took the box from my hand and continued, You are so wary of me. If I guess correctly, that rabbit spirit just gave you a message, like, be careful of me? Well, you should be careful of me, because I will kill your so-called mother. What exactly do you do? I frowned, feeling my anger reignite. You don't need to worry about what I do. I'll just tell you that my mission is to vanquish demons and evil spirits, Yang Chao said. Is it the village chief's idea? I asked, remembering when the village chief went to find Yang Chao, I saw that he was lying. Did the village chief have some other hidden agenda? Or did the village chief already know that my mother was a spirit? My mother was right. I really shouldn't trust anyone. Him? You'll have to ask him yourself. I came here mainly to deal with the case of Zheng San's corpse change and the matter of this coffin. But the person inside this coffin is not that simple. So after I saw the female corpse in the coffin, I used a paper person to convey all this to headquarters, to find out who this woman really is. But before I received any news, you saw it. There's still no news, but I think this woman is not simple, so we must prepare to deal with it as soon as possible, Yang Chao said slowly. Deal with it? Burn it? I instinctively looked at the coffin. The person inside had been lying there for 18 years, always peaceful. If it weren't for Zhang San being buried, she would probably have remained buried underground, and no one would have known. My idea is that when a person dies, they should just accept it and not cause trouble. So no matter who she is, the ultimate result will definitely be to burn her. The corpse gas inside is too heavy. A chance event could lead to corpse change. This kind of thing, and your so-called mother, must die, Yang Chao said sternly. Yang Chao's words made me particularly disgusted. People have good and bad sides. Did my mother and the others not have that? I didn't want to help him. I had no grudge against the woman inside the coffin. Why should I burn her? Besides, she had no ill intentions towards me. I could feel that myself. I said directly, and Yang Chao frowned, it seems like you're really sick. He left these words and turned to leave, but as soon as he left, I shivered because I suddenly heard a breathing sound. There were only the two of us here, and Yang Chao was about to leave, so it couldn't be him. Then who? I instinctively looked into the hall at the coffin. Could the corpse have changed? 
It shouldn't be possible, right? When I listened again, the breathing sound had disappeared. I breathed a sigh of relief. I must have been too nervous and heard wrong. She had been dead for so long, and there was no opportunity for corpse change. How could she come back to life? I shook my head, but Yang Chao, who was at the door, suddenly turned back, his eyes fixed on the coffin. Could he have also heard the breathing sound? Did I not hear wrong? Yang Chao walked back and circled around the coffin. Suddenly, he said, the mice in your house have become clever, can't you see? I hurried to the other side of the coffin and actually saw a large mouse, possibly 7 or 8 ounces in size, knocking its head under the coffin. It was a kind of head knocking as if it were courting. Could this large mouse have taken a liking to the female corpse inside the coffin? But how could there be such a large mouse in my house? Birds of a feather flock together. Get out of here. Yang Chao coldly snorted, his voice full of authority. The large mouse immediately found a place to hide, and actually ran into my room. I hurried to drive it out, but swish, it went in and actually called out its companions. Seven or eight large mice surrounded the coffin and capered around. What was going on? They seemed particularly unrestrained, as if they were not afraid of people. Yang Chao's face turned ugly, and I suddenly got scared because there were several snakes slithering in the yard. What was going on? Did my house hide so many things? Were all the animals coming out? Was there going to be an earthquake? Yang Chao also saw it, and I hurriedly ran out. It wasn't just my house, I also heard screams from the neighbors not far away, shouting about mice, snakes, and the like. What was going on? I was bewildered, and Yang Chao's eyes turned and suddenly looked towards the mountain, his tone filled with suspicion, the mountain god is in trouble, so things are in chaos in the mountains. The mountain god is in trouble? Did the mountain god die? How could the mountain god die? This thought popped into my head, but I immediately denied it. Zheng San should have been killed by the mountain god, and my mother said the mountain god did not have the mountain god seal. So the mountain god was looking for the mountain god seal, how could it die? After all, being a mountain god, it must also be a powerful and mysterious being. Not to mention ordinary people, even the mysterious Yang Chao in front of me might not be able to easily kill a mountain god. The animals on the mountain were in turmoil, and I thought it should be because the mountain god seal was broken. If the mountain god seal was broken, then the mountain god of this mountain would be unable to do anything. Without the control of the mountain god, the animals in the mountains would definitely take advantage of this opportunity to run out. It was like a prison riot. However, as I analyzed this, I still subconsciously stared at Yang Chao. After all, he wanted to kill the clever monsters, and he might even want to kill the mountain god. He shook his head, don't look at me. The mountain god is like a local official. Even if I want to kill the clever monsters, I won't lay a hand on the mountain god. After all, the mountain god has the mountain god seal and controls a whole area of mountains and rivers. If the mountain god dies, this area of mountains and rivers will definitely be in chaos. But if the mountain god has done something wrong, then I will also act on behalf of the heavens. He said this, and I ignored him. At least he didn't kill all the clever monsters. He wouldn't kill the mountain god. At this moment, I really wished my mother was the mountain god so he wouldn't kill my mother, but my mother was so quiet. According to Yang Chao, she had a low level of cultivation and had just become a clever monster. How could she be the mountain god? I sighed and asked with a glimmer of hope, what conditions were needed to be a mountain god? At least 500 years of cultivation, that's the standard. Otherwise, without even 500 years of cultivation, how could you suppress the unruly clever monsters on the mountain? Humph, the mountain god of this mountain is really unworthy of the title of mountain god, simply indulgent. He even allowed your mother to come down the mountain and set up a fortune-telling sign. I don't want to be the mountain god of this mountain anymore. Yang Chao continued coldly, Also, I know why you asked that, but your so-called mother has shallow cultivation and is just a role called upon on the mountain. That kind of cultivation could never be a mountain god. My hope was shattered. My mother stayed at home all day, only going out once a month on the third day. She had no time to manage the mountain. How could she be the mountain god? But he glanced at the distant mountain and muttered to himself, could it be that the mountain god seal is in trouble? I think so too. I saw him hesitate for a moment, as if he thought the matter was getting serious and needed to be dealt with in person. He walked out without saying a word, as if he was going to find the mountain god. I hesitated, wondering what to do. If he meets my mother on the mountain, with his personality, he would definitely attack her with a sword. I can't let that happen. I quickly prepared to close the door and followed him up the mountain. However, I hesitated for a moment, ran into the hall, and took out three apples, hurriedly burning three sticks of incense in front of the coffin. I don't know what to say. I hope you rest in peace. When I come back, I will find a place to bury you again, and make sure no one will disturb you again. Rest in peace. 
As I said this, I lit a cigarette and stuck it into the apples. I stood up and ran to the door to close it, but suddenly found that the three incense sticks had extinguished themselves. What's going on? I ran back, but couldn't light them again. I used up the remaining incense in the house, but still couldn't light them. I felt strange and a ridiculous thought came to my mind. Tentatively, I asked, are you awake? After all, the coffin did not need incense, which meant that the person inside the coffin did not need it. There was no response from inside the coffin, not even the eerie breathing from earlier. It seemed that I was overthinking. Maybe the incense had gotten damp? It must be, otherwise why wouldn't it light? Without thinking about it, I said, wait for me to come back, and ran out. I closed the door and first followed the fresh blood of the rabbit on the ground. She must have gone to find my mother, but something made me feel uneasy. I followed the intermittent bloodstains on the ground to the village entrance, but a strange scene appeared. The bloodstains extended a few hundred meters from the village entrance, but then turned back towards the mountain. What's going on? Could it be that when the rabbit went to find my mother, she saw her and was taken up the mountain by her? I thought so, and didn't care about anything else. I ran straight up the mountain. My mother must have gone back up the mountain. It was just getting light, and I didn't see Yang Chao, but I saw a familiar face, not really, but a lowly old man from our village. He often went up the mountain to find food, such as fruits and wild rabbits, and brought back a lot of things each time. The mountain god seal of Zhang San was found by him on the mountain, and Zhang San took 300 yuan for it. He said it himself when Zhang San asked me to read his fortune. How did he find the mountain god seal? Shouldn't the mountain god seal be carried by the mountain god? I felt that something was strange. He also went towards the mountain. He was very familiar with the whole mountain. I thought about whether I should ask him to show me the way, after all, the bloodstains of the rabbit had disappeared, and there was so much blood along the way. I hesitated and ran over, calling out to him. When Lao Lu saw me, he was so scared that he trembled. What are you doing? Nothing, I explained. Why did he look so flustered when he saw me? Was he scared by the animals running around? Stay away from me, farther away, Lao Lu said, keeping five or six meters away from me, afraid that I would kill him for no reason. But why would I kill him for no reason? I helplessly said that I was just going up the mountain, and he stared at me. What are you going up the mountain for? Of course, I couldn't say that I was going to find my mother, otherwise it would scare him. After all, my mother still had to tell fortunes for others. If other people knew that she was a monster, who would dare to come? I just said that I was going up to take a look around, but he was still particularly wary of me. It seemed that he was especially cautious because of the fact that I was the son of a monster. This was something I couldn't help. Everyone in the village knew that my mother went up the mountain for three days and came back pregnant with me. It was so strange that anyone would think in that direction, but over the years, I have come to terms with it. Where's your mother? Old Lu asked me, and I shook my head and said I had gone out. Old Lu was puzzled, gone out? Doesn't your mother only close the shop on the third day of every month? What date is it today? I said I had some things to do, so I closed the shop. Old Lu hesitated for a moment, stared at me for a while, and we walked up the mountain. To change the subject, I asked him how he found the mountain god seal. At first, he didn't understand, but after I explained, he suddenly realized and became afraid, asking if there would be trouble if he found it. I looked at his expression and shook my head, saying that there wouldn't be a big problem, but there might be small issues. After all, the mountain god seal was brought out from the mountain by him. I said that he should take me to see the cave, in case we could meet the mountain god. The mountain god must know where my mother's cave is. After all, my mother is also a follower of the mountain god, and she said that the mountain god would not harm me, so it's okay to ask boldly. At this time, the sun was about to come out, and old Lu quickened his pace, saying it was too hot. I was puzzled because it was still cool in the early morning. No, it's too hot, it's making me uncomfortable. Old Lu found a big tree and stopped. I looked at him in confusion and suddenly had an idea in my mind. At the same time, I felt a chill behind me. Could it be him? I hesitated for a moment, gathered my courage, and walked over. I secretly took out the demon-revealing mirror that Yang Chao had given me and secretly aimed it at Old Lu. A cold feeling rushed from my heel to the back of my head. Because the mirror was clearly aimed at him, but there was a tree and everything in the background in the mirror, but there was no Old Lu. Seeing this eerie scene in the mirror, I almost screamed. I tried to move the mirror with trembling hands, and the place where old Lu stood, the tree, and everything in the background moved with my hand, but there was still no old Lu. Yan Chao said that this demon-revealing mirror could expose most demons. I had no other choice but to try it. I didn't expect that there was no old Lu in the mirror. This scene was too eerie. It could only mean that he was not a physical entity, in other words, he was a ghost. Old Lu was already dead, 
but he didn't know it. It seemed that my previous doubts were unnecessary. Even the ringleader who sold the mountain god seal, Zhang San, had died. As the culprit, he would not escape death when the mountain god became angry. He must have died at home. It's so hot, Li Chen, aren't you hot? Old Lu wiped his sweat with his sleeve, but he was a ghost, how could he sweat? I nodded subconsciously and secretly put away the demon-revealing mirror. At this time, the sun was about to rise, and he definitely couldn't leave. After all, he was a ghost, and being exposed to the sun would make him disappear. I hesitated for a moment and said I needed to go back to get something. He sat down by himself and nodded, okay, it's too hot, I don't want to walk anymore. I ran to his house. It was very dilapidated, just a small adobe house, not far away. I could see his house from a distance. I held my breath and ran over. When I reached the window, I was disgusted by what I saw inside. Sure enough, old Lu had turned everything upside down, and he lay in a pool of blood, his neck bitten off like Zhang San's, and he had long lost any signs of life. According to the coagulation of the blood, he should have been dead for three or four hours. No one noticed, everyone was scared by Zhang San. The doors were closed at night, so who would come out? Normally, a body would start to smell before anyone found it. After all, Lao Lu was a bachelor and didn't behave well. Sometimes he even harassed widows and orphans. He was isolated by the people in the village, so who would come to his house? Many people wished he would die. What disgusted me was that the rats in his house were shamelessly walking around his wounds. There were bloody footprints all over the house, making people's scalps tingle. There was even a rat crawling in his mouth, as if eating his tongue. And there was a tail moving in his bitten neck, as if a rat had already crawled into his body. I couldn't bear to look anymore, I was about to vomit my dinner from yesterday. But when I was about to leave, I suddenly found the back door. It was slightly ajar, and the door moved as if someone was pushing it from the outside. I even saw a figure over there. Could it be the mountain god? Did he kill Lao Lu and not leave? I hurriedly ran around his house and reached the back. What I saw scared me, because I saw Yang Chao. How did he get here? Wasn't he supposed to be in the mountains? I instinctively asked him what he was doing here. His explanation was that he smelled blood, so he came over. But I suspected that he was following me, and when I found him, he came up with this excuse. After all, when I saw the figure at the back door, I clearly saw a sense of evasion. What did you see? Yang Chao asked me. I hesitated for a moment and said I saw Lao Lu's ghost. He frowned, take me to see. I didn't say anything. To be honest, I had to avoid him, otherwise, if I found my mother, she would be in danger. I changed the subject and asked if this was the work of the mountain god. He nodded and said it should be. I didn't say anything, and he glanced at me and walked directly towards the mountain. I could only follow him. From a distance, I saw Lao Lu still hiding under the tree. The sun had come out, and he was particularly afraid, leaning against the trunk with a look of horror and disbelief, as if he had discovered that he was already dead. Yang Chao went straight over and said a few words to Lao Lu, who turned ashen, as if he had accepted this unchangeable fact. He waved to me, Li Chen, come here, I'll tell you something. I nodded and walked over. He knew he was a ghost, so he wasn't wary of me. He looked at me and said, this is my fate, and I've accepted it. For so many years, I went up the mountain every week to catch some livestock to sell in the city. I brought down whatever good things I found. I didn't expect that what I brought down this time would cost me my life. He sighed and continued, when your mother went up the mountain, before she conceived you, I was also on the mountain. I saw your mother walking on the mountain, so I followed her. In the end, I saw her fall into a mountain ditch. I was scared and thought she was dead, so I hurriedly ran down the mountain. But two days later, your mother came down the mountain unharmed, and her belly was getting bigger day by day. I found it unbelievable. The mountain ditch was so deep, how could anyone survive? I went to your house to take a look, but your mother ignored me, so I left dejectedly. At that time, I thought your mother was not lucky, but was saved by something. It seemed that he was particularly afraid of me, and there was this reason. But she wasn't saved, because at this time, she was lying in a coffin, and had been lying there for almost 18 years. But when she fell, she might have held on for a while, barely alive, and was seen by my current mother. But why would my mother transform into her appearance? I can't understand this. Could it be her request? I don't think so. There's no reason for her to ask for this. I can only understand everything after I see my mother. However, Lao Lu said that at the end, he looked at me with special curiosity, as if asking me whether I was the son of a monster. My mother said I was human, and Yang Chao also said so, so I must be human. But if I am human, how could I have come out of my mother's belly? She is a monster, so could a monster give birth to a human? But this idea is too absurd. Yang Chao listened with a gleam in his eyes, and remained silent throughout. 
However, when he saw that Lao Lu had no intention of speaking, he took out a yellow talisman and muttered some words. It seemed like he was going to send Lao Lu away. After all, it was getting light, and if he didn't leave, he would disappear. Lao Lu was grateful, but hesitated for a moment and whispered in my ear, "This person is a good person." I was surprised. Why did Lao Lu say that? Did Jiang Chao bribe him to leave? And be careful of the rats, Lao Lu said. And then his body became transparent, slowly seeping into the ground, directly descending to the underworld. His last words made me alert. Be careful of the rats. Could the mountain god be a rat spirit? In other words, was it a rat that bit his neck? I didn't know if Yang Chao heard what he said, but he glanced at me and went straight up the mountain. I hesitated for a moment and followed him. We soon reached the foot of the mountain, and Yang Chao took out a yellow talisman, still muttering obscure spells. Suddenly, the talisman in his hand emitted light, and he pointed his finger and said, "Local mountain god, come and see me now." The glowing talisman shot out and disappeared into the woods in an instant. Yang Chao closed his eyes and rested, as if waiting for the mountain god to come and see him. I was surprised. Who was he exactly? How could he summon the mountain god as if he were an emperor? Lao Lu said he was a good person, but my mother told me not to trust anyone, so I wouldn't trust him either. I followed him shamelessly, mainly wanting to ask the mountain god where my mother used to live, so I could take her away and avoid him. I felt that Yang Chao was becoming more and more mysterious. He was resting with his eyes closed, and I was getting anxious and bored waiting. I looked at his face for a while, but still couldn't figure him out. I couldn't help but take out the demon-revealing mirror he had given me and secretly aimed it at him. I wanted to see through his face and know if he was a good person or a bad person. But as soon as I looked, I almost dropped the mirror because in the demon-revealing mirror there was a terrifying scar on his neck, a fatal wound. In that instant, I was horrified. He was not human either. Could he be a corpse? What was going on? I suddenly remembered my mother's message not to trust anyone. So could I trust him if he wasn't human? I couldn't judge this for the time being. If my mother said not to trust anyone, then I definitely couldn't trust him. As for whether he was human or not, I couldn't judge for the time being. But the fact that Yang Chao was not a real person surprised me greatly. After all, he was a master of Taoism. How could he use Taoism if he wasn't human? This was too illogical. I felt too strange inside and couldn't help but use the demon-revealing mirror on him again, secretly aiming it at him. Only then did I realize that the wound on his neck had not turned black. Meaning there was no sign of corpse transformation, and when I looked again, I could see that there was a very transparent talisman attached to his neck, probably to cover the wound. In other words, he seemed to be on the brink of death. So was he dead or alive? I couldn't figure this out, but if my mother were here, she would definitely be able to tell. But she wasn't. I sighed, even more worried about my mother's situation, and I didn't know how she was doing now. But to be honest, the Yang Chao in the demon mirror, in the moment I just saw, really scared me enough. It seems that the methods of the Taoist are especially magical and endless. He had such a big wound on his neck; it must be uncomfortable on purpose. But he didn't change his expression. I suddenly felt a little sympathy for him. Of course, just for a moment. After all, he stabbed that white rabbit with a sword and wanted to kill my mother. I saw Yang Chao starting to open his eyes, so I quickly put away the demon mirror, pretending to know nothing in case he found out. I really didn't know how to explain. I just wanted to use the demon mirror to see his face and his fortune. But it didn't work. The demon mirror is not a magnifying glass for fortune tellers. It's useless. But this accidental move made me realize that Yang Chao might not be human. He opened his eyes, glanced at me, probably feeling that my complexion wasn't good, and showed a strange look. Of course, I didn't change my expression. Just thinking, is he a good person or a bad person? Yang Chao didn't look at me much because at this time, the reason he had just shot out the talisman caused a disturbance in the grass, and in the grass, a pair of black eyes appeared. Completely black like bubble tea pearls, the size of Longden. It was a pair of mouse eyes. This really scared me enough. Such a big mouse. Rustling, the owner of these eyes emerged from the grass. A fat mouse bigger than a tangerine cat, with a tail as thick as a newborn baby's arm, bare and swaying on the ground like a snake. A bit creepy. Is this the mountain god in this mountain? When I was puzzled, I suddenly remembered what Old Lu had said. Beware of the mouse. I became cautious. And this mouse seemed to know me, staring at me with its black eyes for a few seconds, and seemed to be plotting something as it rolled its eyes. It should know me, although I haven't been to the mountain much. But with so many mice and living here for so many years because of my mother, it must have seen me. But I haven't seen it. After looking at me, it looked at Yang Chao, sniffed, and showed a hesitant, human-like expression. It spoke intermittently, very awkwardly, as if it had learned another language. Unclear. You, you are. You are the mountain god. Yang Chao spoke expressionlessly. The big mouse shook its head. I, my family, 
the head of the family is. I understood, mice are all in one nest, it meant that their leader is the mountain god, but old Lu warned me to be careful of the mouse, so I certainly remembered this, but the cultivation of this big mouse was obviously higher than that of the white rabbit yesterday, because it could speak, although not clearly. But being able to speak is an important criterion for an animal to become a spirit. Take me to see it, Yang Chao said. Okay, but your peachwood sword and all your magical tools on your body must be held by me, the big mouse said. Yang Chao frowned, glanced at the big mouse, and took out all the miscellaneous magical tools from his body. The big mouse held them with its two paws and walked ahead very satisfied, with a feeling of a king patrolling the mountain, its fat body standing up and walking like a person, to be honest, it was a bit funny to watch. I secretly looked at Yang Chao, he had no expression, but I remembered old Lu's words and followed from a distance. The fat mouse led the way, and after about two hours, it felt like crossing mountains and ridges. Finally, it stopped at the entrance of a cave under a cliff. There were no traces of anyone coming here. Without a guide, it would be unlikely to find this place. Inside, the fat mouse said. Yang Chao nodded and walked inside, and of course I followed. However, a fat rat stopped me. Weapon, I said I didn't have a weapon, but the fat rat circled around me a few times before grunting, don't mess around, or else, your mother won't be able to save you. I wasn't surprised by its words, as my mother would go up the mountain every third day, so they must know each other. The fat rat continued to lead the way, and I followed behind. But as we entered, there was an indescribable smell, very foul, as if the toilet hadn't been cleaned in over a decade. I covered my nose, and my eyes felt stinging. However, Yang Chao remained unfazed, and I admired him a bit. He must deal with these monsters often. But I felt speechless. My mother was also a monster, yet she was so clean, without any odor, and had the scent of a virtuous mother. But this mountain god was so smelly? Why are mountain gods so unkempt? This once again surprised me. I didn't say much because my disgusted gesture of covering my nose made the fat rat leading us turn around and glare at me with its black pearl-like eyes. Of course, I didn't look at it. Soon, we were led deep into the cave, and to my surprise, it was fully equipped inside, giving the feeling of a three-bedroom apartment in the city. There were modern furniture and kitchenware, but all of them were old, as if they were salvaged from a garbage dump and piled up in the cave. Along with some other large rats, the cave, which wasn't very big to begin with, seemed somewhat crowded. And a roughly 12 or 13-year-old ugly boy was staring at the two of us with his dark eyes as he sat on a tattered sofa. This was the mountain god? Did he bite Jiang San and Lao Lu to death? As he looked at me like that, I felt a chill down my spine. He seemed to not have completely transformed into human form, as his mouth, with two yellow protruding front teeth, covered his lower lip and could be used to dig the ground. Anyone with keen eyes could tell he wasn't human. The disparity was too great. My mother transformed into a human form, but how could this one, who was clearly not human, be a mountain god? What do you want with me? The boy said, with a pronunciation that wasn't standard but spoke quite coherently. Are you the mountain god? Yang Chao asked. Yes, I am the mountain god. What do you want? The boy's pitch black eyes narrowed. I'm fine, Yang Chao said, and then he actually closed his eyes, which surprised me. What did he come here for? Just to ask a question and then not ask anymore? The atmosphere became eerie. The boy frowned and stared at Yang Chao for a few seconds, then turned to look at me, squinting even more. She, does she not know you came to find me? His words had a hint of playfulness. I shook my head and said I didn't know, then approached him and stood in front of the sofa. I want you to tell me where my mother lives on the mountain, that was my purpose for coming here. Where she lives is quite mysterious. I haven't been there, but I can tell you, if you lower your head a bit, he said, showing his large yellow teeth. I hesitated and lowered my head. The boy whispered in my ear, you have to answer a question for me first. I nodded, agreeing to it as an exchange. Have you seen her true form? The boy asked. My mother's true form? Of course, I hadn't seen it, because I only found out these past two days that she wasn't human. At other times, why would I pay attention to such things? And I certainly wouldn't think about her true form. I shook my head. But with this question, did it mean that as a mountain god, he didn't know what my mother's true form was? This surprised me. Was it because my mother's cultivation was higher than his? But Yang Chao said my mother hadn't even undergone the tribulation, so her cultivation wasn't high at all. Maybe every third day of the month when she went up the mountain, she revealed her true form in a place where no one was around. As the god in charge of this area, how could he not know? Is it normal not to know whether the people in the village are male or female, just like the village chief? Definitely not normal. I became a little wary, and old Lu's words echoed in my ears again, beware of the rat. I stepped back a bit. You haven't seen her? Of course I want to, but she's quite secretive, never revealing her true form to others. 
I initially thought she was a rabbit, so I offered her carrots, but she refused. Then I offered her meat, but she still refused. She has the gentleness of a rabbit and the ruthlessness of a venomous snake, both in one. What exactly is her true form? The boy spoke, and his two yellow, protruding front teeth moved again, and I could almost imagine the faint traces of blood between them, as if left behind by a bite on someone's neck. It sent shivers down my spine. I could sense the gentleness of a rabbit, but I didn't feel the ruthlessness of a venomous snake. Perhaps it was because she was always quiet and never showed her anger. But I actually knew, because I had the demon-revealing mirror given to me by Yang Chao. As soon as I used it, I would know what my mother's true form was. It's just that, by using it, by not believing in her, she, who had raised me for over 10 years, would definitely be hurt because I used the demon-revealing mirror to find her. I didn't want to say much to him. Where does my mother live? I want to find her. Find her? She's in no position to protect herself now, the boy smiled faintly, but his smile sent chills down my spine. In no position to protect herself? I subconsciously looked at Yang Chao not far away. Was he referring to Yang Chao? Yes, in no position to protect herself. The boy said, and I stared at him, feeling even more wary. I asked him where my mother lived, and he shrugged, not saying anything, and just looked at me with a smile that seemed to hold a deeper meaning. In fact, when I saw him, I wanted to read his fortune, but he knew what I wanted to know from his face. However, he was a demon, and it was difficult for me to read him, unless he cooperated with me and released the demonic energy from his face, then I could truly see his face. This made me hesitate. Why should he cooperate with me? I hesitated for a moment and asked, what's your name? The boy frowned, hmph, why do you want to know? Of course, I didn't want to know his name. I just wanted to know his intention for not speaking, that's all. Fortune telling involves face reading, palm reading, energy reading, and character reading. Since face reading didn't work, I had to use other methods. I was now using character reading to guess his intention, but the character had to be the first word that came to mind, without deliberate thought, in order to be used for character reading. He was a little angry when he heard me ask his name, and snorted, so I could use this snort to roughly guess his intention. Do you want to ask me other questions? I looked at him and said slowly. Not far away, Yang Chao showed a hint of expression and looked at me. Oof, you don't even know what her true form is. What questions do I have for you? The boy raised an eyebrow, indifferent. You just said a hump word. In our fortune telling, we can use character reading to interpret it. Hump can be broken down into mouth and prosperous. With mouth as the tongue, it means you want me to speak. What do you want me to say? It's definitely not about myself, but about you. You want me to read your fortune. I said slowly. Go on, the boy showed a hint of emotion. Furthermore, Prosperous implies wealth and smoothness, indicating that you have ambitions to change your current situation, but it's a pity. A pity for what? The boy frowned, his black eyes staring at me. Prosperous and mouth are put together. I shook my head. What does that mean? The boy stood up from the tattered sofa. Because according to Humph, the mouth comes first, and the prosperous comes after. There's fire in the mouth, so the smoothness behind will be burned or even eaten up. So your idea of changing your situation and becoming successful won't work. It's like pouring water into a bamboo basket, it will all be in vain. I continued. This is the information given to me by the word calculation, and also is change in the current situation. I actually didn't explain it clearly. Because Han, how to say, compared to the enjoyment of Xiang, lacks a one, enjoyment is after the event, which further illustrates that this event cannot be achieved because it lacks a one. So why can't he achieve it? It's because Hong doesn't have a one below, that is, there is no Z, Z represents people, even the most important one, that is, heart is also missing, so how can this matter be achieved? Also, what he did wrong is because he lacks a heart, he did bad things in order to change the current situation. I'm just spinning my wheels? Ha, huh, ridiculous. Do you know what I did? I. The boy was provoked by my words, completely uncontrollable to say anything, but at this moment, suddenly heard Yang Chao coldly said, no need to calculate anymore, then, a scream, I was suddenly shocked, what happened? I turned around and saw that Yang Chao had actually pinched his fingers, used his Tao technique, and summoned back his peachwood sword, which cut off the fat rat that had just led the way. It screamed and fled in panic, but Yang Chao didn't give it time to escape at all. With lightning speed, he stabbed the fat rat with a sword. It wailed and fell to the ground twitching, and soon lost its breath. I was shocked by Yang Chao's sudden move, but at the same time, I felt that he did nothing wrong. How dare you kill my son? The boy's voice became bitter, and all the other rats in the cave panicked and fled in all directions. The rats are causing trouble, even the heavens want to destroy you, how can any other creatures survive? Do you think I don't know this common sense? Where is the real mountain god? 
Has the mountain god seal encountered a problem? Yang Chao held the peachwood sword, his expression cold. The boy's eyes were full of bitterness. What are you coming over here for? Who are you after all? So many things out of control at the foot of the mountain, it's definitely a problem with the mountain god seal. Tell me, did you steal the mountain god seal? Yang Chao asked coldly. I suddenly realized, no wonder when I analyzed earlier, I figured out what bad thing he had done. It turns out he stole the mountain god seal. Maybe after stealing it, everyone was asleep late at night, maybe not even there, and confused Lao Lu stumbled in, woke up in a daze, and took the mountain god seal away. The boy didn't expect such a thing, and even more so didn't expect that the mountain god seal would be sold for 300 yuan by Lao Lu, and even more so didn't expect that it would be smashed by Zhang San. He killed Zhang San in a fit of pique, and also killed Lao Lu to vent his anger, so when Lao Lu left for the underworld, he warned me to beware of the rats, and Lao Lu saw that the one who bit him to death was a big rat. He wanted to change the current situation, to become the mountain god, to usurp the position, so who is the real mountain god? So what? Can I become the mountain god just because I'm a rat? The boy said bitterly. Do I have to repeat myself? The plague god in the sky creates the plague every year to reduce your numbers, do you understand? Letting you become the mountain god? Let the mountain god come out and see me. Yang Chao stared at the boy, coldly saying. There is no mountain god, this mountain is gone, the mountain god seal was smashed by that person, I found him, he begged me for mercy, huh, is it useful to beg for mercy after smashing such an important thing? I bit off his neck. The boy sneered, and his big yellow teeth emitted a cold light. Hearing this, I was horrified, Lao Lu was ignorant, Zhang San didn't listen to Chia Shou Zhang's words, I won't comment on their deaths, so who is the real mountain god after all? This boy said there is no mountain god, the mountain god seal is broken, so there is no mountain god? It should be, otherwise he wouldn't be so brazen. However, Yang Chao killed one of his sons, obviously angering him. At this moment, the true form of this boy is about to be exposed. His face is contorting, his large yellow teeth are becoming sharp, and white whiskers like steel wires are protruding from the corners of his mouth, looking eerie and ferocious. His resentful gaze suddenly retracted from Yang Chao and directly stared at me, making me break out in a cold sweat. Why is he looking at me like that? Is it because of the mountain god seal being broken? Or is it because of my mother? Are there some conflicts between us being on the same mountain? Despite being stared at, I honestly feel no fear. My mother is on this mountain, and this rat spirit dare not harm me. After Yang Chao's peachwood sword stabbed and killed a rat just now, there was still blood on the sword. He walked towards the boy and thrust the sword. The boy seemed to know that he was no match for Yang Chao, and he screamed, releasing a white smoke as if from a fire extinguisher, enveloping himself. The peachwood sword shot into the white smoke, but Yang Chao frowned. I vaguely saw a head-sized, white-bearded rat fleeing in panic, glancing back at me as it escaped. This big rat didn't even fight Yang Chao, it just left directly. How powerful is Yang Chao really? I feel like I can't understand him more and more. He picked up the peachwood sword, his expression somewhat grim. A rat is just a rat, always hiding and dodging. Even if it becomes clever, its nature is hard to change. But I was anxious. After finally coming here, I still didn't know where my mother lived. Where should I go to find her? Has your mother told you why she goes out every third day of the month? Yang Chao suddenly asked me. I instinctively shook my head. I don't know. Didn't he say my mother goes out on the third to suck blood and maintain her human form? Why is he suddenly asking this? You don't know? Yang Chao's expression changed, showing a puzzled look. I added that she always goes up the mountain. She goes up the mountain on the third? Yang Chao muttered to himself, as if he had thought of something but was unwilling to believe it. You've really never seen your mother's true form? Yang Chao also asked, and I shook my head, saying I really hadn't. I hadn't even thought about it. How could I possibly discover these things? But now that he asked, I also found it strange. Is it because my mother hides so well, or is it because her cultivation is very high? But if it's high, why is she so quiet and doesn't speak? That shouldn't be possible. Your mother can't even speak properly, which obviously indicates a low level of cultivation. With low cultivation, it's impossible to control everything in the mountain. Yang Chao muttered to himself, then thought of something. Let's go down the mountain. I'll take you to your mother's house to see. I didn't move because I hadn't found my mother yet. I wanted to tell her that Yang Chao was going to kill her. Yang Chao packed up and walked outside. I hesitated for a moment and followed, mainly out of caution. Who knows when that rat spirit might appear. Also, the cave was too smelly and suffocating. As we came out of the cave, Yang Chao walked down the mountain, but I didn't move. Yang Chao turned back, what's wrong? Didn't you use the demon-revealing mirror to see that I'm not human? His words startled me. 
Does that mean he found out when I accidentally used the demon revealing mirror on him before, but didn't reveal it? Also, what does he mean by this? My mother said not to trust anyone, so does his implication mean I can trust him, even though he said he was going to kill my mother? I was instantly conflicted. I looked around at the unfamiliar mountain. How should I find her? After a moment of silence, I felt there was another way. If I couldn't find my mother, I could just keep a close eye on Yang Chao to prevent him from taking action. This could work too. Thinking this way, I felt a little relieved and followed Yang Chao down the mountain. It took a long time to get here, and it took even longer to go down the mountain because there was no one to lead the way. But what I could see was that as we walked in the mountains, many animals were running around without order, such as snakes and wild boars. However, many animals were staring at Yang Chao with a fierce look. I didn't have that feeling. The running animals didn't appear in front of me, and if they did, they were far away. Even a yellow weasel ran out of the bushes, handed me a few cherry-like fruits, and then ran back into the bushes, looking at me with a pair of eyes. I was surprised. Yang Chao glanced back at me, his face showing more puzzled expressions, as if muttering something that I didn't hear. We quietly descended the mountain. The fruits given by the weasel were tempting, so I couldn't help but eat them. They were sweet and delicious, giving me a refreshing feeling. I didn't know what kind of fruit it was. I gave one to Yang Chao, but he refused. I kept two for myself to eat later. This further proved what the rat spirit said. Has the mountain god really disappeared? What should be done about this mountain? Can the mountain god's seal not be restored? With these doubts in mind, I headed home. But when I was close to the door, I saw many people from the village gathered around my house, discussing eagerly. Yang Chao's face changed slightly. I hurried to the door, and Mr. Wang from the village grabbed me, how did the coffin from the grave end up in your house? Other villagers turned to look at me as they gathered around. I didn't explain. When the coffin was dug up, they were all present. Yang Chao mentioned putting the coffin in my house, and they all knew. Now they were asking because the crowd had gathered, and I saw the village chief kneeling in front of the coffin in my house, continuously kowtowing until his head was bleeding. This eerie scene made me shiver. How could the village chief appear in my house? Why was he kowtowing continuously? The village chief has been kowtowing for a long time. We heard the village chief's screams and came here. What's wrong with the village chief? Is he possessed by a ghost? Mr. Wang continued, his voice trembling. How could there be ghosts in broad daylight? I stared at the coffin in the hall, hesitated for a moment, and walked in. There was nothing to be afraid of. The female corpse in the coffin meant me no harm. As expected, when I entered, I walked to the side of the village chief without any reaction, just feeling cold in the room, as if the air conditioning was on. The villagers outside dared not enter, only Yang Chao walked in. The village chief was almost fainting, begging, and saying he wouldn't dare anymore. I understood the reason. There was a hatchet in the crack of the coffin, as if the village chief had sneaked in while I was away, trying to pry open the coffin to see who was inside. Yang Chao glanced at the village chief but said nothing. The village chief continued to kowtow looking like he couldn't hold on any longer, moaning and screaming. Had the female corpse in the coffin woken up? Definitely, otherwise why would the village chief act like this? But why did the village chief want to look inside? Seeing the village chief in such a state, the villagers in the village all urged Yang Chao to burn and dispose of the coffin, showing signs of anger. Yang Chao remained silent, just staring at the coffin. Of course, I felt that it couldn't be done. After all, I was becoming more and more curious about the woman inside the coffin. Reckless. Yang Chao coldly snorted and was about to stick a talisman on the coffin, but I hurriedly stopped him. Yang Chao gave me a glare, you're really sick. Didn't you see that he was about to knock his head to death? I glanced at the dying village chief and wondered if the female corpse inside the coffin had a grudge against the village chief. I said I would handle it. Yang Chao snorted, and after hesitating for a moment, I walked to the front of the coffin and touched it. I didn't know her name, so I could only call her auntie, he's about to die, should we just let it go? Sure enough, as soon as I said that, the village chief, who had been knocking his head, suddenly closed his eyes and fainted. Seeing the village chief faint, I naturally breathed a sigh of relief. I was surprised that my words had actually stopped the female corpse inside. This honestly made me feel a bit flattered. It also made me realize that the female corpse inside had no ill intentions towards me. Also, I heard the breathing sound yesterday, she might have really woken up from the dead, but I don't know why she didn't come out. Yang Chao, seeing the situation resolved, furrowed his brow and stared at the coffin for a few moments, lost in thought. I had the villagers take the village chief to the hospital. His head was covered in blood, and if he wasn't taken to the hospital, he could have died overnight. However, the villagers were too scared to come inside, so I had to carry the village chief out, and the people outside caught him. 
Someone took a tricycle to send the village chief to the hospital. The others stayed, still watching at the door, clearly indicating that they wanted Yang Chao to find a solution for the coffin, whether it be burning it or carrying it away. Otherwise, they would be restless, and some even said they couldn't sleep at night. They kept arguing, and I felt like the temperature in the hall had dropped a bit. Maybe the female corpse inside was angry, and I didn't know what she was capable of. I hurriedly went out and told them to stop arguing, and assured them that I would keep the coffin in the house and they shouldn't come and provoke the coffin. Finally, they looked at Yang Chao. Yang Chao impatiently nodded, and with such a powerful sorcerer as a guarantee, the people around my house gradually dispersed. I breathed a sigh of relief and wanted to take a good look at what was going on with the female corpse. I took the axe left by the village chief on the coffin and asked, did you wake up? To be honest, if she had just risen from the coffin, I wouldn't have been afraid, because she looked like my mother when she was young. Besides, she really had no ill intentions towards me. I just didn't know if there was anything between us that I didn't know about. There was no response from inside, and I was about to ask the village chief why he had come, but it was in vain. Yang Chao said, how could it be so easy to wake up? If it were that easy, wouldn't the world be in chaos? Then how did the village chief knock his head just now? I was surprised. This woman is not simple. Her soul can move, but her body cannot, Yang Chao said. I understood and asked if it would be okay to just put the coffin in the house. After a moment of silence, Yang Chao said, it's not a big deal, anyway, she has no ill intentions towards you, but this is not a solution. He thought for a moment and walked into my mother's room. Of course, I stopped him. He glanced at me, ignored me, and pushed the door open to look inside. He was a little surprised, why is your mother's room so simple? I said it had always been like that, with no mirrors, just a simple bed and table. This is unlikely. Once something becomes a spirit and takes human form, it cares the most about its appearance. How could there be no mirror? Yan Chao muttered to himself, looking somewhat unexpected. I added that she had never worn makeup and was always very plain. Yang Chao looked at me and said, no aura, not even a hint of it. How is that possible? Is it because my mother likes cleanliness? I asked, as I hadn't smelled any odor. The demon aura is not the same as the foul smell of a monster. Even if your mother is very clean, she can get rid of the foul smell on her body, but it's impossible to get rid of the demon aura completely with her level of cultivation, Yang Chao shook his head. He walked straight in, and of course, I followed. He was rummaging through my mother's wardrobe, and I was a little angry and stopped him. He frowned, do you want to know who your mother really is? His words stunned me, and after hesitating for a moment, I let him continue. He quickly looked through it and seemed to find nothing. Then he went to the bed and started rummaging through it. I couldn't bear to watch, and he even turned the bed over. I asked him to stop, but as I walked over, I was stunned because there was something under the bed. There was a box. It was a bit dusty, and considering my mother's cleanliness, it must have been a long time since it was taken out, possibly several years, even more than a decade. Yang Chao opened it directly, but at that moment, I heard someone outside, a very unfamiliar voice, probably someone who came to have their fortune told. Go outside and check, Yang Chao said. I really wanted to see what was inside. Someone's coming, Yang Chao repeated. After hesitating for a moment, I nodded and quickly went outside. A man with a worried look on his face, in his forties, came in with a box in his hand. He looked like a boss. First, his forehead was quite prominent, and with his thick earlobes, it indicated that he was a man of wealth, and what kind of business was he in? I see. Antiques. He was actually in the business of selling antiques. People who often deal with antiques, because antiques are things of the dead, will have a slowly accumulating dark color in their forehead, which is the death aura of the previous owner. Ordinary people cannot suppress this death aura, and if they come into contact with it frequently, they will have bad luck. Only people with a prominent forehead can. Transforming death aura into wealth, to put it bluntly, is making money from the dead. This made me curious, but I was thinking about the box that had just been taken out, so I said directly, my mother is not here, you can come back in a few days. I can't wait, I can't wait, the boss said anxiously and came in directly, placing the box on the table as if he didn't want to touch what was inside the box again. He was so anxious that I subconsciously looked at his face again. His eyebrows were broken, indicating disaster, but there wasn't much darkness in his forehead, indicating that this disaster didn't have much of an impact on him. However, his eyes were lifeless, his face was pale, and he occasionally coughed, which made me feel uneasy. He had the flu, and the flu is contagious. I understood. No wonder this disaster didn't have much of an impact on him. It turns out he wanted to infect others, which means the disaster was shifting eastward. He was a clever man. Is Jung San from your village? I called him the day before yesterday, but he didn't answer. I called again yesterday, still no answer. 
I called more than 10 times in a row, and still no answer. I had to come over. I asked the people in your village, and Zhang San is dead? The boss seemed a little scared and blurted out a lot. I was surprised and subconsciously looked at the box. The rat demon killed Zhang San, but I didn't find the mountain god seal. I had previously guessed that Zhang San had sold it directly. Did he sell it to this person? But how did the broken arm of the mountain god seal end up in the hands of that non-human woman? What's going on? I answered his question, saying yes, and the boss poured out his grievances, that's right. Zheng San brought something, the mountain god seal, to me that day, saying he would sell it to me cheaply. When I looked at it, I thought it was incomplete because it didn't have a left hand, so I didn't plan to take it. I asked him where the left hand was, but he didn't say, and kept saying he would sell it to me cheaply. We often do business together, so I spent a little money and took it. As he said this, I glanced at his nose, which represented his financial luck, and there was no dark color. I thought when he said a little money, it shouldn't have been more than a thousand yuan. Zhang San is also talented. He actually sold the mountain god seal for only a thousand yuan? This is considered a cheap sale. The boss continued, that night, I had a nightmare, dreaming that many animals were biting me. I woke up in a cold sweat and hurriedly got rid of this thing, but I met a woman. What kind of woman? I asked. Very ugly, dressed like a beggar, he said. I knew it, that non-human woman really went to find the mountain god seal. She had the left hand of the mountain god seal, why didn't she keep it? It's strange, is she the mountain god? What did she say to you? I asked. She didn't say anything to me, just asked me to return this thing, saying you need it, he said, and then opened the box, revealing the broken left-handed mountain god seal inside. Seeing this broken-handed mountain god seal in the box, I was shocked and puzzled. Why did that non-human woman ask this man to bring it to me? And saying that I would need it? I felt puzzled. I'm not the mountain god and I wouldn't sell it. How could I need it? Did she say anything else? I asked. What's even more strange is that she let this man bring the mountain god seal, but why didn't she send the broken arm as well? It's not complete. It can be said that this mountain god seal is useless because it doesn't have a left hand. I can still vaguely see the traces of the glue I applied at the broken arm. Thinking of this, I regretted it. When that woman came last time, she offered me the broken arm, but I didn't take it because I thought it was useless. After all, what would I do with the broken arm of my mountain god seal? If I had taken it at that time, wouldn't it be complete now? But regret is useless now. She didn't say anything else, but you have to give me a thousand yuan. I can't lose money on this deal. There are rules in business, the man said. This was similar to what I saw on his face just now. But where could I get a thousand yuan now? I had already given a few hundred yuan to the white rabbit before, and now I only had a few tens of yuan left. Although my mother and I earn 30 yuan a day, it's less than 900 yuan a month, especially since the shop is closed on the third of every month. This money is not enough, and my mother usually gives it to me to use for food. She always makes sure I eat and drink well, so even though we don't have much money, I feel lucky to have such a mother. The rest of the money is saved, 3 to 400 yuan a month, and it's a fixed deposit, supposedly for me to get married. I don't even know where the card is, let alone how to withdraw the money. I felt embarrassed took out a few tens of yuan from my pocket, and the man looked at it strangely. After hesitating for a moment, he said, let me see your face. I saw what he meant from his face and set it out. He was a little surprised, you have such skills, but why are you so poor? How about you be with me? I'll give you 30,000 yuan every month. Help me make money, and I'll give you a commission. I shook my head. I didn't have that ability yet. Then consider this thousand yuan is what you owe me. If I need you for something, you can't refuse, he said, quite seriously. I nodded, relieved that I could not come up with a thousand yuan. He was also straightforward, saying his surname was Lu and he was in the antique street in the city. If he needed me, he would come find me, and I could also go to him if I needed anything. I nodded, and he didn't want to have anything to do with the mountain god seal anymore, and he didn't want to see the coffin in the hall. He asked me quietly if there were dead people inside. I said no, but he didn't believe it. Only after I assured him did he leave in a hurry. I walked over and closed the gate, then picked up the mountain god seal and looked at it. If I had the broken arm, maybe I would use glue to stick it back together, but the arm was not with me, it was still in the hands of that woman. I was ready to go in and tell Yang Chao how to handle the mountain god seal. At this time, Yang Chao came out from the room and saw the mountain god seal in my hand, showing a surprised look. How did you get it? I explained what had just happened, and Yang Chao frowned. Let me see. I handed it to him. Yang Chao looked carefully and then said, it's a real mountain god seal, but the broken arm. I told him about the woman who came last night, and Yang Chao frowned even deeper. 
It seems that there are really many strange things on this mountain. What is she doing with the broken arm? Doesn't she know that the mountain god seal is sent from above? Above? Who is above? I asked subconsciously. Yang Chao glanced at me and pointed to the sky. Do you think the mountain god is just casually made? There are people above who are specifically responsible for these things. The mountain god seal needs recognition from above to be considered a true mountain god, understand? It's like having a precious sword, but without the emperor's recognition, do you still think it's a precious sword? I understood the meaning. The mountain god also needs recognition. Yang Chao seemed to think that the woman had a lot of nerve to take the arm of the mountain god seal and not return it. I asked if we should go back now, and Yang Chao nodded. What's in the box under my mother's bed? I asked. I saw him holding the box, and he must have opened it when I came out, as his face didn't look right. You'll know soon enough. Pack up, we're going back up the mountain, Yang Chao said. I nodded, there was nothing much to pack, but I saw him holding my mother's box and scanning the room. It really surprised me, I misunderstood you, he said, and then there was a sudden meaningful tone in his voice, your mother made a great sacrifice, raising you was not easy. I sighed, not knowing what my relationship with her was. But Yang Chao's tone was different, not as cold. Had he changed his view of my mother? I didn't ask much, it was better this way. I was most worried that he would harm my mother. When Yang Chao and I went out, he looked back at the coffin, walked over, and said something, but I didn't hear it. But I saw his mouth moving, was he explaining something to the female corpse in the coffin? It should be, because I could hear the breathing inside the coffin, very light, but it echoed in the hall, a bit eerie, but I wasn't afraid. What was the relationship between this female corpse and me? I stared blankly in thought, and why did Yang Chao change his view of my mother? Was it because of what was in the box under my mother's bed? After we go up the mountain, you will know the things between the three of you, Yang Chao said. I was too curious. I was a standard human, but the female corpse in the coffin had died on the mountain 18 years ago, so it was impossible for her to give birth to me. But my current mother was a monster, and I came out of her belly, so why am I human? What's going on? These questions made me eager to go up and ask for clarity without any delay. When the two of us went up the mountain, I closed the gate, but I was worried about what might happen inside, so I said, Auntie, please stay at home by yourself. I'll be back after going up the mountain, and I'll arrange things for you then. I thought no one would answer me, but there was a faint okay in my ear. Had she woken up? I didn't think much about it, I just took the mountain god seal and followed Yang Chao up the mountain again. Yang Chao said that the sudden appearance of the mountain god seal changed his plans, he was planning to go elsewhere, and I didn't expect that woman to suddenly have someone send the mountain god seal over, it was unexpected for me too. When we reached the foot of the mountain, Yang Chao asked me to keep the mountain god seal safe first, I nodded and did as he said. He said, in principle, the mountain god seal is locked, but if a spirit gets the mountain god seal, then that spirit can also become the mountain god, so if something sees it, they will come to snatch it. I suddenly realized, we continued to walk, just down the mountain and then up again, my legs were weak, but for the sake of my mother, I had to go up the mountain. And if I heard him correctly, then I would give this mountain god seal to my mother and let her be the mountain god, wouldn't that be great? Having a mountain god mother would be great, right? But I dismissed this idea, it could also be a disaster, after all, not being recognized, other spirits could come to snatch it at any time, wouldn't my mother be in great danger? Yang Chao's decision was not wrong, this time going up the mountain, many things came out to watch us, snakes, wolves, wild boars, many pairs of eyes, which seemed particularly eerie in the quiet mountain. If I had really taken out the mountain god seal just now, it might have been a disaster. Indeed, without the control of the mountain god, these spirits would really harm people. Yang Chao's face looked a bit ugly, the mountain god seal must be returned immediately, otherwise there will be big problems, hurry up, he said, and ran, of course I followed, I wanted to see who this mountain god really was, Yang Chao led the way ahead, I followed closely, feeling more and more inexplicably nervous, because many of the animals on the mountain had come out, everything was there, those eyes made me feel creepy, Yang Chao directly took out the peachwood sword, this was a deterrent, but after Yang Chao did this, these somewhat clever animals all dared not approach, they could only watch from afar on the rocks or in the grass. Where does the mountain god live? I couldn't help but ask. Our mountain is not famous, it doesn't even have a name, but the whole mountain is particularly large, stretching for more than 10 kilometers, so it's not easy to find the mountain god's cave. I don't understand feng shui, so I can't see much, Yang Chao shook his head. The cave is also a cave, and it really takes someone who understands the feng shui layout to use feng shui analysis to locate the mountain god's cave. After all, even I who don't understand feng shui can understand that the mountain god is the biggest in this mountain, so it must live in the best feng shui place. 
So as long as we find the best feng shui place, we should be close. It's just that neither of us understands. Different trades are like different mountains. Feng shui, Taoism, fortune telling, these three are the same. But I don't understand feng shui. I actually have my own method, which is to look at Yang Chao's face, and based on his face, analyze how we should proceed. But he probably wouldn't agree. After all, letting me read his face, I could see a lot of his privacy from his face, such as whether he's married, how many girlfriends he's had, and so on, I can see it all. But what I'm most curious about is whether he's dead or alive. Why is it like this? He never mentioned this, obviously he didn't want me to know, so how could he let me read his face? So I didn't bring it up, and I didn't plan to force him to let me read his face. But as Yang Chao said this, looking around, he began to determine the location of the mountain god in his own way, he took out a yellow talisman, and chanted something in his hand, I didn't know what kind of Taoism he was using, but what surprised me was that after he burned the yellow talisman, the talisman actually flew up, which was particularly amazing. Is he using the yellow talisman to guide the way? It should be. This technique is quite magical. Yang Chao and I followed along, not knowing how long we had been walking, only to find that the sky was slowly darkening. It was already 6 or 7 in the evening, and we were still walking. As it got dark, the eyes of the animals hiding in the nearby bushes turned green, which was really chilling. In a place like this, it wouldn't work without the mountain god. It would be chaotic. We must return the mountain god seal to its place. Yang Chao's yellow talisman led us into a canyon. I could hear eerie sounds in the darkness, as if something was grinding its teeth before eating. Not good. I was startled because I suddenly saw that Yang Chao's forehead was turning black which could only mean danger. He had led us the wrong way. And in that moment, the yellow talisman that had been burning in front of us was suddenly knocked down by something, and everything around us went dark. I immediately broke out in a cold sweat. I never thought we would be looking for the mountain god from day to night. I hadn't brought a flashlight. The darkness around me made my hair stand on end. In that instant, I heard movement and saw movement. In the darkness, pairs of small eyes appeared, emitting green light, densely packed, making my scalp tingle. Seeking death. Yang Chao suddenly snorted, and his peach wood sword stabbed out. I heard squeaking and could vaguely see the peach wood sword trembling, as if it had speared a fish. I instantly understood that these were rats. Yang Chao, our guide, had actually led us to another rat's nest. There were thousands of rats around us, clearly set as a trap by the rat spirit. Wanting to take the mountain god seal from me and become the mountain god? The densely packed green eyes around us rushed towards Yang Chao, like a plague of rats devouring food, terrifying to the extreme. Yang Chao was powerful, but with so many rats swarming him, he was almost overwhelmed. With so many rats, it seemed like they were going to eat Yang Chao clean to the bone. Yang Chao's peach wood sword kept swinging, and the pitiful squeaks were incessant. I quickly crouched down, grabbed a rock, and rushed over. I couldn't let him be in such danger. But at that moment, a pair of hands suddenly rested on my shoulder. I shuddered and turned my head to see a familiar face in the darkness. I was instantly overjoyed. Mom! Let's go! She pulled me and ran towards a place. She was so strong that I was being dragged along. I hurriedly said, wait, Yang Chao is still trapped, and there are so many rats. He could be killed. If each rat bit Yang Chao, they could devour him completely, and he wouldn't survive. Li Chen, don't go. Yang Chao's voice came from far away. My mother was pulling me too fast, and I couldn't hear Yang Chao's voice clearly, only a vague sound. Don't mind him, my mother said, pulling me even faster. I was completely out of control. But he came with me, I said urgently, feeling like I was seeing my mother again, but her voice was different. I didn't know what to believe. He's not a good person. My mother snorted coldly. I struggled and shook my head, you're too strong, my hand is going to break. She looked back at me, stopped, and let go. Go on your own, come with me. We have to go back to save him. He came with me. We have to find the mountain god and return the mountain god seal, I said anxiously. No need to save him. Give me the mountain god seal first. I am the mountain god, my mother said. I was shocked. What was she saying? She was the mountain god? How could that be possible? I found it unbelievable. My mother didn't say much, but it seemed that her skills were too shallow. With shallow skills, how could she manage the animals on the mountain? I haven't told you, but I am actually the mountain god of this mountain. So give me the mountain god seal, and the mountain will have its god again, and things inside the mountain can be stable. Hurry, give it to me, my mother said. What's going on? My mind went blank. Is my mother really the mountain god? I don't think so, because I suddenly realized a problem. Why was she speaking intermittently? I looked at her left hand. Mother, what happened to your hand? It's nothing, she said. Give me the mountain god seal. Do you want chaos in the mountains? 
Suddenly, I felt a chill down my spine. Not because my mother was a monster, but because when she pulled me away just now, she used her left hand. Her hand was clearly broken, so how could she have had such strength to drag me? There's only one explanation, the person in front of me is not my mother. My scalp tingled as I realized that she would never drag me away regardless of my life, let alone save only me. Then who is she? I thought of who she might be, and more cold sweat broke out. Mother, with the mountain god seal, will the mountain return to peace? Yes, with the mountain god, who dares to be unruly in the mountains? She said coldly, with a hint of excitement at the corner of her mouth. Is this the expression my mother would show? Definitely not. Hurry up, she urged me. Okay, I'll get it for you, I said, searching in my pocket. I secretly took out the demon-revealing mirror from my pocket, trembling as I aimed it at her face. I was instantly terrified. Was this really a person? It was a giant rat standing in front of me, with terrifying white whiskers and large protruding teeth that seemed capable of biting me in one go. Its eyes were round and green, truly a rat demon. Its face bore a human-like smirk, as if it had succeeded. It had transformed into the appearance of my mother to deceive me into giving it the mountain god seal. Hurry, no, what did you take out? She suddenly became angry, reaching for the demon-revealing mirror in my hand. I ran as fast as I could. Humph, you've actually seen through it, so I'll just bite off your neck and search for it on your corpse. The rat demon pounced on me, like a tiger about to devour its prey. I was instantly knocked down by it, and it opened its large mouth, ready to bite my neck fiercely. The rat demon suddenly lunged at me, its terrifying large yellow teeth and foul breath making me feel nauseous. I held my breath, grabbed some broken stones from the ground, and fiercely smashed them onto its head. Bang! The stone hit its head making it dizzy for a moment. It groaned and blood oozed out. I saw its original appearance, distorted and reverting to that of a large rat. I had managed to smash its head in a little. Its long, wire-like whiskers were almost touching my face, causing a sharp pain. Seizing the opportunity, I kicked it in its fat belly. It didn't react much, being a demon after all. But I managed to crawl away. This rat demon had been around for hundreds of years. How could I possibly defeat it? I had no experience and my mother hadn't taught me anything. Without hesitation, I turned and ran. The large rat hopped after me, thumping like my racing heart, making me feel terrified. Were demons really this terrifying? My mind was in chaos. Although it had just transformed into my mother's appearance, did it mean my mother was the mountain god? Was it true, or was it a lie made up to get me to give it the mountain god seal? I didn't have time to think about this, because the large rat had caught up to me. I panicked instinctively. How could I escape? How could I resist? I quickly picked up the stone from the ground and threw it. The rat spirit had been hit by me just now, but of course, he was prepared. His resentful eyes stared at me with a hint of mockery. Suddenly, with a snap, the stone I threw was knocked away by something, and it turned out to be his thick tail. With a swing, it almost split the stone in half, showing how powerful his tail was. This scared me enough. Fortunately, he didn't use his tail to hit me just now, otherwise I would have been dead long ago. But there was no way to panic. My mother always told me not to panic when encountering something. The more panicked, the faster you die. I quickly came up with a plan and ran towards the woods. How could I outrun a rat that was bigger than a person in an open space? I had to find obstacles. I hurriedly ran into the woods, and the rat spirit chased after me relentlessly. His body was large, so I weaved through the dense forest, gradually pulling away. I breathed a sigh of relief, but suddenly, I couldn't hear the sound of the rat spirit chasing me. Did he take a shortcut to chase me? I shuddered and ran desperately, but in the dark, pairs of small, green eyes appeared. I was so scared that I shivered. It turned out to be a group of rats. Squeak! These rats pounced on me, and the dense mass made my scalp tingle. I kicked and punched, but there were too many rats. It was like someone had poured a cartload of sand on me. I was overwhelmed by hundreds of rats. They bit my clothes, or stood on me, preventing me from struggling. Don't! I was shocked. Several rats took the mountain god seal from me and held it up, heading towards the rat spirit in the darkness, as if presenting a royal seal to the emperor. The big rat spirit grabbed the mountain god seal and his face showed a human-like excitement. I can finally become the mountain god. Grandchildren, bite him to death for me. The rat spirit said, and the rats standing on me suddenly turned their heads and opened their mouths with sharp teeth, tearing at every part of my body. I struggled, but it was in vain. I closed my eyes in despair. I was only seventeen and I was being bitten to death by rats. And I had too many questions in my mind. Whose son was I after all? I didn't even know. I was unwilling, but there was nothing I could do. I was going to die. Just as I closed my eyes,
Thinking I was doomed, the next second, I thought I would feel intense pain all over my body from the tearing of my flesh, but I didn't. I actually felt a moment of peace, and I could even feel the rats on my body trembling slightly, and even warm in several places. The rats were scared and peed. The stench made me open my eyes immediately. Squeak, squeak. The rats immediately left my body. I quickly got up and saw this group of rats trembling and staring at their ancestor. I finally looked over and found that the rat spirit's body was also trembling, because a person had appeared behind him. You, didn't you not come back? The rat spirit's voice was filled with suppressed fear. I saw my mother. I didn't know when she had appeared behind the rat spirit, but she didn't do anything, didn't attack, and just walked up to him. But the rat spirit was trembling all over, and he could hardly hold the mountain god seal in his hand. I saw that my mother's left hand was still hanging down, and I subconsciously looked at the mountain god seal, also in her left hand. At this moment, the expressions of the rat spirit and the group of rats, the fear, absolute fear. Could it be? An idea popped into my head. Could my mother really be the mountain god? I took a deep breath and realized why she came back on the third day, and her hand was broken at the time because she was connected to the mountain god seal. The mountain god seal was broken by Zhang San, so her hand was also broken. I used glue to stick the mountain god seal back together, and her hand was fine, but she felt very uncomfortable that night because of the glue. My mother reached out and took the mountain god seal from the hand of the rat spirit. The rat spirit struggled and shook his head, no, this is mine, it's mine. He said so, but he didn't dare to resist at all. I was stunned. I never expected that my usually quiet mother, like a housewife, could make a rat spirit with hundreds of years of cultivation so fearful. How high is my mother's cultivation level? But why does she speak incoherently? My mother glanced at him, took the mountain god seal directly in her hand, and the rat spirit collapsed on the ground, immediately kneeling down, spare me, spare me. The rules on the mountain, I have told you many times, you cannot harm people, my mother shook her head, her voice not loud, but it made the rat spirit tremble to the extreme, and the other rats, also afraid, lay on the ground, making people's scalp tingle. This is the real mountain god. At this moment, I felt like I didn't know her, the one who raised me. She actually has this side to her. I know I was wrong. I know I was wrong. The rat spirit begged on his knees. I have one thing for you to do. If you do it, I will spare your life. My mother said. Thank you, mountain god, please tell me. The rat spirit hurriedly said. Take this thing to West Lake. My mother took out a box, and the rat spirit hurriedly took it, mountain god, who at West Lake? You have been a spirit for some time. Don't you know who the river god at West Lake is? My mother said. I was curious. What is in the box my mother took out? And who is the river god at West Lake? After all, if there is a mountain god for the mountain, there must be a river god for the water, and the river god must also have a river god seal. I know, I know, I'll go right away. The rat spirit immediately got up from the ground, shrank his body, and ran to a place. But it shouldn't be easy to deliver the thing, otherwise my mother wouldn't have said that sparing his life depends on delivering it. These rats trembled even more violently. My mother walked over and looked at them, disperse, squeak. The group of rats immediately scattered, and in the blink of an eye, they were gone. I breathed a sigh of relief, Mom, I never thought you were the mountain god. I had never thought about it, after all, she stayed at home every day. So Yang Chao suddenly changed his view of her, so he must have roughly guessed that she was the mountain god. Surprised? She asked me, in a very simple way. I nodded and said it was very surprising. After I saw her, I had too many questions in my mind. Mom, why do you go up the mountain on the third day of every month? 4. My mother was about to speak, but suddenly a footstep came from a distance, someone was coming, who? I immediately looked over. After I saw who it was, I immediately breathed a sigh of relief. It was Yang Chao. He was much better than me. Although his clothes were bitten by rats, they were not as torn as mine, and he didn't have rat urine on him. He walked over and glanced at me, as if he wanted to ask why I smelled so bad. But he didn't ask, his eyes looked at my mother, and under his expressionless face, I could actually feel the tension in the air. My mother's face remained unchanged, and so did her calmness. What does Yang Chao want to do? My mother is the mountain god, does he still want to kill her? You are indeed the mountain god, Yang Chao said. It seems that my guess just now was correct. He found evidence of my mother being the mountain god in the box he found under my mother's bed. This is for you. He took out the box, my mother took it, opened it and looked inside. I glanced and found that there was a folded book inside, like an ancient memorial tablet. What book is this? Could it be the invitation letter from the mountain god? It's likely, even if it's not, it's something closely related to the mountain god, otherwise Yang Chao wouldn't suddenly change his attitude towards my mother. I breathed a sigh of relief. 
You go out on the third of every month, is it to go up the mountain? Yang Chao asked. I had just thought of this, after all, my mother stays at home all day, and the mountain god must go up the mountain every month to manage it, right? My mother shook her head, it's easy to manage this mountain. If nothing happens to the mountain god this time, I can go without coming up for ten years. The reason I come up on the third of every month is for something else. Something else? Yang Chao was puzzled. I was also curious. It's not for managing the mountain? Then what is it for? After all these years, she has never missed going out on the third, so what is she doing up the mountain? Yes, my mother nodded, but Yang Chao probably sensed that my mother didn't want to say much, so he didn't ask further about why she had to go out on the third of every month. He changed the subject and asked the question that was on my mind, since you don't want to talk about the third, then tell me, you are a demon, and Li Chen is human, how did you give birth to him? This is a long story. My mother shook her head, then looked at me with a hint of reminiscence. But when my mother was about to speak, Yang Chao suddenly exclaimed, Li Chen wasn't born to you, right? My mother hesitated for a moment and nodded. I was stunned for a moment. If he wasn't born to my mother, then how is that possible? The female corpse went up the mountain and died three days later, and my mother came down pregnant. Her belly grew day by day. This was something everyone in the village knew, otherwise people wouldn't say that I was the son of a demon. Indeed, when a demon gives birth to a child, the aura will be different, but you show no signs of being different, which means you never got pregnant. Then you. Yang Chao stopped there. My mother nodded, and I was already dumbfounded. I never got pregnant? Then who gave birth to me? What is going on? My mother's eyes showed a hint of affection, Li Chen, you were not born to me, but I have always treated you as my own son. I came to my senses and nodded. Of course, I knew this from my own experience of more than 10 years. It's just that these questions left me bewildered. Tell us, what is going on? Yang Chao said. I stared intently, because I knew that at this moment, the doubts in my mind needed to be resolved. My mother slowly said, I met her 18 years ago. One day, she suddenly came up the mountain to ask me to tell her fortune. She had informed me in advance, but before she could see me, she fell off the cliff and died. I was surprised. When I found her, she was barely alive. I found it strange because there seemed to be no signs of a struggle at the scene. How did she fall? I asked her, and she told me that she was going to pick up a child. I asked her who she was going to pick up, but she shook her head and said she couldn't do it anymore. She wanted me to transform into her and come down the mountain three days later. I didn't want to do that, so I refused. But after she died, for three consecutive days, I had the same dream, hearing the cry of a baby, which was very strange. On the third day, I considered it and decided to go down the mountain and transform into her. So I went down the mountain. As she said this, the memories on her face became stronger, and I listened quietly. I figured it out. After I came down the mountain, I used magic to create the illusion of a swollen belly, making the people in the village think I was pregnant. Otherwise, if I received the baby, it would attract even more attention, and people would think I was trafficking babies. So, when it was over nine months, I went out and brought the baby back, she said, looking at me. This baby is me? I murmured. Yes, it's you. After I received you, I used magic to restore my belly to its original state and then created the appearance of giving birth to you, raising you day by day, she continued. Where did you receive me? I asked instinctively. She explained these things, explaining that she was a spirit and I was a human. But what was the relationship between me and the female corpse? Why did she make my mother appear as her? I don't remember that, she shook her head. Don't remember? Yang Chao spoke up, with great suspicion. You don't remember where you received him from? Or you don't want to say? I trust my mother, I said. She has never lied to me. If she says she doesn't remember, then she definitely doesn't remember. But why doesn't she remember? My mother breathed a sigh of relief, showing satisfaction. I only remember going into a cave, and when I came out, I didn't remember what happened inside the cave. I just had a baby in my arms. I knew I had received someone. Yang Chao's expression changed slightly, as if pondering the truth of my mother's words. A few minutes later, he nodded. I believe you, because I have had similar experiences. I was surprised. What did that mean? Temporary amnesia? I didn't know what was going on for the moment, but my mother's words raised a lot of questions for me. I felt like I had opened a door to endless questions. Do you remember where the cave is now? Yang Chao looked at me and asked my mother. I remember, but the cave has been flooded. I haven't been down there for a long time, my mother said. If you want to go, I'll take you. I understood Yang Chao's meaning clearly. If I saw this cave, would it provide some clues about me? I agreed. If I didn't go to the cave, I wouldn't know what was going on. I didn't say anything because I was confused. My mother said, I told you, you are human. 
I felt bitter. So what if I'm human? I was actually taken out and given to someone else? To be honest, I would rather be a monster than have this kind of result. I sighed. When I came to my senses, I said that the female corpse had been dug up and was in the house. If she could wake up completely, then I should be able to find out more. My mother said, that was her home. I was shocked. What did she mean? Was she not going to take care of me anymore? Was she going to be a mountain god wholeheartedly? I felt reluctant. Mother, are you not planning to come down the mountain? She had raised me for 17 years, taking care of me in every way. I really didn't have the confidence to ask her to come down the mountain, after all, she was a mountain god. She shook her head. Of course, I'm coming down. I've gotten used to having a son like you. I breathed a sigh of relief. But it had been so long, she had always appeared as someone else. I hadn't seen what her true form was like. I was a little curious. What was her true form? What did her human form look like? I said I wanted to see her, after all, she was the one who raised me. In the end, I didn't even know what she looked like, which was unfair to her. She hesitated for a moment and nodded, okay. I immediately stared at her, and Yang Chao beside me also became interested. Both he and I wanted to see what her true human form looked like. As we stared at my mother, some white smoke emerged from her body and slowly enveloped her face, creating a hazy effect. Surprisingly, even her height and figure were changing. A gust of wind blew through, gently dispersing the white smoke that surrounded her, revealing a particularly unfamiliar yet gentle woman. In her early thirties, with long hair and an exceptional temperament, her features were unfamiliar but comforting, and her gaze remained the same. This was the true form of my mother after her human appearance. I had never seen it before. I remembered her appearance, and now, she was the one who had raised me for over ten years. I would remember her for the rest of my life. Yang Chao, who was beside me, looked stunned for a moment and subconsciously muttered, as if whispering, so she's actually a beauty. I glanced at him instinctively, and he coughed and instantly became expressionless, as if he hadn't said anything just now. My mother heard his words, and she also glanced at Yang Chao. He coughed again and said, you're quite attractive. There should be many people pursuing you. There's no need to keep waiting for Li Chen. I felt that she had made a great sacrifice for me. To raise me, she had stayed at home for over 10 years, delaying important events in her own life. I felt guilty, but Yang Chao's comment about her attractiveness was undeniable. How high were his standards? This was truly remarkable. It's not about waiting. I brought him out, so I have a responsibility to raise him to adulthood. Other things are not as important, she said earnestly. I was deeply moved, beyond words. You are the most humane monster I've ever met, Yang Chao's words made me breathe a sigh of relief. Thank you for the compliment, I said, remembering it. She nodded, and the white smoke once again enveloped her body, causing her features to change slightly. After all, she had to return to her previous appearance to leave the mountain. In this situation, she had to retrieve the broken left hand that was marked by the mountain god, or else her left hand would remain useless, which would greatly affect her. I couldn't help but ask her softly, Mother, what is your true form? I was too curious. After all, her appearance as a virtuous wife and mother, was she a snake? A fox? Or something else? Personally, I thought she was a fox, but then again, it didn't seem likely, as foxes are alluring, while she had a calm gaze and exuded an aristocratic air in her every move. She shook her head and said, it's impolite to ask about that. I felt helpless, but she continued, but you are my relative, so I can tell you in the future. It's been a very, very long time since I revealed my true form. Her words made me somewhat eager, but Yang Chao hesitated and asked, Have I met you before? My mother shook her head, I don't think so. Yang Chao fell into contemplation and muttered something I couldn't hear. Could it be that Yang Chao had really met my mother before? I didn't dwell on it. However, I noticed a slight change in my mother's expression, indicating that Yang Chao was right. Soon, a light breeze blew through again, dispersing the white smoke that enveloped her, and she returned to her previous appearance. She put away the mountain god's mark and carried it with her. There couldn't be any more mishaps. I asked her if she knew where the woman who wasn't human was. She said she knew, and a thought formed in her mind. I suggested that we should leave the mountain, after all, I was covered in the smell of rat urine, and even I couldn't stand it. I needed to take a bath and change into clean clothes. My mother nodded, but she asked me to wait. She walked to the side of the bushes and squatted down. Soon I saw her holding an animal, a white one, which was the rabbit that had previously delivered a message to me. Its belly was bandaged, and it seemed weak, but when it saw Yang Chao, it immediately grimaced and bared its teeth. Your sword almost killed her, my mother said, and for the first time, I heard a hint of coldness in her voice. She was angry. Yang Chao remained silent, and eventually fell into silence. The white rabbit finally calmed down. 
My mother said to take her down the mountain to recover. The three of us walked down the mountain, and my mother retrieved the mountain god seal. The animals all behaved obediently, and no one dared to block our way. By the time we descended, it was already past two in the morning. When we got home, Yang Chao said he wanted to visit the village chief. I felt that the village chief was a bit strange, but I couldn't pinpoint what was odd about him. Yang Chao left, and I asked my mother if we could trust him. My mother nodded, indicating that she had known Yang Chao would come here. However, I felt that Yang Chao's visit this time seemed to involve something else, but he didn't say anything specific, so I didn't know. When I opened the door, the coffin was still there, and I breathed a sigh of relief. My mother glanced at it but said nothing. She went to the kitchen to get a carrot for the rabbit in her arms, then took her back to the room. I took a shower and changed clothes, washing several times and using up half a bottle of shower gel to get rid of the stench. Only then did I lie down in bed to sleep. The next morning, my mother said we still needed to go out, otherwise the mountain god's arm seal would have a significant impact. I suggested going together for mutual support, but she shook her head and said, no need, I can go by myself. By the way, feed the rabbit in the room. She eats very little. Also, you need to earn some money and buy a mobile phone. I see that many people have one. I nodded in agreement. Indeed, a mobile phone would be more convenient. My mother quickly tidied up and went out. Knowing she was the mountain god, I wasn't so worried about her. After all, the mountain god was quite powerful, and ordinary people wouldn't dare to provoke her. Didn't Yang Chao also have a great change of heart towards my mother? At noon, I fed the rabbit a carrot. She seemed a bit embarrassed, holding the carrot and eating it herself. I didn't pay much attention to her. After all, she had intelligence and knew what she could and couldn't do. I made some food for myself and by the afternoon, there was still no business. I couldn't even earn back the money for the meal, so how could I buy a phone? I was at a loss. As I was thinking about how to deal with the coffin, Yang Chao walked in looking a bit grim. I asked him what was wrong. He said, I received orders from above. You need to deal with this female corpse. I understood what he meant, but the female corpse was the only one who knew about my background. If she was dealt with, who could I ask? I shook my head and firmly refused. Yang Chao glanced at me and said, I knew you would say that. Let's find a place to hide the coffin. I agreed, suggesting burying it directly, but Yang Chao said we couldn't do that, as burying it again would make her fall back into a deep sleep. Can we just wake her up directly? I asked. She was probably just a step away from waking up, and then I could find out where she learned about the cave and how to get me out of there. I'll think of a way, Yang Chao said, and he began to instruct me to set up a jar and started to perform a ritual. The meaning is to bring some corpse gas from elsewhere to speed up her awakening. I can't help with this. I can only watch. The whole process is quite cumbersome. This is accelerating the corpse change. When he was drawing the corpse gas, the temperature inside the hall dropped again, feeling damp and cold, making people uncomfortable. After working for most of the day, I heard breathing coming from inside the coffin, which made me nervous. Is she waking up? I hurried to the side of the coffin. How is it? I asked. Yang Chao finished the last ritual, it's almost done. I will open the coffin like last time, and you wake her up. I nodded. Yang Chao, just like last time, directly opened the coffin. I saw her lying inside the coffin again. What surprised me this time was that her face was still pale, but there was a hint of color, which amazed me. Auntie, Auntie, I didn't know her name, so I could only call her like this. Continue. She has been lying down for too long, Yang Chao said. Auntie. I continued to call for a while, and suddenly I noticed her nose moving, and her eyelashes began to twitch. Is she waking up? I was pleasantly surprised. I asked her many things from her mouth, whether we had any relationship. I saw the eyelashes of the female corpse in the coffin moving, and even her fingers were moving, but her eyes remained closed, as if she were a vegetative person, unable to wake up. I felt disappointed and subconsciously looked at Yang Chao. He frowned, seemingly not expecting that the female corpse still couldn't wake up. Yang Chao muttered to himself, it's impossible. I have already brought nearby corpse gas over. It should be enough to wake her up. How could this happen? Is there a problem with any step? I asked. The death of this female corpse 18 years ago was quite strange. She unexpectedly fell to her death on the mountain. Even my mother was surprised and shocked. Was her death accidental, or was she pushed by someone? If it was accidental, then she should be able to wake up. But if someone pushed her, then. Her corpse change has already reached the point where she should wake up. But I will try again. Yang Chao's face became serious, indicating that he felt something was wrong. He continued the ritual, chanting words, and performing some kind of Taoist technique at the arranged altar. He took out a yellow talisman, bit his finger, and tapped the talisman. The talisman trembled a few times and shot directly into the coffin, 
sticking to the forehead of the female corpse. Wake up! Yang Chao roared, pointing at the female corpse in the coffin. I could feel that his technique was fine, but the female corpse still did not wake up. She just moved her fingers inside the coffin. Yang Chao frowned deeply and walked over. There's no reason. She should definitely wake up. With my method just now, even a freshly dead person can wake up from the corpse change, let alone someone who has been dead for more than 10 years. The corpse gas has accumulated so much. I was also puzzled. What was going on? I continued to call, auntie, auntie. But she still did not respond. Ha! Huh? Yang Chao suddenly noticed something and reached into the coffin, lifting the yellow talisman that had covered her face and forehead. I was surprised to see her expression after her face was uncovered, because although she had not woken up, there was a look of fear on her face. Why was she afraid? What's wrong? I was completely at a loss, even more confused. What was wrong with this female corpse? After she woke up, I would only ask her a few questions, and Yang Chao wouldn't do anything to her, so why was she afraid? This is not good. Yang Chao suddenly realized something and his expression became more serious. He turned around abruptly and looked outside. I shouldn't have let her wake up like this. She has been exposed, and someone is coming to find her, so she's afraid. Someone? Who? I was surprised. Could it be the family of the female corpse? It shouldn't be. How could she be afraid of family? What did you see on her face? Yang Chao felt something, and his face became more and more serious. This tone made me immediately look at her face, but before I could start looking, Yang Chao suddenly said, Not good, Li Chen, you keep looking, I'll go out and take a look. After saying this, he ran out with a peachwood sword and closed the door. Yang Chao's behavior made me very nervous. What happened? Who is looking for this female corpse? I didn't have time to think much. This sudden situation was completely unexpected. I thought I could ask her directly, but it turned out I couldn't. I carefully examined her facial features and was suddenly shocked. The appearance of a corpse is different from that of a living person. People have color, which is complexion. Complexion can discern many things, but a corpse only has one color, which is white. This undoubtedly increased the difficulty of physiognomy. However, the situation was urgent. I stared at her face for a while and saw something, but it shocked me. Suddenly, the door was pushed open, and my whole body's hair stood on end. They're here? A figure flashed to my side and pulled me aside. I was so scared that I almost screamed. Shu, don't make a sound. It was Yang Chao who had just gone out. He actually came back like this? Did he encounter something that he couldn't handle? I quickly shut my mouth and looked out anxiously. By this time, it was already dark outside, and there seemed to be some noise. Yang Chao lowered his voice, they're here. In that instant, I became nervous. The next moment, my eyes widened because I saw a surprising scene. Outside the door, there were footsteps, a group of people walking over. They were not human, but paper figures, for paper figures carrying a frame, silently walking in. I never imagined that paper figures would enter my house. Their faces had eerie smiles, which made my scalp tingle. What is this? Don't make a sound. Yang Chao's voice became even lower. I was really shocked. What is this? I really couldn't imagine. Yang Chao, who always seemed so fearless, chose to hide. I couldn't afford to provoke him even more. After they came in, they placed the frame on the ground, and the four paper figures walked to the side of the coffin and directly lifted it. Where are they taking the coffin? Who is directing them? Don't move. Yang Chao sighed. I actually heard a hint of helplessness in his tone. I turned to look at him and found a trace of fear in his eyes, as if these four paper figures had also lifted him in the same way. The whole process was eerie. The four paper figures placed the coffin on the frame, lifted the frame, and walked outside. But suddenly, a white rabbit ran out from my mother's room, its eyes wide open, with a human-like expression of fear on its face. Squeak! Squeak! The white rabbit made a noise at the four paper figures. The four paper figures stopped, their bodies didn't move, but their heads turned, and their eerie smiles faced the white rabbit. It was so scary that the rabbit ran into the room. The expressions on the faces of the four paper figures didn't change at all because they were all fake, and this smile was too eerie. They turned their heads, lifted the coffin, and quickly disappeared into the darkness, as if nothing had happened just now. But the hall was empty, which made me realize that the paper figures carrying the coffin just now were not an illusion. I actually watched as the female corpse, who might know about my origins, was carried away by these four paper figures. I slumped to the ground. Come out and talk. Yang Chao said, his face looking grim as he walked out, and I felt chills all over. What's going on? My mind was in chaos. Things are even more complicated than I thought. I know why they wanted me to deal with this female corpse quickly. Yang Chao slowly said, I saw the white rabbit fearfully watching at the door of my mother's room, 
and only sat on the ground with a fearful face after the paper people left. Who just carried away the female corpse? I hurriedly asked, even without him saying, I already knew that things had become complicated, completely beyond my imagination. How did this female corpse die? I don't know, but let me tell you, I was carried by them once. Yang Chao revealed what I had just seen on his face. Indeed, otherwise, with his personality, he would not have done nothing and let these paper people carry the body away. There is a person behind these paper people. I have been investigating recently. I can tell you this, if we stop them today, something will happen tomorrow. When I was carried, on the first day, someone stopped them, but on the second day, what came could not be stopped by anyone. If you try to stop it, you will die. Someone has targeted me. I was carried away by them on the second day, but there was a little accident on the way, and I took the opportunity to escape. Yang Chao shuddered. I didn't say anything. I didn't move just now because I saw from the face of the female corpse that the matter had been settled. Her expression told me that she wanted to move to another place, and it was necessary. In other words, no matter what we do to stop it, these paper people will take her away. This is very terrifying. So the female corpse would be very afraid. But according to Yang Chao, who has targeted her, I stood still in the room, and Yang Chao came over and patted my shoulder. Don't think about this female corpse. If she is taken away by these paper people, without my luck, you would never have seen her. The person behind them is so powerful that you can't imagine. Too powerful to imagine? Indeed, I couldn't imagine it. I have had very little contact with the outside world lately, and I don't really understand the outside world because my current circle is just around here. I rarely went to the city in the past year. This is my circle. I can't get in touch with it. Now I feel like I am slowly getting in touch with this circle. Yang Chao saw that my complexion was not good and said, since this female corpse has been targeted by that person, don't think about it for the time being. I smiled bitterly. What can I think? I don't even know where these four paper people took the female corpse. There is no source to find. I should know that she might be someone who knows about my background, and I just watched her leave without knowing if I will ever see her again. I was discouraged and asked who the person behind the paper people was. Yang Chao only said one thing to me, you can't get in touch with that kind of person in your current state. I admit that, but how powerful is the person behind this, and what did they see in this female corpse? I didn't say anything. It was already late in the day, and Yang Chao was tired from his actions just now. I said I would sleep here, and after hesitating for a moment, Yang Chao agreed. I asked him to sleep in my room, but he shook his head and said he would sleep on the floor. I couldn't persuade him, so I had to make a bed for him in the hall to sleep. He lay down and closed his eyes. He is not a normal person, and I don't know if he is sleeping. I didn't ask. After feeding the white rabbit a carrot, I couldn't sleep until late at night. The image of the paper people carrying the coffin kept appearing in my mind, their eerie smiles lingering. It wasn't until the morning that I finally fell asleep, and I slept until after 10 o'clock, rushing to prepare for business. However, after I got up, I didn't see Yang Chao, and I didn't know where he had gone. But the people from the village came and asked about the coffin in the hall. If I had said that it was taken away by four paper people last night, they would have been even more frightened and unable to sleep all night. I said it had been taken care of, and they breathed a sigh of relief and left. I asked about the village chief. They said he was still in the hospital. This village chief is also a bit suspicious. I need to find an opportunity to ask him. At noon, Yang Chao came back. I remember he had dug out an empty box from under the female corpse before, but he didn't mention it at all. I didn't know how to ask, but he asked me to go out with him to meet someone in the city. I said I didn't sleep well last night and didn't want to go, but he took out a few hundred yuan from his pocket, and I was tempted. This money is enough for you to open the door for ten days. Just do me a favor, Yang Chao said. I didn't know him well but since my mother said I could trust him, I did as he asked. I also knew that my mother seemed to be short of money recently, but I didn't know what she needed it for. It's good to earn some money. I asked him to wait for me, and we could ride the electric bike there. Yang Chao had no objection. It was a 50-kilometer round trip to the city, and we could charge the bike there. I pushed the electric bike out, closed the door, and asked him to wait for me. When we arrived, it turned out to be a high-end restaurant, and the parking lot was full of very expensive cars. I was a little confused because I had never seen such cars in the village. Yang Chao warned me to be careful not to touch other people's cars. Of course, I was careful. How many years would it take for me to pay for a scratch? Probably half of my life. I said this, and Yang Chao said I had no ambition and that making money was easy. Easy my foot. My mother set the rule for me to charge 10 yuan for a fortune telling, and I could only make a few hundred yuan a day at most. I was a little frustrated, but I had to listen to my mother. Suddenly, while talking to Yang Chao, 
I didn't pay attention and the electric bike brushed past, scratching a car with four rings. I was shocked. You idiot. It's an Audi A8. Yang Chao, who had been acting aloof these days, scolded me when he saw the scratch. My heart sank. His expression told me that the car was very expensive. I quickly parked my electric bike and asked if I could wipe it off with paper. Yang Chao looked down on me and said, What do you think? I was completely disheartened. Was my luck really that bad today? What should we do? What can we do? We have to raise money to compensate them. I really don't know if it was right to bring you out, muttered Yang Chao. He rummaged through his pockets and found over a thousand yuan, plus the few hundred he had given me earlier, but it was still not enough. I was anxious and asked how much the scratch would cost. Yang Chao said at least 10,000. I was even more disheartened. Unexpectedly, the owner of the car, a girl in her 20s, came over. She was dressed very stylishly, with long hair and light makeup. I immediately recognized her as the owner's daughter, but what difference did it make? It was still their family's car. She came over and saw the scratch on the car. She frowned and looked at the two of us. What happened? I said it was an accident and that I would compensate. Yang Chao quietly said he had no money left. I knew he didn't have much money, but there was no way around it. At least 10,000 for this scratch. Can you afford it? The girl asked me. I was embarrassed and said, I can't afford it now, but I will compensate you. Please believe me. I sounded more confident, and Yang Chao looked a little strange. The girl snorted, forget it. You don't seem to have much money. I won't ask you to compensate. Be careful next time. Go on, hurry up. Yang Chao looked at me with an even stranger expression after hearing her words. You knew she wouldn't make you compensate? His voice was low, but I was speechless. How could he say that? I did see from her face that she wouldn't make me compensate. Her eyebrows are slightly flat, with dimples when she smiles, and her eyes are clear. Her face is round, which is a sign of wealth and nobility. Girls with this kind of face tend to be generous and sympathetic. In addition, the brightness of her virtue palace indicates that she often does good deeds. She might sympathize with someone like me who rides an electric bike. I feel embarrassed to think that she pities me. Fortunately, Yang Chao didn't hear this. He was surprised when she took out something from the trunk and walked into the restaurant, probably for a dinner party. Amazing, she doesn't want us to compensate? Yang Chao exclaimed. I mentioned her facial features, but Yang Chao looked down on me, saying, she pities us, why don't you tell her we're broke? Ask her for some money. I was speechless. We had just scratched her car, and now he wanted to ask her for money? Although based on her facial features, she might give us a few hundred yuan, I couldn't do it. Yang Chao even suggested that I could extort money from her. It seemed foolproof, but if my mother found out, she would be shocked. I parked my bike and followed Yang Chao to the upscale restaurant. The receptionist looked down on us, but we had no choice. Yang Chao had made a reservation, and the receptionist reluctantly led us to a private room. As we passed another room, I saw the girl again. I had observed her facial features and deduced that she and her father were attending the dinner party for business reasons. However, there seemed to be some problems with their business, otherwise they wouldn't be attending such a dinner party. I hesitated for a moment, then took out a piece of paper and wrote a few words. I asked a waiter to deliver it to the girl in the other room. At least I wanted to make amends. The waiter looked puzzled but took the note and went inside, while Yang Chao and I went to another room. Inside, I asked him who I was supposed to meet, but he didn't say much, just that I would find out when the person arrived. I knew he wanted me to use my fortune-telling skills, but honestly, compared to my mother, I was far less skilled. Yang Chao shook his head, saying that my mother, being a monster, couldn't tell fortunes for people. He believed that I had more potential. His reasoning made sense, but I would have to ask my mother when she returned. For now, I would stick to charging 10 yuan for each reading. After waiting for a while, the person Yang Chao had mentioned still hadn't arrived. Suddenly, the door was pushed open, and a waiter pointed at me, saying, he wrote the note and asked me to give it to you. It was the same waiter who had brought the girl to me. I was surprised, but it seemed that my note had helped her, or else she wouldn't have come to find me. She seemed a bit skeptical but nodded, saying, okay, I understand. She took out 300 yuan and gave it to the waiter as a tip. The waiter was naturally surprised and said thank you, then left. She's really generous. I'm always busy and killing a ghost only earns a few hundred yuan. This waiter just made a profit by showing us the way. Yang Chao muttered quietly. I wasn't surprised because I had already seen her character from her appearance. It would be abnormal if she didn't tip the waiter. And what I said to Yang Chao just now was not false. If we had really played the victim, she would have given us money. Did you write this? The girl walked over and placed the paper in front of me. I nodded. Yes, I wrote it. Why did you write it for me? 
I felt embarrassed. If I didn't do anything after scratching her car, it definitely wouldn't work. But the girl shook her head, my dad says you're a con artist. I was stunned. Me, a con artist? I had just seen the problems in her family business from her appearance, which were not difficult to solve. Her appearance, first of all, represents wealth at the bridge of her nose, with a hint of dark energy, and her forehead is slightly red, indicating lingering misfortune. The dark energy on the bridge of her nose, although only a little, is relatively deep in color, obviously accumulated over a long time. Judging by the depth, her family's business has not been doing well in the past two years. This dinner was an opportunity her father fought for, although he had to send carefully prepared gifts. But her lingering misfortune did not change anything, and even deepened. This can only mean one thing, the gifts she sent were not to the recipient's liking and even caused resentment. So what's the use? That's why I told her not to send this thing. The words on the paper I wrote were, cater to their preferences. This means she should send something else, at least something that caters to their preferences. She sent the paper back to me, and I was somewhat helpless. I shook my head, I'm not a con artist, but whether you believe it or not is up to you. My dad says you're a con artist, the girl said. I was speechless and could only tell her what I had seen in her face. Of course, I didn't tell her that I had seen her sympathy and didn't let me pay. The girl stared at me for a few seconds, with more doubt on her face. She suddenly walked to the door, opened it, and a middle-aged man in a suit walked in. There was a resemblance between the two, father and daughter. I am Guo Wei, and this is my daughter, Guo Tingting. May I ask for your name, master? The middle-aged man said politely as he entered. It seemed that he had heard everything I said about his daughter's appearance outside the door, and he was probably mostly convinced by my words. I quickly stood up. I'm not a master. I scratched your car just now, so, I know, my daughter told me, he looked at me meaningfully, and I felt embarrassed. He was a big boss. What tricks hadn't he seen? He must have known that I had seen that his daughter wouldn't let me pay, but he didn't reveal it. But that's my professional habit, and I couldn't help it. The master just said that the person didn't like the gift I sent. Why did the master say that? He asked. The fact that there was no change in your daughter's appearance and yours is enough to prove this, I said. If there was no change after giving a gift, what does that mean? If someone doesn't like it, why should they do something for you? Dad, really? Doesn't that person like antiques? We spent a hundred. The girl said quietly. The middle-aged man raised his hand, and the girl fell silent. The middle-aged man looked thoughtful. I've been trying to arrange this dinner for a long time, and he only agreed to come out now. I know he likes antiques, and it's his zodiac year, so the gift we sent this time cost over a million. He should like it. What did you send? I couldn't help asking, and Yang Chao was also curious. An antique jade carving of a tiger, from the Qing dynasty, the middle-aged man said. This was chosen by me and my father together. Before buying it, we had a specialist appraise it. It's definitely a Qing dynasty jade, a genuine antique. There's no mistake about it, the girl couldn't help but say, probably thinking that I thought the antique they gave was fake, so she added this sentence. According to them, they really hit the mark, but even after spending so much money, why didn't it yield results? I pondered, and the middle-aged man didn't rush me. After thinking for a while, I suddenly had a flash of inspiration, besides you giving the tiger, who else gave something? Master, what do you mean? The middle-aged man was surprised. It's simple. If someone already has a tiger, and you give another one, no matter how expensive or how much you spend, there will be two tigers. How can there be peace? Aren't you telling him to fight in his own territory? He definitely won't be happy. I said, if that's the case, how can you expect their business to thrive? It seems like there isn't, I haven't heard of it, the middle-aged man shook his head. The girl whispered in his ear, Dad, you forgot, it was three years ago. The middle-aged man was awakened, slapped his forehead, and suddenly realized something, feeling a bit helpless, oh, I forgot that I gave him a tiger three years ago, he really liked it at the time. I forgot about this taboo of one mountain cannot have two tigers. He was a bit regretful, but looking at me with a determined gaze, Please, master, give me some guidance. He's coming soon, and I won't have time to prepare. If he's not satisfied this time, it will be troublesome to invite him out again. After thinking for a moment, I said, there is a way, it depends on whether you dare to do it. Please tell me, master, he said. Bring me that jade tiger, I said. The middle-aged man immediately had his daughter fetch it. Soon, his daughter opened the gift box taken out from the car, revealing a green jade tiger. After looking at it for a while, I said, just break this tiger and give it to him. What? Break it? Won't it become worthless? How can we give it to him? He definitely won't like it. The girl muttered, with a skeptical look on her face, and even Yang Chao looked at me strangely, as if curious about why I said that. 
After thinking for a while, the middle-aged man suddenly slapped his forehead, showing a happy expression, thank you for your guidance, Ting Ting, give this master 10,000 as a reward for the fortune telling this time. After saying that, he forcefully broke the jade tiger into two pieces and put them in the box, then went straight to the appointment for dinner. The girl glanced at me, even more curious. She hesitated, but in the end, she just took out 10,000 and placed it on the table. I was stunned, 10,000. Yang Chao couldn't help but ask me, what kind of idea did you come up with? Breaking the jade, won't it become worthless? Will he accept it? Oh, strange, this surnamed Guai actually listened. Quickly tell me what you meant. Say something, Yang Chao pushed me with his hand, and I was really excited. This middle-aged man actually had his daughter give me 10,000 as a reward. Honestly, I had never seen so much money at once. It felt like a dream. I just bumped into their car, not bad luck, but good luck. I held the 10,000 in my hand, feeling new and heavy. Yang Chao was speechless at my reaction. I took out half and gave it to him, but he shook his head and said he didn't need it, you earned it yourself, and I didn't do anything. Why should I take this money? Just tell me why you made Guo Wei break the Jade Tiger. I asked him seriously if he really didn't want it. He shook his head, no, just tell me. I said wait a moment, I carefully put the 10,000 yuan in my pocket. With 10,000 yuan, I can spend 3 or 400 to buy a regular phone. As for what kind of phone to buy, let's wait until we meet the person and then decide. I don't understand these things, so I'll let Yang Chao accompany me to buy one. In fact, it's very simple. One mountain cannot accommodate two tigers. So I'll ask him to break the jade tiger he gave me. Then it won't be a tiger anymore. How can there be two tigers? How can they not coexist? I said, maybe, but at the same time, it becomes a piece of junk. Will they still want it? If they see it, they will definitely be angry, Yang curiously asked. I smiled and shook my head, whether they will be angry or not, they will only know after they see it. But after the tiger is broken, it's not a tiger anymore, it's a broken tiger. If it's broken, it's like breaking a stone. So the meaning is that his mountain will become more, turning into two mountains. So with two mountains, having two tigers doesn't it imply a better meaning? It implies that it will be twice as good as it is now. How could he not be willing? Yang Chao muttered, are you talking nonsense? Whether it's nonsense or not, you'll know soon, I sat down. Yang Chao pondered, as if he was thinking about whether my words were right or not. But in less than a few minutes, Wu Wei and his daughter Guai Tingting returned. Not to mention the joy on their faces, just from their expressions, it was clear that the person really liked this implication. Because the bridge of their noses, representing wealth, showed signs of shining. This indicates that the gift was accepted. And this dinner party was a success. I felt relieved. At least I had to help them with this money, right? When Yang Chao saw them come in, he was also stunned. Master, your idea was right. When I gave him the broken jade tiger, he clearly hesitated for a while, and then laughed heartily a few minutes later. Master, you are much more powerful than the fortune tellers I have met, Wu Wei said seriously. I felt embarrassed by his words. These were all taught to me by my mother, I just used them flexibly. Thank you for the praise, I still have a long way to go before being powerful, I shook my head. Ah, master, you were so young and already so powerful. You can tell my daughter's fortune in just a few words. You are truly a young hero, Wu Wei was in a good mood. The gift was successful, so what specific matters would come next depended on him. Master, what's your phone number? It would be convenient to contact you later, Huawei Wei asked, meaning that he might need to find me for something. I said I didn't have a phone yet. This father and daughter clearly hesitated, as if they were particularly surprised that I didn't have a phone. Wu Tingting asked if I had a computer or QQ. I said no. She looked at me as if I were an old man. Indeed, in this day and age, not having a phone is definitely not acceptable. Yang Chao said, just remember my phone number for now. If there's anything, I'll let him know. Okay, then I'll trouble you later, Huo Wei smiled, remembering Yang Chao's phone number, and then said he wouldn't disturb us for now. He and his daughter left. I breathed a sigh of relief. Yang Chao looked at me strangely and said, it seems that bringing you out today was the right decision. Indeed, it was. I earned 10,000 yuan and felt particularly good. For the first time, I wondered if fortune telling could make me rich. We continued to wait, but after waiting for an hour, the person still hadn't arrived. I was starving, but I didn't want to say anything, so I could only continue waiting. Yang Chao thought for a moment and asked if I wanted to continue waiting. I said it was up to him. I was brought here by him, so of course, his decision mattered. He hesitated and said he would go out to call and find out what was going on. As he was about to leave, I looked at him without saying a word. He went out to make the call, and after a minute, he came back in with a somewhat unpleasant expression. Let's go, she can't make it. 
We'll go find her instead. I asked him how far it was. After all, my electric car can't drive for too long. He said it wasn't too far, and I said it was okay. The two of us immediately went outside. I asked Yang Chao who this person was. He said, my colleague, meaning he also studies Taoism? So he's a Taoist? Why couldn't she explain over the phone? Can't she just tell me over the phone? I complained a bit. Can't Yang Chao call me earlier? It's a waste of time for us to wait for so long. She said she couldn't explain over the phone and asked me to come over and talk. Yang Chao replied to me like this. I didn't say anything. When we arrived at the parking lot, I rode the electric car and went to find his friend as he had instructed. When I arrived, I finally saw the person Yang Chao had mentioned. She was a woman in her 30s, quite pretty. She was indeed Yang Chao's colleague, as there was a chi covering her face, making it difficult for me to see much. This woman looked at me and asked Yang Chao how he brought me here, meaning, how could he bring a stranger here? Yang Chao and she were very familiar. He whispered a few words in her ear, and she looked at me again, but didn't say anything. However, her suspicion on her face decreased a lot. After they finished talking, I stood by and didn't say a word. After all, we had just met, so it wasn't appropriate for me to interrupt. However, this woman's Taoist cultivation was not very high. I could tell a little bit. I found that her destiny was not very good. Although she was pretty, she had a husband restraining face. Her eyebrows were raised, indicating a bad temper. Her cheekbones were too high. Although her face shape was good, it matched the husband restraining face. Marrying a woman like this would either be suppressed to death or end in divorce. Her current situation was that her husband had died, leaving her with a daughter. However, she had a good fortune despite her husband restraining face. I couldn't see much else. Because she saw me looking at her, she frowned. Of course, I couldn't continue to look at her, so I could only look around honestly. I felt something was wrong with this place. It was a construction site, but it was all sealed off. A few minutes later, Yang Chao said to me, All right, I know what's going on. When they were digging the foundation at this construction site, they found a pit. The next day, they found several large snakes in the pit. The workers killed the snakes with an excavator, thinking it was over, and continued digging. Unexpectedly, they dug out a coffin, and three people died on the spot. The coffin was left in the pit, and no one dared to touch it. The construction site had to be sealed off. I was surprised to hear this. Why did they bring me here in this situation? This woman was definitely sent to solve this matter. I guess she couldn't solve it and asked Yang Chao to come and help. So how are we going to deal with it now? I asked. People died when it was dug out. This was no ordinary coffin. It was probably due to excessive corpse gas inside. I said this, and Yang Chao nodded. More or less. She has already gone in to take a look. The coffin was damaged, and the corpse gas inside caused the people who dug it out to rot and die. Let's go in and take a look first, he said. I had no objections, but I suddenly looked at her and froze. She frowned, and Yang Chao told me not to look at her fortune-telling. I naturally understood, but her fortune-telling was a bit different. How should I put it? It was like drawing water with a bamboo basket, meaning it was all in vain. I said this about her fortune-telling, and her expression changed. Are you saying that I have been here for a few days and will ultimately have no results? I nodded. Her fortune-telling showed this. I was also puzzled. Why would it be all in vain? Just as I was puzzled, I looked around and suddenly saw something, and my heart was in my mouth. I saw four people walking silently on the empty road, carrying a frame like they were carrying a sedan chair. They were actually carrying the four paper people who had carried away the female corpse last time. I was shocked and thought I had seen it wrong, but I hadn't. I subconsciously rubbed my eyes, only to find that these four paper figures were silently getting closer. The eerie smiles on their faces made me uneasy, especially the motionless eyes that seemed to be staring at me. What was going on? These four paper figures had just carried away the female corpse yesterday, so how did they appear here today? Does this mean that the person behind these four paper figures is also interested in the body unearthed at this construction site? Does this person have a penchant for collecting corpses? Why is it them again? Yang Chao's expression also became uncertain, clearly not expecting these four paper figures to reappear in such a short time. The woman's face turned ugly, so this is the reason you said my efforts would be in vain? I nodded. Yang Chao was more powerful than this woman, yet he also seemed wary of these four paper figures, so she was unlikely to be their adversary. This meant that my earlier assessment of her was correct. After the appearance of these four paper figures, just like yesterday, they leisurely carried the frame inside, giving me a numb feeling similar to that of an ambulance carrying a dead person. The construction site was surrounded by walls, so we couldn't see what was happening inside. The woman's expression became increasingly grim, as if she was about to make a move. 
Yang Chao quickly stopped her, don't be impulsive, let's go inside first. The woman nodded, and the three of us immediately walked inside. Yang Chao had mentioned the situation inside the construction site earlier, speculating that there was a graveyard below, and the unlucky ones had directly smashed open the coffins inside. I had no idea whose graveyard it was, but as we entered, we followed behind these four paper figures. The construction site had not been very active, so there were not many obstructions, and soon we saw the four paper figures setting down the frame and walking into a deep pit. In less than a minute, they lifted out a damaged coffin. It seemed that this coffin was a couple of hundred years old. At this point, my doubts reached their peak. What did the person behind these paper figures want to do? They placed the coffin on the frame and lifted it up, as if they hadn't seen us at all, which was particularly eerie. As they started to walk away again, there was nothing we could do. Yang Chao and I were resigned to this, but the woman clearly didn't want to give up. She immediately wanted to chase after them, but Yang Chao stopped her, and I instinctively held her back. Let me go, I've been working hard for days to solve this, and now these things come and take everything away. What am I supposed to do? She said coldly. Don't act recklessly, do you know who the person behind them is? Yang Chao said helplessly. Have you seen them? The woman asked. Yang Chao hesitated for a moment and said he hadn't seen them, which surprised me. If he hadn't seen them, why was he so wary? The woman looked at me, and since I hadn't seen them either, I naturally shook my head. So you don't want to find out who the person behind these paper figures is? The woman asked all of us. This question was indeed tempting for me. Where did these four paper figures take the female corpse? They couldn't have gone too far in one night, right? If we could follow them, maybe we could find an opportunity to take back the female corpse. As for who the person behind the paper figures was, I guessed it would depend on luck. Yang Chao and I exchanged a glance, and he looked at the four paper figures that had already gone far. After hesitating for a moment, he asked for my opinion, and of course, I said it was okay. Alright, but be careful. As soon as the person behind these paper figures appears, the three of us must retreat, no matter how close we are to the body. We must retreat. Yang Chao's expression was serious. I agreed. As a rookie, I couldn't just stand there and wait to die, could I? I asked about my electric bike. If I left it here and it got stolen, I would be heartbroken. After all, my family's annual income was only 10,000 yuan, and buying an electric bike was not easy. The woman gave me a glance and asked for the keys. I handed them over, and she rode off. She turned to look at us and said, you two sit in the back. It's true that electric bikes are small, so only Yang Chao and I, two men, could squeeze into the back. As we rode, she drove and I mentioned that there wasn't much battery left, meaning she should leave some for me to ride back home. She didn't say anything and quickly caught up to the paper figures walking ahead in the distance. They walked leisurely, and it was eerie in the dark night. I asked Yang Chao why he was so wary of the person behind the paper figures. He paused and said, I haven't seen the person behind them, but just remember, for now, it's best not to provoke them. Before I could respond, the woman glanced at him and said, You've become much more timid. If you had died once, you would be like me, knowing the meaning of the word gap. Yang Chao didn't get angry. The woman fell silent and didn't speak again, but her words stuck with me. After following for more than 10 minutes, the bike suddenly stopped. The woman said something that left me speechless, the battery's dead. She got off, and I had to as well, quickly finding a place to lock up the bike, hoping it wouldn't be stolen. The three of us continued to follow. The paper figures kept walking, and by late night, we had followed them to a desolate area. I felt unfamiliar with the place, but the four paper figures led us there. They slowed down, and it seemed like we were almost there. The place seemed like a graveyard, especially eerie, with owls calling from the tree branches. The air was filled with a sense of fear. The three of us naturally stopped and watched from a distance as the four paper figures continued walking. Fog had appeared around us, making our vision blurry. Be very careful. Yang Chao lowered his voice. My heart was already racing, and the spine-chilling feeling was growing. Get closer, Yang Chao said, and the three of us huddled together. As I prepared to continue walking, I suddenly tripped over something. I almost fell, instinctively reaching out and grabbing onto something to steady myself. Oh no, we've been tricked. No wonder they led us all the way here. Li Chen, look at what you've grabbed. Yang Chao suddenly said warily, scaring me. I turned my head and almost screamed because I had actually grabbed a skull, with my fingers even reaching into its mouth. I stumbled back, and in the fog, I saw many shadows, as if the fog wasn't fog at all, but rather human figures. Where were we? I broke out in a cold sweat, forcing myself to stay calm. Don't panic. After all, I was a fortune teller, a kind of extraordinary person. A pauper's grave, Yang Chao's face turned grim. Li Chen, be careful of the ground. 
If these things grab your feet, resist, or they'll drag you underground. I could see it for myself. The ground seemed to be moving in many places, like tentacles, as if waiting for someone to pass by so they could drag them underground. This is bad. Hurry and keep up, or we'll lose them. The woman immediately ran ahead. She was fast, and the claws emerging from the ground couldn't catch her. Soon, I could only see her shadow moving in the fog. I also picked up the pace. Clearly, these four paper figures weren't foolish. They had led us to this place for a reason, and now I was even more curious about where they were taking the bodies. Li Chen, follow me. Step on the seven stars. Yang Chao leaped ahead of me. It was strange, but as he stepped carefully, the claws on the ground couldn't reach him. I breathed a sigh of relief, feeling like I was walking on an ice edge. I remember his footsteps, running closely behind him, but something went wrong. When I was running, suddenly one of my feet couldn't move. I looked back and found that my ankle was firmly grabbed by a claw emerging from the ground. I was startled. The claw was pulling me into the soil as if it wanted to drag me in with it. Not good. Kick it quickly. Yang Cha shouted. I frantically shook my foot, but the claw suddenly exerted force, causing me to fall to the ground. My body was moving, and the claw was pulling me. I heard Yang Chao's loud shout and immediately started kicking the claw with my other foot. However, the claw, like a pair of pliers, was immovable. What's more, the claw gripping my ankle was too strong. I could feel a sharp pain in my ankle, as if it had been stung. This claw was a skeleton hand, and I didn't know if it carried corpse poison, but the piercing pain made my whole lower leg numb, giving me the sensation of being stung by a giant wasp. I felt uneasy. I was probably in big trouble. I struggled to get up, but the claw wouldn't let go. It had already pulled my entire lower leg into the soil, and I was completely at its mercy. I sat up and, without hesitation, bit my tongue to spray a little blood onto the claw. I didn't know much about the art of yin and yang, but I knew that tongue blood had the effect of dispelling evil. Sure enough, when my blood sprayed onto the claw gripping my ankle, it sizzled and emitted black smoke. I kicked with all my might. At that moment, Yang Chao ran over and swung his peachwood sword, cutting off the claw with a sizzling sound. The remaining part retracted into the ground. Yang Chao helped me up in a hurry, asking if I was okay. My ankle was stinging and numb, indicating a serious situation. But since we had come this far, it would be a shame to give up now. I shook my head and said I was fine. Are you really okay? This is a mass grave hill. Who knows how many people have died here. The corpse poison here is very strong. If you're affected, it will be troublesome. If anything happens, let me know, Yang Chao reminded me. I thought I could hold on for a while, so I shook my head again. Yang Chao nodded and said, All right, follow my footsteps. You probably stepped wrong just now. Stick close this time. It must have been my mistake. Yang Chao continued walking forward, stepping with the seven star footwork. I hesitated for a moment, then squatted down to pull up my pants and check my ankle. There was a small wound, as if a fingernail had pierced it causing the stinging and numbness. I kicked my leg and moved around. For the time being, it wasn't a big problem. I could still walk and run, but I didn't know how long I could hold out. I stopped thinking about it and followed the paper figure. Maybe I could save the female corpse. I ran forward with Yang Chao, this time learning my lesson. When he lifted his front foot, I filled in the step with my back foot. There were no problems this time, and we perfectly avoided the densely packed claws emerging from the ground. We quickly caught up with the woman who had been running ahead. She must have heard the sound of me being grabbed just now. She turned to look at me but didn't say anything. I asked Yang Chao quietly what her name was. After all, she was older than me, and I couldn't just keep calling her Hey. Yang Chao said her name was Yi Qing. It was a simple and easy to remember name, and I remembered it. However, she didn't stop to wait for us, but because the fog around us was so thick, it felt like a maze. It was obvious that they wanted to trap us here and prevent us from continuing. At this point, it would be a waste to give up, so I immediately started thinking of a solution. Where did the paper people go? Yang Chao asked anxiously. After hesitating for a moment, Yi Ching said, it seems like they got lost. With such thick fog, it was normal to get lost. Is there a way? Yang Chao asked. After hesitating for a moment, Yi Ching said, it's difficult. You can see for yourself, the aura of the chaotic burial mound is too heavy completely shrouding this place. It will be easier to leave when the sun comes up. But if it's already morning, those four paper people would have already gone who knows where, so how can we catch up? Yang Chao tried his own method and took out a compass, but soon showed a frustrated expression. It's true, we can't get out. Those four paper people must have led us here from the beginning. The person behind this is playing us. Yi Qing's expression also turned grim. Since we're trapped, there's nothing we can do. It's all in vain. 
We'll just have to wait until tomorrow morning when the sun comes out and the aura of the corpses isn't as strong, then it will be easier to leave. Yi Ching said as she started to find a place to sit down. Yang Chao muttered a few words of resignation, saying something about being careless. In the end, they both prepared to wait until the next morning. Actually, there is a remedy. Yi Ching, all you have to do is say a word in your heart, I said. She glanced at me, stood up again, and hesitated before asking, can it be deduced? Yang Chao subconsciously looked at me. It should be possible, I said, with no other choice. Yi Ching hesitated, and I knew she didn't want me to read her fortune, worried that I would pry into her personal privacy through physiognomy. In fact, I'm not that perverted. When my mother taught me fortune-telling, she told me not to look at other people's messy things, but if I accidentally saw something, I should try not to say it and keep it buried in my heart. So I could only say that I would use a word to figure out how to continue chasing after them. This is the remedy, and I hope it works. Yi Ching fell silent for a few seconds. I thought she didn't want to, but she quickly and cleanly said the word money. I was stunned. By saying this word, she meant that she was in need of money, so that's why she wanted to chase after them? I glanced at Young Chao and he nodded. It seems that after her husband's death, she had a daughter to support. For a single mother like her, even if her financial luck was good, she still had a lot of pressure. I thought for a moment and said, let's go. They both were surprised. How did you figure it out? Yang Chao asked, and Yi Qing also seemed a bit surprised, as if she hadn't expected me to come up with a result in less than a minute. I nodded, yes, just keep walking straight ahead. Remember to stay in a straight line. I said, leading the way, and they followed after exchanging glances. Yi Qing asked, how did you figure it out? I didn't figure out anything else, I just looked at the word money, so I told her that we should walk straight ahead, I said, letting her know that I didn't analyze her privacy. But this money made me silently analyze a bit about her situation. First of all, according to the five elements, money belongs to metal. Combined with Yi Qing's tone just now, it had a bit of a heavy feeling, which represents fire. In the interactions of the five elements, metal can control fire, which means that the money is not available. In simpler terms, she lost money recently, possibly being deceived, or something else happened, so she doesn't have money, and that's why she's trying so hard to earn it. But her personality shouldn't be easily deceived, right? I was curious about this. Yi Qing didn't ask much, but her gaze was a bit deep as she looked at me, as if she was very satisfied with my hint. I breathed a sigh of relief. If I had the time, I could analyze more things based on this word money, but now I had to hurry and chase after the four paper people. There's no time for analysis. I walked ahead to lead the way, while the two of them walked beside me, using peachwood swords to help clear the claws on the ground. In no time, the mist around us slowly dissipated. We walked out, and I continued to follow this money, and sure enough, a few minutes later, I saw the four paper people carrying the coffin in the distance again. Yang Chao gave me a thumbs up, and Yi Qing also glanced at me. I didn't say anything. This time we didn't follow too closely. After walking for more than an hour, we could see the paper people stop in front of a very dilapidated house. This time they pushed open the door and when they came out quickly, the coffin on the shelf was gone. It seemed that we had finally arrived. The four paper people left, and it was unclear whether they were going to continue carrying other coffins or rest. Let's go, Yang Chao said in a low voice. Yi Ching had already approached the house, and the two of them walked ahead, and of course, I followed. But then I suddenly realized a problem. I looked down at my legs and felt like they were gone. I squatted down and pulled up my pants, and immediately broke out in a cold sweat because it was already festering. This situation was not good. There was no pain, just numbness, and I felt like my legs were not my own. I was prepared to endure it. Yang Chao saw that I didn't move, and he turned back in confusion and walked back to me. When he saw my ankle, the corners of his mouth twitched, and he immediately took out the peachwood sword and cut a gash in my leg. He squeezed hard, and I felt nothing, no pain at all, but with a spluttering sound, thick white and red blood sprayed out, making my scalp tingle. It's a good thing we found it early, the problem isn't too big, Yang Chao said after squeezing out the disgusting blood. He took out glutinous rice from his pocket and pressed it against my wound. This time my leg felt the pain, burning intensely, suddenly so painful that I almost screamed. After going back, eat glutinous rice porridge for 10 days in a row, and it's best to use river water to cook the porridge, Yang Chao said. I asked why river water? He said, river water is alive, it's also the saliva of the Dragon King, and it's useful for your kind of injury. The Dragon King's saliva? I was stunned. Don't you know that when it rains, it's the Dragon King sneezing and spitting saliva in the sky that makes it rain? Yang Chao asked me. I was speechless. Where does the Dragon King get so much saliva? What about heavy rain? How much saliva does he spit out? I stood up, 
still feeling the pain, but no longer numb. I should follow his method to deal with it, and the problem can be solved. When it rains heavily, it's because the Dragon King drank too much and spit it out, Yang Chao said. This left me speechless, but the key was that I didn't know how to argue with him, and it made some sense. Anyway, using river water to cook the porridge was fine. I remembered it. After all, there's a small river near our village, so it's convenient to go there. He asked if I needed help, but I shook my head and said no. At this time, Yi Ching had already reached the side of the house and seemed to have seen something. When he turned around, his face had turned pale. Come over here, quickly. Yang Chao and I hurried over. This house was already very eerie, who knows how many years it had been abandoned. In the middle of the mountains, and with the pitch black night, how could it not make people feel a chill? After we approached, Yi Ching pointed inside. The house was dilapidated, with doors and windows, and through the cracks in the windows, we could see that it was completely empty inside. How was this possible? Just now, the four paper people had gone in and out, and the coffin on the shelf had disappeared, indicating that they had placed the coffin here. The three of us had a clear view, and I was sure I hadn't seen it wrong, but where was the coffin? What's going on? I asked unconsciously, rubbing my eyes to make sure there was really nothing inside. It was too strange. Let's go in and take a look, Yang Chao said, carefully walking to the door and gently pushing it open. Creak. The door slowly swung open, and as I and Yi Ching walked in, a cold gust of wind blew out, sending shivers down my spine. It felt like we had trespassed into a place we shouldn't have. The inside was pitch black, making it particularly oppressive. Suppressing my thoughts, I saw Yi Ching take out a flashlight and shine it inside the spacious, dilapidated room, revealing nothing at all. This was strange. Where was the coffin? As Yi Ching's flashlight illuminated the room, a chill ran down my spine. There are no formations, no other concealment methods. Where's the coffin? Yang Chao's face turned grim, and Yi Ching looked unsettled. They couldn't figure it out, let alone me. But the coffin was definitely in this room. In that moment, my mind was in a whirl. Not good, someone's coming, Yang Chao suddenly said, startling both me and Yi Ching. There was nowhere to hide in this empty house. Quick, let's get out. The person behind the paper figure might be back, Yang Chao said. The three of us hurriedly ran out, and Yang Chao closed the door. We quickly hid in the grass, tense and nervous, especially Yang Chao, who tightly gripped his peachwood sword, clearly believing that the person behind the paper figure had returned. Just as I was feeling anxious, Yang Chao suddenly broke out in a sweat. Here they come. We followed his gaze and soon, a person emerged from the darkness and walked towards the house. As they got closer, their face became visible in the dim light. In an instant, I was stunned. My mind went blank. How could it be her? After she appeared, she walked straight to the door of the dilapidated house, pushed it open, entered, and then closed the door. There was no sound from inside. Yang Chao turned to look at me, and Yi Ching, sensing something was amiss, asked, What's wrong? Was that woman the person behind the paper figure? Ask him, Yang Chao said. Yi Ching looked at me, and then asked, Do you know that woman who just appeared? My mind was blank, unable to process what had just happened. The woman who had entered the house was so familiar, and to my surprise, it was my mother. Wasn't she supposed to be looking for the broken mountain god seal with her left hand? How could she be here? Seeing me speechless, Yi Ching asked Yang Chao. He replied, and Yi Ching looked puzzled. Could there be a mistake? How could it be my mother? I found it hard to believe. I had never seen a paper figure appear in my house. How could she be the person behind the paper figure? But she suddenly appeared here. I have to consider that possibility, Yang Chao seemed conflicted, as if his opinion of my mother had just changed and was now wavering. I couldn't explain this. I had to go in and ask, I had to ask, even if it was my mother. She had raised me, and she would never harm me. I stood up. Yang Chao quickly pulled me down. Get down, I hear a sound. Your mother is coming out, he said, pulling me down. Sure enough, a few minutes later, the door opened, and my mother walked out, looking pained. She was holding something in a bag, and I couldn't see what it was. After she came out, she closed the door and walked away in the direction she had come from. I watched the whole process from my hiding spot in the grass, until she completely disappeared from view. My mind was in a whirl. What was going on? Was my mother going out on the third of every month for this? Instructing the paper figure to search for the desired corpse? I really want to catch up and ask clearly, but Yang Chao has been pulling me, telling me not to be impulsive. I am caught in endless confusion. At this moment, Yi Ching suddenly asked, Did you notice that she went in empty-handed, but when she came out, she was carrying something? We just went into the room, but there was nothing inside. Where did she get the thing she was carrying? Yi Ching's words woke me up. Right, where did my mother get the things in her hands? 
The three of us looked at each other, thinking of the same place. We came out of the bushes, walked over again, pushed the door open, and closed it as soon as we entered. The house was still empty inside. I was even more puzzled. Where did my mother's things come from? Where did the coffin go? I searched around, and they did the same. Soon, I found footprints on the ground, leading to a wall. These were my mother's footprints. Could it be that there was no cover up here, but there was some kind of mechanism? I subconsciously walked over, and Yi Cheng and Yang Chao also noticed and came over. Yang Chao stared at the wall for a while and suddenly thought of something. Yi Ching, did you think of it? I did. It seems that we are too ignorant. We haven't even been here before, Yi Ching said with surprise in his tone. I was a little confused. What were they talking about? Yang Chao pointed at the wall, as if looking for something. Soon, he pressed on a spot, and with a click, the stone rubbed against each other. In front of us was originally a wall, but it opened like a mechanism, revealing darkness inside. I was confused again. Did the paper figure just put the coffin in here, and did my mother take something out from inside? What kind of place was this? Before I could figure it out, footsteps suddenly came from the darkness, which startled me. Who else was in there? Just as I was startled by the sudden appearance of footsteps from inside, Yang Chao calmly said, Don't be nervous, relax a little. Yi Ching nodded at me, and when I was still puzzled, I forced myself to relax. Sure enough, a person with an expressionless face, tall and with a fierce scar on his face, walked out from the darkness. I had never seen him before. But as soon as I saw him, I noticed the aura on his face. He was also a supernatural being, but I didn't know if he was a Taoist like Yang Chao and Yi Ching, or a feng shui master specializing in feng shui. Of course, he definitely wasn't a fortune teller. As a fortune teller myself, how could I not recognize a colleague? He glanced at the three of us, frowned, but didn't say anything. He walked directly behind the door, opened it and walked out, then closed it casually, obviously knowing the rules. With the appearance of this man, I roughly understood what kind of place this was. Ghost den, I didn't expect there to be a ghost den here, Yang Chao was surprised, and Yi Qing had the same expression. Ghost den? His words were a bit different from what I had in mind. I had thought it was some kind of ghost market, since people could come and go, but a ghost den should be similar to a ghost market. Yes, ghost den, Yang Chao nodded. This kind of place is similar to a ghost market, where there is everything, but a ghost den is much more mysterious. It is said that there are only 12 or 13 in the entire mortal world, but I didn't expect that there would be one here, and those four paper figures actually put the body in here. He still sounded a bit surprised, but then he looked at me and continued, your mother should not be the one behind the paper figures. She should have just come to the ghost den to exchange something. There is a ghost king inside the ghost den, and anyone can come and exchange things with him, as long as they know where the ghost den is. So, my mother's pained expression just now, what did she exchange for? I felt curious, but also relieved. At least her sudden appearance surprised me, but fortunately, she is still my mother. I just overthought the situation earlier. If I had really caught up with her and asked her, she might have been a little confused. But the reason I overthought it was because my mother goes out on the third of every month. If she didn't go out, I wouldn't have thought about anything else. This makes me even more curious about what she does every third of the month. Let's go in and take a look, Yang Chao said. Since we're here, we definitely have to go in. At the very least, there are four paper people. I don't know how many coffins are in this ghost den, but the female corpse should be there. Let's see if there's any way to bring the female corpse back, but it's probably not possible. However, I asked if the ghost king in this ghost den is the person behind the paper people. Yang Chao shook his head, it's probably not. Compared to the person in this ghost den, the ghost king in here is just a local bully. So when I found out this was a ghost den, I knew that the person wasn't in here. Is it possible that this ghost den belongs to that person? I asked subconsciously, letting my paper person lift the coffin and place it in my spot. It makes sense. When I asked this, Yi Ching also seemed a little puzzled. I'm not sure, but I don't have a lingering feeling of fear anymore, so I can only confirm that the person is not in this ghost den. That's enough, he said. So we didn't continue to ask, and we went straight in. Yi Ching shone the flashlight, and I saw that it was a deep cave inside, but the cave was particularly damp and eerie. At the end of the flashlight's beam, there was a black mist that the flashlight couldn't penetrate. That should be where the ghost king is. Newcomers? It's been a long time since new people have come to my place, a deep voice came from the black mist. But as I moved the flashlight with Yi Ching, I didn't see a coffin inside the cave. But the four paper people must have placed the coffin here, otherwise how could the stretcher be empty when they left? So the coffin must be here. What are you here for? The voice continued. Just now. Yang Chao was about to speak, but the ghost king continued, do you know my rules? Yang Chao nodded and took something out of his pocket, threw it into the black mist, 
and the bottle was opened by someone inside with a pop sound. This is just 10 years of black monkey blood, barely enough. I usually don't accept this kind of thing, but since you're newcomers, I'll take it. So, what do you want to exchange? Here, there are only three or four things of similar value, we don't want to exchange anything, Yang Chao shook his head. Then what do you want? The voice of the ghost king in the black mist fluctuated. I want to ask a few questions. Ask questions? Okay, I can answer two questions for the value of this thing, the ghost king said. This made me relieved, but also helpless. What would it take to bring the coffin back? Just now, the four paper people came in. I want to know. Yang Chao was speaking slowly, but before he finished, a pair of green eyes suddenly appeared in the black mist. You want to ask about this? His reaction made me feel uneasy. Yes, Yang Chao just nodded, and something was thrown out of the black mist, which was the bottle Yang Chao had given earlier. Did he return it? Both Yang Chao and Yi Qing, who hadn't spoken, were stunned. Let's go, leave this place. The voice of the ghost king was heavy and full of dread. The three of us looked at each other. This was a direct refusal to do business with this exchange, wasn't it? I am surprised by this. It can only be said that the person behind the paper man has made this ghost king wary, but to the extent of being so tight-lipped, that is unexpected. I'm afraid that won't work, Yang Chao shook his head. Do you still want to threaten me? The eyes within the black mist narrowed. Take a look at this, Yang Chao took out an envelope and shot it directly in. A few seconds later, the tone of the ghost king actually changed again, you are. Hmph, I really didn't expect that you still have this identity, but for other questions, I can answer 10 or 8 of them without a problem. However, the question you just asked, I cannot answer, I instinctively glanced at Yang Chao, and Yi Qing's expression remained unchanged. Are you also afraid of that person? Yang Chao said, there's nothing wrong with admitting it. I am indeed afraid, so I cannot answer any questions about that person, the ghost king said bluntly. Yang Chao frowned, fell silent for a moment, and Yi Qing's expression became uncertain. The attitude of this ghost king was too resolute, there seemed to be no room for negotiation. Did we come here for nothing? I only have one question, how many coffins have they placed here with you? Yang Chao suddenly said. The ghost king fell silent, and after more than 10 seconds, he said, three, just one earlier, and there should have been another one a few days ago. Yang Chao asked. Yes, the ghost king actually answered again, confirming that the female corpse had been brought here. But what is that person doing with the collected bodies? I find it strange, but the female corpse is here, and I really want to take her away, but how can I do that? It's not that easy, right? Yang Chao fell silent for a moment, then walked directly into the black mist. I was so surprised. Wasn't he afraid of the ghost king attacking him by doing so? I hesitated for a moment, ready to follow him in, but Yi Qing held me back. He can go in, but we can't, I asked why. Just because of the letter earlier? I asked, and she nodded. He had another identity before he died, enough to let him in. Another identity? I was puzzled, but I didn't continue to ask. Yang Chao was half dead and half alive, so he was definitely special, there was no doubt about that. I could only wait here with Yi Qing. I could hear voices inside, fragmented, making it impossible to hear what was being said. But suddenly, there was another sound, and I was startled, immediately staring into the black mist. Soon, I saw Yang Chao coming out, but he was struggling, because he was still dragging a coffin. After seeing Yang Chao drag out the coffin, I and Yi Qing hurried over. I was very surprised, after all, the ghost king had been so firm just now, but at this moment, he actually let Yang Chao drag out a coffin. To be honest, at first glance, I thought I was mistaken, but I wasn't. So what did Yang Chao say to him in there that made the ghost king agree? I was puzzled and a little disappointed, because the coffin that Yang Chao dragged out was not the female corpse I had in mind, but the coffin that Yi Qing had been dealing with at the construction site. This coffin was quite dilapidated, you could tell at a glance. I and Yi Qing helped Yang Chao drag it, and Yang Chao said to me, I mentioned the female corpse, but he didn't agree, because the person behind the paper man is particularly interested in that female corpse. He gave it to us, so he will die, and that's not a big problem. I understood what he meant, he had done his best. But when will that person take the female corpse away from here? That's what I'm more concerned about, after all, I can only ask her about my origins. Let's go out first, Yang Chao said. I nodded with Yi Qing, and we prepared to lift the coffin out before speaking. At that moment, the voice of the ghost king came out, don't forget what you promised me, it's the woman who just came in. Yang Chao immediately turned around, stop talking, I understand. I was surprised in my heart. The person the ghost king mentioned, could it be my mother? After all, she was the only one who came just now, right? I looked at Yang Chao, what did the ghost king ask him to do? Yang Chao didn't say anything, and I felt anxious. Could he have agreed to something bad for my mother? 
What does Yang Chao want to do? Yang Chao looked at me, his eyes evasive, and shook his head, it's nothing bad, don't worry, how could I be at ease with this? What is the Ghost King planning? He didn't explain in detail, which made me even more anxious and felt uneasy. What does he want my mother to do? What? The woman who just came in is your mother? The Ghost King said in surprise. I saw a scholarly figure in the black mist, but couldn't see the face. Yes, what did you ask him to do to my mother? I asked, and Yi Ching looked at Yang Chao with a hint of strangeness. When did she have such a big son like you? The ghost king was a bit strange, and Yang Chao said, he's not her biological son, so don't worry. Yang Chao said so, and the ghost king nodded, alright, I still trust your reputation, but in your current state, forget it. If you didn't want to say just now, then forget it. After saying this, the figure in the black mist slowly faded away. Let's carry it out first, Yang Chao said. I hesitated for a moment and nodded. The three of us lifted the coffin out, and as we walked outside, I felt very reluctant in my heart. After all, the female corpse was still here, and I had no way to take her out. I sighed. After coming out of the house, Yang Chao closed the door as if he was going to come back in a few days. We carried the coffin to an open area. It was too heavy for us to carry, and we couldn't go too far. Yi Ching immediately made a phone call to have someone come and pick it up, and the three of us sat down to wait. I kept staring at Yang Chao. He said, it's really nothing, it might be a good thing for your mother. He was still evasive, and I felt helpless. I believed him now, but with him being so secretive and talking about things related to my mother with the Ghost King, how could I not be anxious? I don't know how long we remained silent, but I heard the sound of a car. A pickup truck drove into the forest, and a few people got out and helped us lift the coffin onto the truck. Yi Ching intended to completely resolve this matter and return to the construction site. I didn't need to go, so I said I would go back. Yi Ching asked me to get in the car first and said we would talk after leaving. I naturally had no objections. Otherwise, it would take a long time to walk out, and the key was that I might get lost. The car drove out, and I asked her to stop at the place where I had hidden my electric bike. I needed to push it back home, otherwise, I would have to spend money to buy a new one, which I couldn't bear. Yang Chao hesitated for a moment and said for me to go back first, and that he would come to find me tomorrow or the day after. I really didn't know what to say. He definitely had something else to do, probably related to my mother, but I couldn't force him to stay, so I could only agree. After they left, I pushed the electric bike back home. It was too far, so I shamelessly looked for a place with people to charge it. I only asked for help from those who looked willing, and if they didn't, I wouldn't bother them. Luckily, I found a household and charged it for an hour. I left 10 yuan and rode the electric bike back home. It was already morning when I arrived home. I continued to charge it and went to the nearby river to fetch a bucket of water, preparing to follow Yang Chao's advice and cook glutinous rice porridge with the saliva of the Dragon King to cleanse the corpse poison from my body. When I got home, I used the rice cooker and took a shower. I fell asleep in bed and woke up in the afternoon to the sound of scratching at the door. It was the hungry white rabbit asking for carrots. I fed her and had some sticky rice porridge while tending to my ankle wound. Later, I planned to buy a phone and saw a black car approaching. It was Guo Tingting, who gave me an expensive phone as a gift. She mentioned needing my help and offered to drive me to her friend's company. I noticed changes in her facial features and deduced that her friend was nearby. We arrived at the friend's location, and I pointed out that she was at the nearby cafe, not upstairs as Guo Tingting had thought. This caused some tension, but I assured her that I would leave after helping her friend. She praised my skills and urged me to be more confident. I smiled bitterly, what am I good at? Putting on airs? Then should I still do fortune-telling business? Well, let's go to the coffee shop, Gui Tingting said. I had no objection, so I opened the car door and followed her to the coffee shop. Gui Tingting wanted to ask the waiter where her friend was. I glanced at her face and pointed in a direction, saying, No need to ask, your friend is over there. How do you know? Gui Tingting was surprised, but she believed me and walked in the direction I pointed. Your forehead is bright, and it's on the left, which means you are going to meet someone. Who could it be? It must be your friend, and your friend is sitting on the left. I also saw where she was sitting. I said, looking in that direction. According to the corresponding features on Guo Tingting's face, her friend should be sitting in the fifth position on the left. I said this, and Guo Tingting was surprised, five is my friend's lucky number. Wherever she goes, she must sit in a position related to five, or she would rather go somewhere else. But how did you know? I smiled and said, actually, it's also a bit of a guess. Because her face doesn't have the corresponding details, I can only deduce based on her friend's personality. When we got out of the car just now, I saw her friend's company, and the name of the company has three words, all with five strokes. Is this a coincidence? I don't think so. 
This is one of the reasons why I said 5. In addition, her friend likes to test others. Usually, this kind of person is a strong woman, but not the kind that is very powerful and aggressive, the kind that can make people cry. It sounds like 5. I said this, and Guo Tingting laughed, saying that I could figure this out? I smiled and didn't say anything. This is a guess, and it's not really related to fortune telling. A more detailed person should be able to figure it out. While we were talking, we had already arrived at the place, and sure enough, there was a woman sitting inside drinking coffee. Her facial features and temperament were good, and she looked quite elegant. The clothes she was wearing were not cheap, which was normal, after all, Hua Tingting said she owned a company. But what caught my attention was that her face didn't quite match. She may be a strong woman, yes, indeed. But there was a pink aura on her cheekbone that connected directly to her life palace, which was related to her career. This means that her company didn't start from scratch, but was obtained through her body. Of course, after obtaining it, she was able to demonstrate her abilities and make the company successful. This is her true ability, so I said she is a strong woman, just that her methods are not quite right. I didn't look much into this, but there is a hidden danger in this matter, which means she may be discovered by the wife of that person, and may be intercepted somewhere, such as being beaten up. I was thinking whether I should remind her. After all, this is her privacy. When this woman saw me, there was a hint of surprise on her elegant face, as if she was very surprised that we could come over without a sound. Hua Tingting said a few words to her, expressing my analysis almost exactly as I had just said. She was once again surprised, looked at me deeply, hesitated for a moment, and stood up, Master, please sit. I waved my hand and said I was not a master. Hua Tingting introduced her friend as Kai Min. She asked me what I wanted to drink. In fact, I had never been to such a place, let alone had any coffee. I didn't know how to order, and Guo Tingting noticed, so she asked me if I wanted something sweet or bitter. I said sweet, so she ordered me a cup of honey pomelo tea. It came quickly, and I took a sip and found it very delicious. Then we got to the point. I looked at Kai Min, and I roughly knew what she wanted to ask for. She hesitated for a moment and said, Master, I have encountered some trouble recently. Can you please give me some guidance? I said I could. What she wanted to talk about was not related to her company, after all, she was a strong woman, and I could tell that at first glance. She wanted to talk about something else. The area of her forehead was a bit dark, indicating that she had encountered something. And this matter is a bit strange. I can only see this temporarily, the specific situation has to wait for her to say it herself. She paused and said, I, when I was bored last time, went out for a walk. When I got to a river, I saw someone fishing. I watched for a while, and when I was about to leave, I found something by the river, it was a scroll. I didn't see anyone, so I brought the scroll home. After cleaning it myself, I opened it and saw a dragon. She said, her eyes looked a bit fearful, and Guo Tingting, curious, asked my question, what kind of dragon? It's a dragon painted with a brush, an ancient painting, very beautifully done, vivid and lifelike. I didn't think much at the time, felt tired, and fell asleep. But when I woke up the next day, I found myself by the river. I was very scared, thought I was sleepwalking, went to the hospital, the doctor said there was no problem, so I believed and went home. But the next day when I was sleeping, I was sure I was at home, but when I woke up, I was by the river again. I was very scared, very afraid, felt like I was possessed, shouldn't have picked up that painting. Kaiman said, tears welling up. Guo Tingting didn't seem to believe it, and my face changed a bit. Actually, I can't solve this kind of thing, this is what Yang Chao and them are good at, after all, it's related to Yin and Yang. But hearing her say this, my curiosity was piqued, after all, from her appearance, there wasn't much darkness. I was thinking, how did she go out for the night? Why did she go to the river? I hesitated and asked, where is the painting? It's at my house. I tried to throw it far, far away, but it came back the next day, Kai Min said. Take me to see the painting first, but I can't guarantee I can solve it, after all, I'm just a fortune teller, I said. Okay, Kai Min breathed a sigh of relief. Her expression told me that she thought I was being modest, how could I be modest? I was helpless. The matter was roughly explained, I finished my tea, and with Guo Tingting, went to Kai Min's house, taking her car. It's more convenient. But on the way, I saw that her life palace was quite dark, indicating that what I had just seen from her face was about to happen, that person's wife was looking for someone to beat her. I hesitated and said, do you like apples? Kai Min was surprised, Guo Tingting was also puzzled, very curious how I suddenly said this. Ask me? Kai Min subconsciously pointed to herself, I nodded, she nodded, it's okay, I quite like them, I nodded, okay, a long time ago, I found an apple, without the owner's permission, I ate it myself, and left the seed of the apple. I planted the seed in the soil, the seed was good, it sprouted, grew, and bore fruit. When I took it to sell, 
The original owner found out that this apple was from her house and wanted to beat me. Put. Gui Ting Ting laughed, Master, you're quite humorous, telling jokes. After Kai Min was puzzled, she immediately slammed on the brakes and stopped. She turned to look at me deeply and asked urgently, What did you do then? I ran to the left when she was about to hit me, I said. Kai Min subconsciously looked ahead, her face didn't look too good. I could see from a distance that there was a car on this road, as if it was lying in wait. Kai Min hurriedly turned the steering wheel to the left, stepped on the gas to leave here. When we were close to her house, she asked me, Did that person chase after you? Not the first time, I said. Kaiman breathed a sigh of relief, drove directly into the residential area where she lived, she took us home, when we were in the elevator, she whispered a thank you to me, I didn't say anything. When I arrived at the floor, she opened the door and told me where the painting was. She dared not look, but Gui Ting Ting, unaware, picked up the scroll on the table and opened it. I immediately saw it, and my expression changed because the dragon in the painting was truly lifelike, as if it were alive. But what surprised me was that this dragon had no eyes. Seeing this dragon immediately reminded me of a story, the finishing touch. During the Liang dynasty, the painter Zhang Xingyao painted a lifelike dragon on the wall of the Annal Temple in Jinling, but the only flaw was that the dragon had no eyes. Without the finishing touch, when someone asked him why the dragon had no eyes, he said, once I add the eyes, it will fly away. Meaning that if he painted the eyes, the dragon on the wall would come to life and fly away from the wall. No one believed him, so Zhang Xingyao had no choice but to paint the eyes. Unexpectedly, as soon as the eyes were added, a storm broke out, and amidst thunder and lightning, the dragon on the wall truly came to life, breaking free from the wall and soaring away. Everyone was astonished. Whether this story is true or false, I cannot say for sure, as the dynasty is too distant. But it is truly miraculous. Could such a thing really happen? I find it unlikely, but this painting is the same. It lacks eyes, yet the rest of the dragon is so lifelike that it is truly remarkable. If it were paired with eyes, it would truly come to life. I stared at the empty dragon eye sockets. Could it be that once I add the eyes, the dragon in the painting will also come to life? Why doesn't this dragon have eyes? Wu Tingting was surprised and curious. I told her the story, but she shook her head in disbelief. It's impossible for such a miraculous thing to happen, right? I don't believe there are real dragons. Dragons are just imagined by our ancestors. Look at the deer head, snake body, and eagle claws, it's all just pieced together. It can't be real. I didn't know how to respond to that, as I've already seen the rabbit spirit and the rat spirit, so do dragons really exist? I can't be sure. But why do I keep appearing by the river? Kai Min was puzzled. I couldn't read much from her facial expression. This truly belongs to the realm of Yin and Yang. After hesitating for a moment, I said, take me to the river where you found this painting. Kai Min nodded. She asked me in a low voice, will I encounter them when I go out? Today, her facial expression didn't show it which means she won't encounter that person's wife. She breathed a sigh of relief and asked me how to resolve it. After hesitating for a moment, she took out a stack of cash from her bag and handed it to me, then looked at me expectantly. It seems that I had just hinted at her with the apple, and she completely understood. I subconsciously looked at the money she gave me and was stunned. There must be three or four thousand. I felt elated. She thought I found it too little, but I was secretly pleased. She handed me a little more, and I didn't refuse. After taking it, the second time she gave me 2,000. So, even without resolving the matter of the painting, I had already earned 7 or 8,000. Adding that to the 10,000 from yesterday, I am now a millionaire. However, this woman is very clever, which has its pros and cons. I was secretly delighted and said I needed to think about it. She breathed a sigh of relief, Ting Ting, are you going? Yes, of course I'm going. I've never seen such a miraculous thing before, Gui Ting Ting said, eager to go. So, without further delay, we went downstairs and Kai Min drove us to the river where she found the painting, with me holding the painting. But as we drove, I became puzzled, and even Guo Ting Ting was surprised. Min Min, why are you going to the master's house? That's right, she was going to my side, near the river. Did she find the painting near the river on my side? Isn't that too coincidental? I went to fetch river water today to cook glutinous rice porridge with the Dragon King's saliva. How could she have found something like this? I was surprised. Is that the master's house over there? Kai Min was surprised, apparently also surprised at the coincidence. Yes, my house is over there, I pointed in a direction, Kai Min glanced at it, seeming to remember, maybe she still needs to come and find me for something. We soon arrived at the place, there were some cars on the side of the road, there are many fish in our river, so some people drive over to fish. After Kai Min parked the car, the three of us got out, she led the way to where she found the painting. The place was nothing special, just a small winding path. 
It's right there, Kaimin pointed to a place, after I looked at it, I was puzzled. My family is over here, although there are few people who come to the riverside, I haven't heard of anyone else finding anything here. I didn't know how to solve it, so I just left it here. I figured it would go back to Kai Min's house the next day. She must have tried it and that's why she found someone to solve it, but I'm not very good at this. I could only say to let Guo Tingting call Yang Chao and ask him what to do, after all, he is a professional. Anyway, she remembered Yang Chao's number. Guo Tingting nodded, took out her phone and dialed, but said there was no answer. I asked her to try again, but it was the same. I was helpless. Could it be that Yang Chao is really doing something to my mother? I can't get through but I'll message him and tell him you're looking for him and ask him to call back, Hu Tingting said. I nodded, that's all I could do. I fell silent, Kai Min was a little anxious, but she didn't urge me, and I kept staring at her face, trying to see something. After looking for more than 10 minutes, I really saw a clue. Besides, did you have any dreams that would make you appear here the next day? I asked. She thought for a moment and shook her head, no, I don't remember anything when I wake up. There was a corresponding face in her life palace that matched this painting, but it was strange. Why did she say that? The area above her eyebrows was a bit asymmetrical, as if something was missing. In other words, she found this painting, and the reason she inexplicably came here the next day was that something was missing. In simpler terms, she didn't finish picking it up. There are other things in this place, complementary things. I said this, and Kai Min was surprised. I didn't see anything else at the time, otherwise I would have definitely picked it up together. That's true, but it's probably in this water, that is, in the water, she didn't see it at the time. If that's the case, then solving this matter definitely requires going into the water. I took off my shoes, rolled up my pants, revealing the wound. When they saw it, they were shocked and asked why it was oozing. They told me to go to the hospital. I only then noticed, and it was strange, why didn't I feel any better after drinking the glutinous rice porridge? Yang Chao said that, using river water to cook glutinous rice. I used river water, and I definitely cooked glutinous rice. This should not be wrong. Master, you should go to the hospital. I know someone, Huo Tingting said seriously. I shook my head. This kind of injury can't be treated in the hospital. I couldn't say it was corpse poison, I could only casually nod and say that I should ask Yang Chao carefully, which Link went wrong. I went directly into the water and felt around. The silt was deep, and I felt around for a long time and didn't find anything. Could it be that I miscalculated? Are there no other omissions? That's impossible. I continued to feel the riverbed. Kai Min asked if I had found anything. I shook my head, feeling a bit helpless, and prepared to go ashore. Suddenly, it felt like I stepped on something hard. I immediately reached out and felt, and grabbed a box from the silt. I washed it with river water. There were no words on it, but the box hadn't rotted, which was also surprising. I asked them to hold it, and I went ashore. Huo Tingting took it, and I walked out of the silt, washing my feet and hands by the river, putting on my shoes before walking over. Can you open it? It won't open, Huo Tingting said helplessly. I said that this should be the missing thing, and Kai Min might be able to open it, after all, she found it. Kai Min hesitated for a moment and then took it over. She carefully looked at it and it opened like a stationary box. Something fell to the ground. I immediately looked and was stunned because it was a golden brush. It was strange that the brush tip still had some black ink. What does this mean? Let Kai Min use the brush to draw eyes for this dragon and bring it to life? How could there be a brush? Oh, I see, it's for drawing eyes on that dragon. Min Min, hurry and draw, draw whatever, I want to see if drawing eyes on the dragon really works, Huo Tingting said excitedly. I also looked at Kai Min. This matter is a bit strange. Can it really bring the dragon to life by drawing eyes? I don't think there's anything so magical about it, right? After all, Kai Min is not someone who has studied painting to the extreme, comparable to the painter Zhang Sangyao, and even less a master of Taoism. She is just an ordinary person. How could it be possible to take a brush and draw eyes to bring this dragon to life? What if Kai Min draws some comical eyes, one big and one small, or even draws eyes without pupils? What's the difference between that and a blind person? As I looked at Kai Min, she seemed resistant and didn't want to touch the brush at all. Obviously, she had been tormented by this dragon in the painting for too long and was too scared. Oh, Min Min, hurry, pick up the brush and draw. Hua Tingting was really ignorant, still urging Kai Min. No, I'm afraid, Kai Min shook her head. Afraid of what? It's broad daylight, are you afraid of ghosts? That's the point. No matter how powerful the ghost is, it wouldn't dare to cause trouble in broad daylight. But this shouldn't belong to ghosts, right? I was puzzled. I opened the scroll again and the dragon hadn't changed, but those empty eye sockets looked particularly strange and awkward, as if they were waiting for someone to draw the eyes. I looked at Kai Min's face a few times. 
There wasn't much change in her face, there was certainly some darkness, but not much, indicating that the current situation wasn't very dangerous. But even so, I couldn't just draw the dragon's eyes recklessly. What if something strange happened? A cautious approach is needed. We have to wait for Yang Chao to call back. We can't rush this. Min Min, hurry, I'll take a picture for you, Guo Ting Ting urged, taking out her phone. Kai Min hesitated, biting her lip. But Guo Ting Ting kept urging her. Kai Min gritted her teeth and squatted down to pick up the brush from the ground. She walked towards me with trembling hands, as if she was determined to draw the eyes. She probably thought that if she drew the eyes, the problem would be solved and the painting wouldn't torment her anymore. I quickly stopped her, don't act recklessly. Kaiman nodded, and Guo Ting Ting was a little disappointed, muttering under her breath, it's fine in broad daylight. Still, be careful. Let's wait for my friend's call first, I said. Okay, I'll go over there and watch others fishing. Guo Ting Ting went to watch others fishing not far away, probably afraid of getting bored. She left, and Kaiman came over and asked me how to solve her problem. I thought about it. Her problem was actually not easy to solve. After all, she really slept with someone else's husband, which led to her current company. It's wrong to say that she's at fault, but it takes two to tango. So, after pondering for a while, I said, you might as well leave here. After all, you've made quite a bit of money from the company and can start another company elsewhere. After all, you are still very capable. I said this, and Kai Min said, hmm, I'll think about it myself. She fell silent, and of course, I didn't say anything more. But looking at her face, she still seemed hesitant. I stopped there and let her think it over. Next, continue to wait. It was already afternoon, and as we waited, the sun was about to set. It was getting dark, and the situation was becoming more difficult to resolve. I saw Guo Ting Ting watching others fishing with great interest, completely forgetting about the time. I had to walk over and ask her if Yang Chao had returned her call. She shook her head and said, No, I've been paying attention the whole time. I told her to continue calling Yang Chao. Guo Ting Ting took out her phone and dialed, but the call went unanswered. No one picked up. I told her to keep trying or else I wouldn't be able to resolve the situation once it got dark. Okay, Guo Ting Ting nodded and said it was no problem. She continued to call. I looked down at my ankle, feeling a slight pain. I didn't need to look to know that the lack of relief was becoming more severe. I had followed Yang Chao's instructions exactly. Boiling glutinous rice in river water, where did I go wrong? As I wondered, I suddenly exclaimed, Kai Min, what are you doing? Put that down. I saw Kai Min holding a brush, painting eyes as if possessed. I hurried over, realizing the situation was bad. She had already painted one eye and was about to paint the other. The eye she had painted was ordinary, but it had a strange and piercing quality that shocked me. Could she really bring life to her paintings? It couldn't be possible, right? I rushed over and grabbed her hand, asking, Kai Min, what are you doing? Kai Min was strong and pushed me away with a kick. I was in pain and shuddered as I got up. Kai Min's eyes were slightly bloodshot. Was she really possessed? I was anxious. As a fortune teller, I knew how to deal with possession, but I didn't have the power. If Xiangqi appeared in my body, I could use it to counter the possession. Unfortunately, I didn't have that ability. This is bad. The sun has already set, I rushed over. Guo Tingting -ting was right. Ghosts didn't come out in broad daylight, but they did at night. Kai Min stared at me with bloodshot eyes. As a grown man, I couldn't let her overpower me, so I ran over and grabbed her hand, determined not to let her paint the other eye. Kai Min struggled wildly her strength astonishing after being possessed. She broke free and prepared to continue painting. I couldn't let her do that, so I ran over again. Oh, the call went through. What are you two doing? Why are you fighting? Hello, master, Guo Ting Ting ran over, thinking I was fighting Kai Min. She was angry and pulled me away. Master, why are you hitting my friend? Get away, I pushed her aside. She still held on to me, and Kai Min took the opportunity to kick me. I doubled over in pain feeling like I was about to pass out. Kai Min was wearing high heels, and that kick nearly pierced my stomach. Min Min, you. Ah. Guo Ting Ting was shocked and shivered. Min Min, why are your eyes so red? Are you really possessed? Guo Ting Ting's face turned pale, and with a snap, she dropped her phone. I could faintly hear a voice from the phone, hello, hello. Kai Min ignored her and continued to paint. I got up, grabbed the phone from Guo Ting Ting, and asked, Yang Chao, a woman has been possessed. What should I do? I was relieved to hear Yang Chao's surprised voice, but he immediately became serious. Are you sure she's possessed? I confirmed. When possessed, a person is usually shadowed. They have two shadows. Check if she has two shadows. I didn't have time for that. I rushed over and grabbed the brush in Kai Min's hand with my other hand. 
Kaimin stared at me, one hand squeezing my neck with such force that I instantly felt suffocated. I coughed and, from the corner of my eye, saw that it was already dark outside. But I could still vaguely make out Kaimin's shadow. If my neck hadn't been squeezed, I would have screamed long ago because I really saw two shadows. One was Kaimin's, and the other was actually a man's shadow. Their body shapes were completely different, easily distinguishable at a glance. Kaimin's shadow didn't move, but it was the man's shadow that was squeezing me with his hand. This eerie scene made my hair stand on end. In an instant, I was filled with suspicion. Who was this shadow? When did it attach to Kai Min? What did he want to do? I coughed violently. Li Chen, do you see it? My phone had already fallen to the ground, and I felt my vision darkening. I coughed, I see it. You are a fortune teller, and you have some spiritual energy in your body. So, bite your middle finger and point it at her forehead, quickly. Yang Chao seemed to hear the discomfort in my voice and urged me anxiously. I struggled to put my finger in my mouth. The force made it impossible for me to bite through my finger. I used all my strength and finally managed to draw blood. The slightly sweet blood gave me a moment of clarity. I opened my eyes, raised my bleeding middle finger, and pointed it at Kai Min's reddened eyes. I exerted all my strength and pointed it at her forehead. I heard a scream as I hit Kai Min's forehead. I vaguely saw the figure attached to Kai Min's shadow separating from her as if repelled by a force of the same polarity. Kai Min's eyes closed, and she fainted, her hand loosening its grip and falling limply to the ground. Cough, cough, cough. I coughed violently, covering my neck with both hands. It was at that moment that I realized how fresh the air was. If I had been delayed any longer, I would have been strangled by that ghost. I shuddered and picked up the phone from the ground. But when I saw the blurry figure that had been forced out, it immediately went towards the already stunned Guo Tingting, floating away. This really shocked me. I had almost been strangled just now. If this ghost possessed Guo Tingting, I would really die here this time. I didn't have time to breathe fresh air and hurried over to Guo Tingting. I didn't need Yang Chao to tell me what to do this time. As a fortune teller, I knew very well that a person's life palace could be sealed. As long as I sealed her life palace, the ghost would definitely not be able to possess Guo Tingting. But this ghost was too fast, floating as if it were entering water, and it immediately entered Guo Tingting's body, attaching itself to her shadow. Now she had two shadows. Guo Tingting shuddered, her face already pale, standing in place at a loss. This was bad. I instantly felt that something was wrong. My heart sank to the bottom of a valley. This ghost must have been prepared. I couldn't use the trick of pricking her forehead with my bloodied middle finger again. What should I do? Just as I was in a panic, a surprising scene unfolded. I saw the terrified Guo Tingting trembling in place, and behind her shadow, the ghost was actually clinging to it as if it couldn't possess her. This scene left me stunned. What was going on? Why couldn't the ghost possess Guo Tingting? Suddenly, a figure ran out from Guo Tingting. I couldn't see his face, but he was angrily cursing, saying something about being really unlucky. I didn't quite understand what he meant, but Guo Tingting hadn't been possessed, which was a relief for me. I hurried over and pulled her behind me without hesitation. I sealed my own life palace by pricking my own forehead, or else if he possessed me, it would really be a disaster. The shadow was floating around us, and when it couldn't get to us, it stopped, staring at us like a tiger eyeing its prey. I breathed a sigh of relief. I managed to get the ghost out. What should I do now? I asked Yang Chao anxiously. I can hear you. Where are you? I'm by the river near my house, I replied. Okay, don't do anything, just wait. The call ended, leaving me puzzled. Was Yang Chao nearby? Ghosts, there really are ghosts, Wu Tingting said fearfully. It was just trying to possess me. Her words puzzled me even more. The ghost had successfully possessed Kai Min, so why couldn't it possess Guo Tingting? When I asked her why, she shook her head. I don't know, but my body felt very cold just now. It seemed like I wouldn't get any answers from her, so I had to wait for Yang Chao to arrive and ask him. The ghost slowly approached us, making Guo Tingting shiver in fear. Quick, kill it, she urged. I had the ability, so why was I just standing there? I shook my head. The ghost became increasingly agitated, pacing back and forth. I saw it trying to reclaim the painting and brush. There was no way I would let it do that. I immediately grabbed the items. It became even more agitated, its voice piercing and unbearable. I ignored it, trying to figure out what was happening. It paced restlessly, suddenly let out a scream, and jumped into the nearby river without making a splash, disappearing without a trace. I heard the sound of a car approaching, and soon saw a figure running towards us at an incredible speed. When I recognized the person, I breathed a sigh of relief. Yang Chao had arrived. He coldly glanced at the spot where the ghost had jumped into the water, then walked over to me. What's going on? 
I briefly explained the situation, and Yang Chao looked surprised. He took the painting and brush from me and examined them closely. Guo Tingting was tending to the unconscious Kai Min. Her courage was commendable. If a dragon had actually emerged from the painting, she would have been terrified and unable to take any photos. People are naturally afraid of things they've never seen before. I asked what was going on. Yang Chao noticed that one eye had been painted, but the other was not. He let out a heavy sigh of relief. Did his expression mean that if Kai Min had painted the other eye, a dragon would have actually emerged? I asked instinctively, and Yang Chao glanced at me. The legend of painting the dragon's eye is indeed true. However, when Zhang Sengyao painted the dragon, he didn't use ordinary ink, but ink mixed with dragon blood. The wall was also not an ordinary wall, but one with dragon energy, meaning it was built near a dragon vein. These are not the most important factors, the most crucial one is the brush. It was a divine brush. Without these conditions, it would have been impossible for the dragon to come to life after the eye was painted. His words left me in awe. Could it really be true that painting the dragon's eye was so demanding? Did it really require a divine brush and dragon blood? Did it mean that after killing a dragon, one could paint a dragon to life? After the dragon came to life, it wasn't a divine dragon, but a stone dragon. In simpler terms, it was a dragon made of stone. It's said that this stone dragon transformed into a dragon vein, but no one knows its exact location, Yang Chao continued. I was amazed by what I heard. Perhaps after the dragon came to life, it was afraid of being captured and found a place to hide. I hurriedly asked, what about this painting? It was clear that it didn't meet the conditions he had just mentioned, after all, it was just a piece of paper. This is far from it. It's a human dragon, Yang Chao said. A human dragon? When I asked subconsciously, Guo Tingting couldn't help but interrupt, what is a human dragon? The supreme among men, that is the human dragon. In ancient times, emperors were human dragons, while empresses were human phoenixes, Yang Chao said. I nodded in realization. The figure in this painting is probably an ancient emperor. As for which one, I'm not quite sure. But based on the pigments, materials, and painting technique, it should be an emperor from the Ming dynasty. However, if the other eye had been painted just now, although it wouldn't have caused a miraculous appearance of a real dragon from the painting, in a certain sense, it would have been similar. A human dragon would have emerged, that is, the emperor would have appeared, Yang Chao said slowly, his tone becoming particularly solemn. I was astonished. Could it be that the ghost just now was a subordinate of this human dragon? Probably. The human dragon is the king among men, a one in a million existence. If the soul comes alive, not to mention you, even if I were to encounter it, I would only have a chance to escape with my life, Yang Chao said. So powerful? Guo Tingting was amazed. I was also surprised. Yang Chao's strength was formidable, and yet he said this. Indeed, do I need to say more about the existence of an emperor? I've heard that each emperor is appointed from above, which means the emperor has the backing of the heavens. Fighting against such a person is seeking death, Yang Chao said, and I understood. Since they are appointed by the heavens, why were there so many emperors in history? Guo Tingting couldn't help but ask. Simple, lifespan. Human lifespan is limited, so there must be changes. Secondly, each emperor's mission is different. After all, being appointed by the heavens, how could there be no mission? Do you think emperors are just playing around? Yang Chao's words left me dumbfounded. Guo Tingting was also puzzled. Yang Chao stared at the painting in his hand. I asked him if he wanted to finish it and he hesitated before shaking his head. I'm afraid not, he said, lost in thought, while also staring at the river in the distance. I couldn't help but mention the incident of the figure that couldn't be seen on Guo Tingting just now. Yang Chao glanced at Guo Tingting and then said to me, you better not ask about this matter. It's a woman's affair. Yang Chao suddenly said this, leaving me stunned, while Guo Tingting's face instantly turned red, as if what Yang Chao said had made her extremely embarrassed. I gave her a strange look, and she lowered her head in embarrassment. I saw Yang Chao walk to the side, and of course, I followed. At this moment, Yang Chao was staring at the water's surface. What surprised me was that in the river, that figure appeared again in a strange manner, showing half of his body. He seemed more agitated, constantly splashing the water with his hands, creating splashes. The sky had already turned completely dark, and if others saw the scene, they might be scared witless. However, Yang Chao remained expressionless. If this figure wasn't the emperor, then he certainly had nothing to fear. He just looked at him and said, why did you make this human dragon appear? The figure suddenly fell silent and also calmed down. I saw him hesitate and as he approached, I finally saw his face, which left me stunned. The first thing I noticed was that his face was very delicate. Why do I say this? After all, it's rare to describe a man as delicate and I didn't say this on purpose. It's because his eyebrows were very long and thin, his lips were slightly pursed 
and he didn't have a single strand of beard on his chin. In addition, his eunuch's palace seemed as empty as if it had been cut off. What does that mean? It means that he was a eunuch by the emperor's side. So, the eunuch's palace representing descendants would be so strange. After all, being castrated, how could there be any descendants? In fact, although some men have not been castrated, their facial features are similar to those of this eunuch, indicating severe kidney deficiency. I have seen many men with such facial features, more or less, but I generally wouldn't mention such things. After this ghost came over, there was even more hesitation on his face, but his eyes were fixed on the painting and brush in Yang Chao's hand. You didn't harm that woman, you just brought her to the riverbank, which shows that you're not entirely bad. If you explain this matter clearly, I can consider letting you off the hook, Yang Chao said. The ghost hesitated as if considering something. Yang Chao stared at him, while I continued to observe his expression. Soon, I was surprised. Yang Chao noticed my expression and immediately asked, What did you notice? I slowly said, His expression is very strange. Strange because he's a eunuch? Yang Chao also noticed this point. This can actually be roughly inferred from his expression, as his demeanor is somewhat coquettish, and since he is an ancient person, it's natural for people to think in that direction. I shook my head, no, in his expression, there is a brightness in the position of the life palace, which is the official and wealth palace. As the name suggests, the official and wealth palace governs our career and wealth fortune. His is still abundant, smooth, and broad, indicating that he still has an official career. Are you mistaken? He is a eunuch, and the emperor died many years ago. Who would give him an official position? Yang Chao was puzzled. This was also the strange point for me. Logically, if the emperor is no more, where would he get his official fortune? It's like a shop or company closing down, where would the employees go? It's the same principle, but I was sure I hadn't made a mistake. However, when I said this, he glanced at me, somewhat surprised that I could discern this point. But he shook his head and respectfully said, my official fortune was bestowed by the emperor. As he said this, I also noticed that there was a bit of life energy in his life palace that didn't belong to him, and this life energy was somewhat golden, representing the dragon. And indeed, he wasn't lying, his official fortune was connected to this life energy representing the dragon. So how could the dragon in this painting bestow him with an official fortune? I was suddenly puzzled and curiously asked Yang Chao, in ancient times, the emperors were appointed. So after these emperors died, would they directly reincarnate, or would they have other tasks to do? Reincarnation is possible, and in any case, they would be born into wealth and power. Some emperors would choose this path, while others would continue to serve in the mortal or immortal realms. It depends on their own decisions, and there are also the underworld and other options. As Yang Chao spoke, he subconsciously glanced at the painting in his hand again, and I was intrigued by his expression. Could it be that the dragon was serving in the mortal realm, which is why he could continue to bestow official fortune upon his eunuch? After all, this eunuch was following this dragon, and as the saying goes, a rising tide lifts all boats. But if he was serving, how could he be in this painting? What position does he hold? Yang Chao asked. The local city god, he said. I was suddenly shocked. A former emperor serving as a local city god? Isn't that a waste of talent? After all, a city god is just a 7th or 8th rank official. Yang Chao was also surprised. Are you not lying? He shook his head, and I also said, no, because there were no signs of lying in his expression. This is a bit strange. This place is not particularly special, which means it cannot accommodate a great deity. How could? Yang Chao couldn't understand, and I became even more puzzled. Could it be that this place has some special characteristics that we don't know about, which is why a former emperor is serving as a city god? It's possible, but even if he is a city god, he would still be under the jurisdiction of the underworld. Who would dare to seal this city god in a painting? He didn't speak, and I asked Yang Chao what the city god manages. He said, the deceased within a certain area. I understood. Since this dragon is the city god, it's urgent to awaken him. However, Yang Chao stared at him, why are you so eager to awaken the city god? He hesitated, this matter is of great importance, I, I can't say. Yang Chao glanced at me, and I nodded immediately, continuing to observe his expression. Soon, I was shocked, you, you. There were signs of damage to his official luck in his life palace, which I hadn't noticed before, indicating that he had made a mistake. It was also this mistake that the dragon had made, so he didn't want to speak out. But I could tell that this mistake was significant, and someone important had died. When I said this, he immediately lied and urged me not to speak, not to speak, even fearlessly walking away, telling me not to say anything. Yang Chao was surprised, someone died, who died? He shook his head and didn't want to say. Yang Chao asked me, can you tell who died? I remained silent for a moment and said, this mistake is significant, 
directly affecting his official luck, which means that in the area managed by this Cheng Huang, someone important suddenly died. Someone important? Yang Chao muttered to himself. He walked to the riverbank, and the ghost told Yang Chao not to speculate. Yang Chao glanced at him and suddenly thought of something, staring fixedly at the river. The ghost immediately lied, don't look, don't look. Such a big deal? You have quite the nerve. Yang Chao suddenly snorted and took out three sticks of incense, lit them directly, and inserted them into the ground. Then he poured a cup of wine, directly spilling it on the ground. A strange scene appeared, although it was clearly by the river, it was definitely damp, but the wine did not seep into the ground, as if it were rolling around on the damp ground like a glass ball. Soon, all three sticks of incense went out, and the ghost trembled in fear. Yang Chao's expression was grim and unpredictable. Under his changing mood, he thought of something again and walked in front of me, Did you cook glutinous rice porridge? I did, I said. Did you use the river water here? He asked, quite normal, after all, the river was closest to my house. Did he want me to go dozens of kilometers to another place to fetch river water? I nodded and said yes. He squatted down, pulled up my trouser leg, and I immediately twitched at the corner of my mouth because the wound was getting more and more severe. I had forgotten about the numbness. I hurriedly asked what was going on. I wanted to ask him clearly why, following his instructions, I cooked glutinous rice with river water and even ate it, but there was no effect, and it was getting worse. I couldn't help but ask, because. This river water has turned dead, Yang Chao said slowly, staring at the riverbank. The river water turned dead? This shocked me immediately. What did that mean? How could the river water turn dead? Did Yang Chao mean that the river water was not flowing, that is, some place was blocked, so it turned into dead water? I immediately rejected this idea. No, because just now, from the eunuch's expression, I saw that the emperor he served, the local Chang Huang, had a major incident, and an important person had died. So, it was the river god in this river who had died, so it turned into dead water? When I said this, the eunuch hesitated, as if the truth couldn't be concealed any longer, and suddenly became dejected. It seemed that I was right, the river god in this river had died. Even though I had lived near this river for more than 10 years, I didn't know who the river god was, let alone how, as the river god, he could die. What's going on? How could the river god die? Yang Chao asked. The eunuch remained silent, only staring at the brush and painting in Yang Chao's hand. It seemed that he didn't want to speak out and wanted to solve the problem of the river god's death before being discovered by others. I wondered if the death of the river god was related to the emperor, that is, the Cheng Huang. There is no river god in the river god. There may not be any problems in the short term, but over time, issues will arise. The most obvious sign is that the river water will turn yellow, turn green. Yang Chao said, turn yellow? Then does that mean the yellow river has no river god? I couldn't help but ask, after all, the water of the yellow river is indeed yellow. Yang Chao looked at me and shook his head, of course not, how could such a big river not have a river god? The reason the river water turns yellow is because, forget it, we can talk about it when we have the chance. I felt helpless instantly. I guessed it might be related to geology, but now Yang Chao's expression told me it probably wasn't. Yang Chao continued, the river god of this river must have died not long ago, and the problem has not yet been exposed. Do you want to solve it yourselves, or should we seal a new river god? The eunuch still did not speak. Yang Chao looked at the drawing in his hand and said, well, if you don't want to talk about it, that's fine, but you should handle it as soon as possible. There cannot be no river god in the river water. You should understand this. I asked why. After all, there are large and small rivers, and many of them are small. Are there river gods in those small waterways too? Yang Chao said, yes, except for the very small ones, basically all the others have them, especially the Yangtze River and the Yellow River. Because the river water needs to be alive, without the guidance of the river god, the river water will become stagnant. If it becomes stagnant, it means the river will disappear, which is very serious. I suddenly realized. Yang Chao did not intervene, which made the eunuch breathe a sigh of relief. He pointed at the drawing in Yang Chao's hand. Yang Chao nodded. He asked me to wake up Kai Min and let her finish drawing the last eye, so that the dragon could come to life. After all, this was not just an emperor, but the local city god. Of course, I did as I was told. Together with Guo Tingting, we woke up Kai Min, but she seemed to be possessed, and perhaps something had been sucked out of her body, causing her not to wake up. Yang Chao noticed this and muttered some words then pointed at Kai Min's forehead with his finger. Soon, Kai Min's eyelashes moved, probably due to some kind of spell. She opened her eyes, looking a bit dazed at first, then suddenly realizing something, a look of fear appearing on her face. Guo Tingting and I hurriedly comforted her, telling her that everything was fine, and after a while, 
we urged her to continue drawing the other eye. Kaiman hesitated for a long time before tremblingly doing as she was told. We stared intently as Kaiman finished drawing the other eye, and the dragon in the drawing became even more vivid and mysterious. Slowly, some white smoke emerged from the drawing, and the dragon on top seemed to slowly disappear like ink meeting water. Within the white smoke, a figure appeared, not a dragon, but the shadow of a man in his fifties or sixties, with a dragon-like appearance. It was indeed the former supreme ruler. After seeing this, Kai Min was so frightened that she fainted again. Huo Tingting's face turned pale, and Yang Chao, with an expressionless face, walked over and said something to the city god. The city god nodded slightly and glanced at me intentionally or unintentionally, which made me very curious. At this point, it was not appropriate to ask, so I pretended not to have seen it. But I was even more curious. What was there in our place that attracted an emperor to come and be the city god? A few minutes later, the city god and his eunuch left, and Yang Chao's eyes flickered as he watched them leave. He came over and without him saying anything, I roughly understood what he meant. He was probably reminding me that the city god would come looking for me. Sure enough, Yang Chao said, this matter is not easy to resolve. He may come looking for you. I nodded and said it was okay, as I had already figured that out, and there was no need to pretend to be ignorant. Next, Kai Min was still unconscious, and Guo Tingting was very worried, asking if we should take her to the hospital. Yang Chao said it was unnecessary and took out a yellow talisman, saying to burn it to ashes, drink it, and she would be fine after sleeping for a night. Guo Tingting nodded and took the yellow talisman. I helped lift Kai Min into her car. In this situation, only she could drive. She said, after Min Min wakes up, I will have her give you the money for this time. I said no problem, this matter was resolved by Yang Chao this time. Just give the money to him. Anyway, Kai Min has already given me 7,000 yuan, and I have earned enough. Guo Tingting drove Kai Min back, and since this place was near my home, I naturally said I was going home to rest. I asked Yang Chao to go to my house, and he nodded. When we got on the embankment, I found that he was driving an old pickup truck. He asked me to get in and drove back home. I squeezed out some pus from my leg and asked him what to do. He said to go to another place to boil river water. Helpless, I could only go out on an electric bike in the morning. This was related to my life, and I couldn't be careless. I gave him a place to sleep and fed the white rabbit carrots. Then I went back to my room to sleep. However, Yang Chao reminded me, you need to practice breathing and meditation, otherwise your strength will never improve. I knew this. Breathing and meditation can enhance the internal energy. As the saying goes, a rising tide lifts all boats. If my internal energy improves, then my fortune-telling skills will become more powerful, and I can predict more things. Of course, I was quite depressed. Maybe I was too lazy. I had only just become a level 1 fortune-teller. But you should know that the most powerful fortune-teller is at level 10. That kind of fortune-teller can predict the heavens, the earth, the past, the future, and even the gods but this level seemed out of reach. I didn't dare to hope, but I would start working hard now. I went back to my room to sleep, and nothing happened that night. In the morning, I went to another riverbank to fetch water. When I came back, I cooked glutinous rice porridge. Yang Chao came over and asked me awkwardly when my mother would return. I didn't know, but his question made me even more curious. What exactly did he promise the ghost king in the ghost cave? I asked him, but he was reluctant to answer. I felt even more helpless. I ate the glutinous rice porridge and said I was going to the city to buy a phone. Yang Chao nodded and said he would drive me there. I didn't object. When we arrived in the city, we looked around and finally found a phone within my budget. I also bought a SIM card for 400 yuan. Yang Chao asked me to top up more, saying that I would be very busy with business later. I gritted my teeth and topped up 300 yuan. At noon, we had a meal together, and in total, we spent 800 yuan on the phone. It was acceptable. In the afternoon, we returned. Maybe it was the first time I had a phone, so I was excited and spent some time figuring it out. Yang Chao asked me to apply for a WeChat account, and I did. I added him on WeChat. This was also the first time I had done this. After some research, I was almost done and put down the phone to focus on my business. However, with my mother not around, fewer people came over, which made me quite helpless. Just when I was getting anxious, my phone suddenly beeped. I saw it was a friend request on WeChat. I hesitated for a moment and accepted it. She sent me a smiling face and said, Master, let's keep in touch in the future. I agreed and was planning to ask her to introduce some business to me. We didn't have any other topics to chat about, so I put down my phone. When I was about to close the door, two people walked in. One was wearing a yellow ancient costume, and the other had a coquettish look on his face. It was the local city god and his eunuch. I had predicted it right. They had indeed come to find me, 
but I didn't expect it to be so soon. It hadn't even been a day, and they were already here. It seemed that they had encountered some trouble in solving the death of the river god. I stood up and invited them to sit down. Yang Chao had gone out in the afternoon, saying he had something to do and would be back in the evening. He was very busy with his business. I poured them some water, but then I remembered that they were ghosts. How could they drink human water? However, the eunuch brought something with him, it seemed to be ashes from a pot. I spilled a little in the teacup, the tea turned a bit dark, but the city god picked it up and took a sip, actually drinking the tea and seeming to enjoy it. I was surprised to see him enjoying the tea, considering it was only a 10 yuan per pound tea. However, I didn't ask much. I directly asked them what they wanted to settle. The current solution should be to find a replacement, a new river god, to revive the river. Then the matter won't be exposed. The city god was silent, and I naturally followed his lead, not urging him. He is the city god, and also a dragon in human form. I can hardly tell from looking at him, but his eunuch, who is much weaker than him in strength, can I see something from his face again? Just as I was about to do so, the city god sighed and finally spoke, the death of the river god, well, the matter has already happened, so we can only find a new river god. Do you have any suggestions? Suggestions? Actually, I don't have much to suggest. Firstly, the river god can't be just anyone, right? It must be an accomplished spirit. As a local city god, he should know better than me how many accomplished spirits there are. In other words, he can directly select from this group of accomplished spirits, after all, he used to be an emperor, and this is also a kind of appointment, something he is adept at. As I said this, he shook his head, if only it were that simple. The river is too small, and there is only one accomplished spirit, the dead one. I understood what he meant. There are no other spirits in the river that can become accomplished. This is also true, the river is not very big, so how could there be other things that can become accomplished? It's like a small company can only support one general manager. But he continued, calculate for me, well, in your situation, only a divination can help. I said. He seemed to know I would say that, nodded, thought for a moment, and then pointed to the tea, writing a character on the table, the character for time. He was asking how long it would take. I was silent for a moment and suddenly surprised. The city god's face changed, what's wrong? Even the eunuch standing next to him was nervous. After all, if the matter of the river god is not resolved before it is exposed, they will also be implicated. I was particularly suspicious, I didn't know if I should say it, because what the character had divined was beyond my expectations. What did you divine? The city god asked me. I was silent for a long time, and he didn't urge me. In the end, I said, you just have to wait. Wait? The city god was surprised, and even his eunuch was surprised. Yes. How long do I have to wait? He asked. Just a few days, I said. The city god looked deeply at me, nodded, okay, shall we, take the money. The city god stood up, and his eunuch took out a jade pendant from his sleeve, this is for you, take it. The city god left with his eunuch, and I looked at the gold without a happy expression, but rather restless. I don't know how long it was, but Yang Chao came back in the car. After he came in, he sniffed and said, oh, the city god came so quickly? I nodded. What did you divine for him? Li Chen, what's wrong with you? Why aren't you speaking? Yang Chao was curious. I hesitated and said, I know someone I don't know is going to die. Should I go save them or not? What do you mean? Yang Chao was puzzled. I asked him to answer my question, and after a moment of silence, Yang Chao said, a person should have a conscience, but it depends on how you define that conscience. If it's a destined death, then I won't interfere, because it's useless to interfere. But if there's a chance, then it depends on the situation. Does the person you're talking about have a chance? I shook my head and told him what had happened. The time that Cheng Huang wrote just now is still there. I just analyzed it by breaking down the characters. This time can be broken down into sun and inch. First of all, when Cheng Huang wrote this time, he wrote it in the opposite direction, not following the normal strokes. He first wrote an inch and then wrote sun. If an ordinary person writes like this, they may not think much of it, thinking it's just a habit issue. But in the eyes of us fortune tellers, it's different. Inches in front of sun, indicating that this time is reversed. Sun is daytime, so if it's reversed, it means it's nighttime. This is the first point, the time is at night. The second point is that this time belongs to the metal element in the five elements, but Cheng Huang is looking for the new river god, which is related to water. So according to the generation and restriction of the five elements, metal generates water. What does this mean? It means that the new river god emerges from the river. But Cheng Huang just said that there are no spiritual beings in the river. If there are no spiritual beings, where does the new river god come from? Isn't this contradictory? I just thought so, but as I continued to analyze, I felt a chill because overall, 
it means that it will appear at night, sun, inch, a day's inch, doesn't that mean tonight? But there are no spiritual beings in the river, so there is only one possibility, that someone will die in the river tonight and become the new river god in spirit. I said all of this, and Yang Chao was surprised, is it true? I nodded and said it's true, the analysis is correct. Yang Chao hesitated, so that's why you're so conflicted? Yes. According to the strokes of time, this person should only be 17 years old, and she's a girl, I said. Yang Chao hesitated, if it's really as you said, then we don't need to intervene, because what's destined will happen. It's a great fortune to become the river god. But it's very strange, how can someone who just died become the river god? This is unprecedented. After all, the soul of a newly deceased person is very weak. Could this girl be a bit unusual? Forget it, it's none of our business. Remember, since it's tonight, you shouldn't go, and I won't go either. I sighed and nodded. I hesitated for a moment, walked to the front door, looked towards the river, and then closed the door after a moment of silence. Yang Chao continued to sleep on the floor, as if he was waiting for my mother to come back. I didn't ask much, fed the white rabbit some carrots, took a shower, and went to bed. I didn't sleep well that night. Maybe a trip to the past can save someone. I fell asleep in a daze, not knowing how long it had passed. Suddenly, I felt my neck being tightly choked. I panicked and tried to open my eyes, but the hand was choking me so hard that my eyes went black, and I could only see a disheveled person on top of me, choking me fiercely. Why didn't you save me? Why didn't you save me? I was shocked and asked with difficulty, Who are you? I'm the person you saw dying and didn't save. The person continued to choke me, almost killing me. Phew! I suddenly woke up, subconsciously touched my neck, nothing happened, I was already soaked through. It turned out to be a dream. Who was the girl who came to me just now? Has she already died in the river? I thought so, and couldn't sleep at all. I tossed and turned, and finally it was dawn. I put on my clothes and opened the door, and saw someone passing by my house, saying how tragic it was that someone drowned in the river, and they were going to see the commotion. I hurried to the main hall, woke up Yang Chao, he opened his eyes in a daze and asked me what was going on. I said that the girl really died, and Yang Chao suddenly lost his sleepiness, got up and said, let's go, let's go see. I nodded, pushed the electric bike out, closed the door, and then took Yang Chao to the riverside. Sure enough, when we arrived at the riverside, people from our village and nearby villages were watching the commotion. I quickly parked the electric bike and squeezed into the crowd with Yang Chao. From a distance, I saw a person floating in the muddy river, motionless and disheveled, indeed a girl. After seeing the body floating in the river, Yang Chao and I exchanged glances without saying a word. Someone had already reported to the police, and soon the police arrived, setting up a cordon. The police went into the water, dragged the female corpse to the shore, and began to examine and collect evidence on the spot, trying to figure out how she died. From the police's expression at the scene, I could tell that their initial speculation was that it was an accidental death. This was similar to what I had thought. The police began to question and visit, asking the nearby village heads to come and identify the girl's family. It seemed that the girl did not have any identification or student cards on her, so they had to ask others. However, there was no result. I overheard the village head from the next village passing by, saying how unfortunate it was that such a beautiful girl had drowned, expressing regret. If I had gone over and seen the girl's face, I could have told where she lived, how many people were in her family, and even her name, based on her appearance and palmistry. However, the police would definitely not believe me, and might even suspect me, since I was too proactive. So I thought it was better not to go, to avoid trouble. Let's go, Yang Chao said. I hesitated for a moment, nodded, and went home with Yang Chao. Of course, I was not in a good mood. After all, if I had gone last night, I might have been able to save her. When we returned, I asked Yang Chao if the girl's soul had left her body. He said it had, and he had just felt something underwater. He asked if I had felt it, but I shook my head. My senses were not as sharp as his. Yang Chao continued to stay at my house, while I opened the door to do business. Several days passed, and the matter of the girl drowning gradually faded away. After all, they didn't know her, so they would only express regret over it during casual conversations, but that wouldn't last long. I also gradually calmed down from the incident. I heard from people in the village that the girl had been taken to the morgue. Whether any relatives had come to claim the body in these days, no one knew, because no one was paying attention. Everyone has their own fate, and it's best to get used to it. As for when this girl would become the new river god, I wasn't too sure. Perhaps due to psychological reasons, I hadn't gone to the river these days to boil glutinous rice porridge to clear the corpse poison. I hadn't even passed by, but instead went to another river early in the morning to fetch water. I didn't know anything about what was happening over there. However, Yang Chao seemed more anxious these days, 
constantly asking when my mother would return. How would I know? But it had been a long time since she left this time. I didn't know if she had brought back the hand that had broken the mountain god's seal. I estimated that she probably hadn't. But there was also something strange. The village head had returned from the hospital, but he had been loitering outside my house. When I asked him to come in, he ran away, not daring to enter my house. It seemed that he had been traumatized by the incident with the female corpse last time. However, the village head was still quite peculiar. I thought I should go to his house and ask him about it sometime. Of course, on the third day, Kaiman came and brought money, giving Yang Chao a red envelope. I also received one. When I opened it, I found 3,000 yuan. I didn't know how much Yang Chao got. I had nearly 20,000 in my hand, and on the same day, I had Yang Chao take me to the city to get a card. I excitedly deposited the money mainly to save up and see if I could spend it to redeem the female corpse from the hands of the person behind the paper figure. Maybe 500,000? 1 million? 2 million? I don't know, but for someone like that, how could tens of thousands matter? It must be the more, the better, after all, I definitely need to see that female corpse because she knows about my background. Anyway, I need to earn more money. Let's set a smaller goal first, like earning 3 to 5 million from him, and then I'll go see that person. I should have more confidence by then. Of course, the city god gave me antique gold, and I couldn't bear to sell it. It's probably worth a lot. I'll keep it for now and sell it when I really need the money. While I was thinking this, I received a message on WeChat. I hadn't added many people, just a few clients who had their fortunes told by me in the past few days. They said they could ask me on WeChat if they had any questions. I curiously opened the message and found it was from Guo Tingting. She asked if I was at home, and I said yes. She said she would come over to see me. I asked if she wanted her fortune told, and she said it was something like that. What did something like that mean? I could only say okay. After all, she was coming to give me money, so why would I be unwilling? In the afternoon, Gui Tingting drove over. She was still as fashionable as before, with long legs and fair skin. As soon as she came in, she asked if I had time. I felt uneasy because her facial features told me that she did have something to discuss with me, but it was something I didn't want to handle. In her palace of life, there was a pink aura which indicated romantic luck and marriage. This pink aura was connected to her parents' palace, indicating that her marriage was arranged by her father. She wanted me to see what her blind date was like. In other words, she wanted me to read her blind date's face. She wanted to take me with her, but wouldn't it be awkward for me to go to such an occasion? I said no, it wasn't appropriate for me to comment on such matters, especially since we weren't close. She was puzzled, don't you have no customers in your shop, or do you know what I want you to do? Just for a while, don't worry, I'll pay you. Is this enough? I was excited. She took out 10,000 from her bag. It would be fake if I said I wasn't tempted. But I was hesitant to go. She didn't say anything and took out 3,000 more. There's food, and I'll also drive you back, she said. I gritted my teeth and nodded, carefully putting away the money. It would only take a few minutes to read someone's fortune and earn 13,000. Even if I hesitated, I would still agree. After all, such generous clients were rare. I tidied up, picked up my phone, and closed the door. But at the door, I was puzzled. Had someone just come by? It seemed not, but how did a wet footprint appear? There was no sun today, and the sky was overcast. I found it strange. If someone had come, I should have seen them. Or did I not notice when I was talking to Gua Tingting just now? That should be it. Is it okay? Gua Tingting, who was already in the car, asked me. I didn't think too much and just opened the car door and got in. She drove quickly and said on the way that I didn't need to show up. I just needed to watch from a distance and use WeChat to tell her about the blind date's face. I said it was fine, and it was the best way to avoid awkwardness. The agreed place was a high-end tea restaurant. Guo Tingding ordered some food for me and went to another table not far away. I could see the face of the person she was meeting. I had never been here before and found the food delicious. I ate while waiting. Suddenly, my WeChat beeped. It was Guo Tingding telling me that the man had arrived. I replied with an okay. Sure, here is the translation of the text to English. Sure enough, a handsome man came in from outside, with a good temperament, and a smile before speaking. At first glance, he seemed to be a good match for Guitingting, but I had to look closely. Just as I was about to take a closer look, my phone rang, possibly disturbing the man, who glanced in my direction. I calmly answered the phone, as it was Yang Chao calling. Where are you? He asked urgently after I answered. I said I was outside and Guo Tingting asked me to read someone's fortune in the city. He breathed a sigh of relief and continued, Did you see anyone when you came out? I said no. No? Then how come there's a wet footprint at your door? I was taken aback and nodded, 
admitting that I did see the footprint, but not the person. Perhaps when Guo Tingting and I were talking, this person saw us and didn't want to disturb us, I said. Yang Chao retorted, nonsense, it didn't rain, so where did the wet footprint come from? That's. I hesitated. The girl who drowned in the river a few days ago just came to see you, Yang Chao said. Hearing Yang Chao say this on the phone, I immediately felt uneasy. What? The footprint I saw at the door just now belonged to that drowned girl? No wonder I felt strange after seeing the footprint just now. But logically, I had no grudge against her, so why did she come to see me? Did she know that I didn't save her, so she came to settle the score? I felt uneasy, as whatever the reason, her coming to see me was not good for me. I clearly remembered dreaming of her strangling me on the night she died, and I felt a chill down my spine. I instinctively turned around, but found no one behind me, and then I breathed a sigh of relief. What did she come for? I asked anxiously, this news was too sudden for me. How would I know? Don't forget, the spirits of the drowned are often vengeful. It's almost certain that she knows you didn't save her, so she came to seek revenge. Besides, she's the new river goddess, so she'll be even more ruthless, Yang Chao said gravely. I fell silent. Since she was coming to see me, I had to be careful in dealing with her. Otherwise, should I run away? I definitely wouldn't do that, after all, I hadn't done anything wrong. It was her destiny to become the new river goddess, it was fate. Even if I had gone there that night, it probably wouldn't have made a difference. What are you going to do? Yang Chao asked me. I told him my thoughts, and after a moment of silence, Yang Chao said, that's all we can do. We'll face it when it comes. We haven't done anything wrong, so why should we be afraid? Whoever she is, we don't need to be afraid when she comes. Are we too afraid of a person who just died? I breathed a sigh of relief. She probably saw Guo Tingting coming over and didn't show herself. But I was helpless. Since this girl was about to become the river goddess, if we really fought, and I killed her, things would only get more complicated. I could only wait until I saw her again. I asked if there was anything else, as I noticed Guo Tingting occasionally looking in my direction, urging me to read the face of the person she was going to meet. Nothing, just when will your mother be back? Yang Chao brought up this matter again, and I helplessly said I didn't know which made me even more curious about his agreement with the ghost king. I didn't mention this and told him what I was doing outside. All right, hurry up then. I'll be waiting at the door. That girl will definitely appear tonight, so we need to make some preparations in advance. After all, she became the river goddess in just a few days, so she has the ability to control the river. That's troublesome, but using water to drown someone is no ordinary matter, Yang Chao said. I understood what he meant and said I would be back soon. How long could it take to read someone's fortune? Okay, I'll wait for you, Yang Chao said and hung up the phone. I fell silent. What does this girl really want? I shook my head. I would know once I met her in person. The main thing now is to finish the business with Guo Tingting and go back quickly. I prepared to look at this man, but Guo Tingting kept signaling me desperately with her eyes, and I felt something was wrong. I had been on the phone for too long just now, causing Guo Tingting to keep looking at me and urging me. Even a fool would understand that Guo Tingting had brought someone else over. Sure enough, the man walked over with a smile, as if inviting, why don't we join in together? I instinctively glanced at Guo Tingting. Her expression was very awkward. I was helpless. Since I had been exposed, there was no need to continue pretending. I silently finished looking at the man, and I would send it to Guo Tingting via WeChat later. I stood up, picked up the unfinished food on the table, and sat down. Guo Tingting quickly introduced me, saying that I was her relative, without revealing that I was a fortune teller. Of course, it wouldn't be good to reveal it. After all, if this man knew, and Guo Tingting had asked me to read his fortune, then the blind date would definitely not work out. However, Guo Tingting's words let me know his name, Gao Feng. He glanced at me a few more times, still smiling. In fact, I could tell that he didn't believe Guo Tingting's explanation, because his gaze towards me revealed a hint of mockery. If I were Guo Tingting's relative, why would he look at me with such eyes? I could see from his eyes why he didn't believe it. I understood it myself. Guo Tingting was dressed in branded clothes, while I didn't even have a hundred yuan on me. If we were really relatives, we would be poor relatives. He started talking eloquently, boasting about his education and the company he was running, basically telling Guo Tingting that he was very wealthy. When Guo Tingting heard about his company and some interesting projects, she inquired about them. The two of them were chatting nicely and I silently ate until the food was finished. Guo Tingting pushed me, and I was thinking about the wet footprints at the door. When she pushed me, I realized that Gao Feng had actually left. I asked her, and she shook her head, no, he went to the restroom. How was it? How should I put it? Gao Feng was indeed wealthy, educated, and good-looking, the standard handsome and wealthy man. But, how should I say it, 
His recent luck wasn't very good, and there were some problems with his company. The reason he came to blind date Guo Tingting was to take advantage of her. I could see this from his facial features. However, Guo Tingting seemed satisfied, so when she asked that question, she was quite nervous. I didn't know how to answer, so I just said it directly, this matter was definitely not going to work out. When I hesitated, Gao Feng walked over. There was a slight dark color on the bridge of his nose, which represented a slight loss of wealth. This meant that he hadn't gone to the restroom just now, but had settled the bill. This aspect was actually quite good. And there were more dark colors in the area of his wealth, which meant that his recent expenses wouldn't make him look like this. It indicated that he had planned some other activities and spent money, so there would be some darkness in his facial features, such as watching movies or shopping. Sure enough, he came over and said, let's go shopping, it's still early. It seemed that my deduction was correct. He would pursue Guo Tingting next. How should I put it? Guo Tingting was also a beautiful and wealthy woman. Guo Tingting looked at me. What could I say? I definitely wouldn't go. I was still planning to tell Guo Tingting that I wouldn't go, meaning I would go back by myself, and at the same time, I would send her Gao Feng's facial features. After all, I had taken the money and had to do the job. You don't have to go, Gao Feng said to me. I didn't plan to go at first, feeling a bit annoyed, but I didn't want to show it. However, Guo Tingting seemed a bit unhappy. He's my cousin, why can't he come? I was speechless. I still had things to do at home. Was she using me as a shield? Okay, I've already paid the bill. Let's go together, Gao Feng said. As he walked out, Wu Tingting asked for more money, and I reluctantly agreed. I planned to find a chance to leave after finishing this. Guo Tingting agreed, but there was something I didn't know if I should mention. I had just noticed that there was a pink color appearing in the corresponding area of Gao Feng's kidney on his face, indicating that he wanted to take Guo Tingting today. After the whole process, he would find an excuse to take her to a hotel. Help me keep an eye on him, I think he's good, Guo Tingting said. What could I say? I followed her out with a bitter smile in my heart. Outside, Gao Feng suggested we take his car, and Guo Tingting hesitated before agreeing. I had no objections. As soon as I got in the car, I knew what he was up to. He stepped on the gas and then slammed on the brakes several times. I was feeling nauseous after just eating. Did he want me to leave? I was speechless. I would leave on my own, he didn't need to do this. By the way, does your cousin have a driver's license? Otherwise, he can drive my car, Gao Feng said. Guo Tingting looked at me, I shook my head. Did I have a driver's license? Guo Tingting said no, and Gao Feng smiled. Hurry up and get a driver's license. You can drive this car then. This car is a man's dream. He was showing off the car, but I didn't react much. Maybe it was because I had thick skin and didn't feel inferior. Gao Feng drove us to a square I had never been to before, but I had no intention of wandering around. I was anxious to go back. I followed Guo Tingting and Gao Feng, using my phone to detail everything I saw on Gao Feng's face and sent it to Guo Tingting. She hadn't seen it yet, but I guessed she would soon, as I saw her chatting with Gao Feng and not paying attention. I had to admit, Gao Feng was good at chatting, occasionally making Guo Tingting laugh, and with his handsome face, many girls would like him. He was good at observing and understanding people's subtle expressions, saying the right things to make girls happy. Obviously, Guo Tingting was amused by his skills. I had already sent the message on WeChat, whether she read it or not was up to her. I had completed this business for her and was almost ready to leave. However, what surprised me was that Gao Feng, intentionally or not, tried to hold Guo Tingting's hand. She immediately stopped smiling, showing that she was uncomfortable, although she didn't say it directly. But after that, no matter what Gao Feng said, Guo Tingting's response became much colder, which made Gao Feng a little unhappy. The atmosphere gradually became awkward. I hesitated and walked over. Gao Feng was already in a bad mood and looked at me with some displeasure. He said he would buy me some clothes, and he was sincere about it. I could tell from his face. But he was trying to give me something to make me leave. It seemed that he attributed his failure to hold Guo Tingting's hand to me. I shook my head and said I didn't need it. He was a bit surprised, as if to say, didn't you come along for the benefits? I ignored him. I did want benefits, but not from him, but from Guo Tingting. After all, I was doing business for her. I told Guo Tingting, you guys continue, I'll go back first and send you a message later. This meant that I had already sent her a message and she could read it when she had time. Guo Tingting was a little happy just now, but Gao Feng was too impatient, which made her unhappy and wanted to find an excuse to leave. She looked at me, and I was speechless. I'll go back with you. I'll take you back, Guo Tingting said. How old is he that he still needs to be taken? Let him take a taxi when he gets to the street, just flag one down, Gao Feng said taking out a few hundred yuan and giving it to me. I was a little unhappy. I was about to leave, so there was no need for it, right? 
I shook my head. You keep it. You need it more than I do. I need it? Gao Feng frowned, a bit mocking. Do you know how much my car costs? Do you know how much my clothes and this watch cost? To be honest, I really don't believe you are Ting Ting's relative, you know? Even the socks I'm wearing are more expensive than your whole body. You say I need money? Wu Ting Ting was a little unhappy. How can you say that about him? What's wrong with saying that about him? That's how society is. Following others all the time is a sign of no ambition. I'm helping you educate him. Look at how old he is and still following you. Gao Feng's tone changed. It's you, Ting Ting. You can't be so protective of him. Society is cruel. You have to let him adapt to society. You should let go and let him walk on his own. I didn't make a penny from him, but being told like this made me very unhappy. Seeing that Gua Ting Ting was not happy, it seemed that this matter was not going well. I didn't mean to hide anything, so I said directly, your current situation is really worse off than me. First, the area between your eyebrows is relatively dark, indicating that your company had a big problem three months ago, causing a significant loophole that you have been unable to make up for. Am I right? Gao Feng frowned, looked at me again with doubt. Can you read faces? You're so young. Are you just guessing? Guo Tingting was a bit surprised, obviously not knowing about this. I didn't answer his question and continued, the loophole in your company is significant, and you've almost put all your savings into it, but it's not useful. Because the area representing your wealth, the nose bridge, is dark overall, with no trace of brightness, indicating that you have been putting in money but there is no hope. It means that you will suffer a great loss because you can't make up for this loophole. So you are worse off than me in terms of money. After I said this, Gao Feng's face turned ugly, and then he showed a different expression. You, can you really tell fortunes? I shrugged and didn't answer. Why don't you help him figure it out? Guo Tingting said. I said he couldn't afford my fee, at least according to Guo Tingting's standard, over 3,000, he couldn't come up with it now. Moreover, I directly told Guo Tingting about his plan to use her family's influence, which made Guo Tingting immediately angry and slapped Gao Feng. What do you take me for? This slap left him stunned. Guo Tingting took me and left, and Gao Feng followed, asking me what he should do, very anxious. I ignored him, and Guo Tingting took me out of the square, hailed a taxi, and took me back to where she parked. When we arrived, she drove me back. However, after getting in the car, Guo Tingting shivered, why is it so cold in the car? I asked if the air conditioning was on. She shook her head, drove with a puzzled look, and didn't say much. She didn't speak the whole way, looking a bit dejected. She bit her lip and asked me, if you weren't here today, would I have been taken in by him? This question made me feel awkward. She was probably really swayed by Gao Feng, but Gao Feng was too impatient, thinking that Gua Tingting was more casual. However, when I read Gao Feng's face just now, I also noticed her face. If Gao Feng played his cards right, it shouldn't have worked today, but as she said, as long as he tried three times, according to her own words, she would be taken in. At that time, Gua Tingting's face showed a 70% chance. When I said that, her face turned red. Master, am I that casual? I said it's not a matter of being casual or not. There are many tricks of Gao Feng. Did he get you drunk? Wu Tingting is soft-hearted, with a 70% chance, isn't there still 30%? Wu Tingting fell silent. Master, I'm really not that casual. I'm still, still. This topic made me feel embarrassed. I said I could tell, and her face turned even redder. She coughed and didn't say anything. It must be embarrassing to talk about such things with a man like me. It was quiet all the way. When we reached the door of my house, I could see Yang Chao from a distance. The sun was about to set. I was about to get out of the car, and Guo Tingting took out 3,000 from her bag. I felt it wasn't necessary, after all, she had brought me back, and she had already given me money before. Take it, master. If it weren't for you, I might have been really. Master, you're really good at this. She said as she handed it to me, and I didn't refuse, I took it. This time I made 13,000, feeling great. But she kept calling me master, which I found a bit awkward, so I told her to just call me Li Chen. After all, she was my first regular customer, and a wealthy one at that. Guo Tingting thought for a moment and nodded. I opened the car door and got out. Guo Tingting waved goodbye to me, but then she remembered something and asked if I had time in a few days. I said I should, and she said she would come to find me then. I agreed, after all, she was generous. If she came once and gave me a few thousand, I wouldn't mind if she came every day. With 3,000 a day, wouldn't I be making a comfortable monthly income of 100,000? I thought happily, but it felt a bit unethical. If she came to my place every day, would I be cursing her to have bad luck every day? Forget it, she's a good person, I can't curse her. I walked to the door, and Yang Chao's eyes were fixed on me. I saw footprints at the door, and I walked over. Did she come? 
I thought I might as well sit down and talk. Yang Chao said, where's the demon revealing mirror I gave you? I said it's in my pocket. I always carry a backpack when I go out. Then take it out and have a look, Yang Chao said. I did as he said, took out the demon revealing mirror and looked at myself. It was fine when I didn't look, but when I did, I almost screamed, because there was a white figure behind me. In the demon revealing mirror, the figure behind me was very blurry, but in that instant, my whole body was covered in goosebumps. Who could that white figure be? Could it be the girl who drowned a few days ago? I had thought she would come later, tonight or tomorrow, after all, I had no time at the time. I didn't expect that she had followed me out directly and even taken a ride back. No wonder when Yang Chao called me, I felt someone breathing on my neck. It turned out she had been following me all along. I turned around in a hurry, and I was really scared, my legs went weak. I hadn't noticed her all along? If she had wanted to do something to me just now, wouldn't I have died long ago? This made me feel scared. I couldn't see her with my naked eyes, but when I used the demon revealing mirror to look at her, I could see her. I was anxious. It seemed that I had to practice breathing and meditation more intensively recently, so that I could have some spiritual energy in my body. With spiritual energy, I could inject it into my eyes, and I could see most ghosts and monsters. Then I wouldn't be suddenly scared like this. What are you here for, miss? Your death has nothing to do with us, Yang Chao frowned and said. I continued to look at her with the demon revealing mirror and found that except for her black hair, everything else was white. She had long hands, was wearing a white dress, and was barefoot, showing her fair feet. She had actually come barefoot. But maybe because she had just died, her body was very blurry, and I couldn't see her face clearly, but I could still see her eyes. She didn't speak, and Yang Chao frowned. What are you here for? I asked her in a low voice if she was mute. Yang Chao didn't speak, and the girl shook her head, but didn't say anything. What does it mean not to speak? I was a little puzzled. I told her that she was destined to die, meaning that I couldn't save her, but I wasn't indifferent to her fate. She didn't listen to me and walked towards me with her fair feet. Yang Chao's face turned ugly. What do you want? She didn't speak, but pointed at me with her slender fingers, leaving me puzzled. What did she want to do? It took Yang Chao a while to understand her meaning. She wants to see your back, Yang Chao said to me. See my back for what? I was stunned. Why are you talking so much? Take off your clothes and let her see, don't you want her to leave? Yang Chao said. I was speechless. Although I was a big man, I felt uncomfortable for no reason to undress in front of a girl. After hesitating for a moment, I took off my clothes and turned around to let her see, hoping she would leave. I asked her if she was done. She's gone, Yang Chao said. It's strange. Why would a girl want to see your back? I was puzzled and turned to look, using a demon revealing mirror, only to find that there was no one there. She left after just one glance? I found it inexplicable. Let me see what's different about your back. You actually scared the girl away, Yang Chao said with interest, turning to look at my back. The next moment, he fell silent, which puzzled me. What did you see? I've put my clothes back on, I asked. Wait, there's something on your back, Yang Chao said. I asked what it was, but he didn't answer. Instead, he took a photo of my back with his phone and showed it to me. Take a look, I subconsciously took it and was surprised to find that there was a blurry word on my back, as if it were a washed out tattoo. What was this? I had never had a tattoo. What does this word mean? I asked, feeling that it must be related to my origins. Did the girl know about it when she insisted on seeing my back, or was there some other reason? It's not clear, but the ghost girl left directly. I guess there's something strange about the word on your back, Yang Chao analyzed. It was indeed strange. I had never known about it, and my mother had never told me. If she hadn't said anything, I might never have known. After all, I usually didn't look in the mirror. It's not that I'm so ugly, but fortune tellers can't tell their own fortunes, so I can't look in the mirror, because if I do, I'll subconsciously want to analyze it. I put on my clothes and decided to ask my mother about this. I asked Yang Chao if the girl would come back. He said, I don't know. She might come back, but it's strange that she doesn't have any resentment or hostility. She seems very enlightened. It seems that when she died, she knew she was going to become a new river god. I was confused by the matter of the word on my back and went inside. Yang Chao said he would show the photo to his friend, and I agreed. He continued to sleep on the floor while I waited for my mother to come back. I tried to look at the photo in the mirror, but I couldn't see it clearly no matter how hard I tried. After a while, I got tired and fell asleep on the bed in a daze. I continued to do business with the door open the next day and the day after, but on the fourth day, the girl appeared again. As I was about to close the door, I saw strange wet footprints extending from outside into the room. I quickly took out the demon-revealing mirror and saw her bare feet. What did she want? What do you want? 
I asked, but Yang Chao wasn't there. However, since Yang Chao had said that she had no resentment, I wasn't very afraid. She didn't speak, but pointed at me, motioning for me to come over. After hesitating for a moment, I went over, and she walked outside. I was puzzled. Where did she want to take me in the middle of the night? I don't go out at night, I said. She stopped and turned to look at me, and actually took out some money to give to me. I was puzzled as it wasn't paper money, but rather money that had been soaked in water. It should have been the money she had on her when she drowned. Was she trying to get me to go out with her using money? After hesitating, I said, wait a moment, and pushed out the electric bike. She nodded, and I closed the door. Just as I got on, I was startled. I felt like my electric bike was about to fly away. She was pushing me from behind, at a speed of 70 to 80 kilometers per hour. Slow down, my face turned pale. I didn't have the habit of speeding. She slowed down a bit, and I asked her where she was taking me. She didn't say anything, but we stopped at a hospital. I was puzzled, do you want me to go in? She nodded. I parked the electric bike. Not only did we cover the distance of over 20 kilometers in half an hour, but there was still plenty of battery left. I followed her inside. I thought she wanted me to save one of her relatives, but to my surprise, she actually brought me to the morgue. She went in, and after hesitating for a moment, I followed. The security guard seemed not to have seen me and let me in. I could tell from his expression that he was captivated by this girl. Of course, he couldn't see me anymore. Inside, I shivered all over. It was so cold. She walked up to a cabinet and asked me to open it. I nodded and opened it. I understood what she meant. She wanted me to see her body. Sure enough, as I opened it and even pulled back the shroud, I saw a girl with a swollen face. Her features were delicate. I instinctively continued to pull, but she stopped me from doing so. I was stunned. I realized that the body was not wearing any clothes. I awkwardly asked her what she wanted me to do. She asked me to turn her over. I nodded and turned her ice-cold body over. At a glance, I was stunned because there was a word on her back that was similar to the one on my back. What was going on? I instantly thought, could she have been carried out of a cave by someone too? My mind went blank. My mother said I was carried out of a cave. At that time, I wondered if there were other people who were also carried out. But now it seems possible. Otherwise, how could there be a word on her back that was similar to mine? But what was my relationship with her? Relatives? No, her face was swollen, and I knew we didn't look alike at all. I asked her who she was. She shook her head, as if she didn't know herself. But how did she know about the word on my back? She fell silent for a moment, then spoke, and her voice was particularly pleasant, I saw it. I was stunned when she said she saw it. How did she see it? I didn't undress in public. Could it be that she saw it when my mother carried me out of the cave? This should be impossible. After all, we were about the same age, and even if she saw a deity, she couldn't remember, right? I asked her, but she didn't speak, which left me helpless. But her voice was really pleasant, with a fresh feeling of a girl next door. After careful observation, I asked her if I could take a picture with my phone. She nodded. After taking the photo, I tried to see if I could make out anything from the words, as it could be related to my origins. After doing all this, I turned her body back over and looked at her face. I felt a bit of regret. After all, she died so young, and she might have a great connection with me. What was this connection? I wasn't sure for the time being, as she didn't look like me, and we definitely weren't siblings. I asked her if she was sad. She nodded and shook her head, sad, but it's useless. It's better to be happy. I didn't know how to respond to this, sighed, and zipped up the shroud. But she said, carry me back. I was surprised. Could I really carry a body like this? Okay, carry me and follow me, she said. I hesitated for a moment and nodded. Luckily, I wasn't frozen like an ice block, so I could carry her. I lifted her body and followed her, walking behind her. She may have used some ghost technique to disable the surveillance, and the people watching the body couldn't notice me. So I followed her out and placed her on the electric car. Just as I sat down, she pushed me away, giving me a startle with her speed. I asked her if she often did this kind of thing. She said, do I often do this kind of thing? How many times do you think I've died? I felt embarrassed and didn't say anything. She kept pushing me to the riverbank near the house and then stopped. I parked the car and carried her body down. I asked how to handle it. Should I just burn it? She nodded and said it's fine, as she couldn't live anyway. Her voice sounded a bit sad. I suggested finding a place to bury her. What if she, as the river god, could come back to life? Although the chance was very low. She nodded and said, it's up to you. I hesitated and suggested putting her in the water. After all, she was the river god now. She agreed, saying, okay. 
I prepared to take off my coat and carry her down to let her sink to the bottom of the river. Suddenly, she laughed. What are you doing? Aren't you afraid I'll drag you down? Strictly speaking, I'm a water ghost looking for a substitute now. I hesitated and said it's okay. She laughed. Just put me down. I'll have my subordinates take my body down. I didn't understand who her subordinates were, but I had to listen to her. I placed her body on the water's surface. To my surprise, in the middle of the river, a huge fishtail appeared. It must have weighed over 200 pounds. How could there be such a big fish in this river? The fish emerged, a catfish, with large eyes but not human-like. Usually, if an animal's eyes have a human-like quality, it means the animal is about to become a spirit. But this fish didn't have that, so it was just semi-human. After all, it had grown so big over the years and had been hiding for so long. It wasn't stupid, right? It used its mouth to pull the body bag and drag the body underwater. With this fish watching, there shouldn't be any problems. I said I would go back. She didn't say anything. I felt a bit helpless and had to say it again. She still didn't answer. Suddenly, I felt a bit sorry for her. Her body had been lying there for so long without anyone coming to take it, and she was barefoot. Although her feet were beautiful and white, she couldn't go without shoes. She whispered, I'm not used to living underwater. Can I stay at your place? After all, we might be relatives, and you should take care of me a little. It was a reasonable request, considering that our backgrounds were probably similar. I nodded, but said I didn't have a room for her. She said a spirit tablet would be enough. She meant staying inside the tablet, which was simple. Just light a stick of incense every day. I asked her name. I needed it for the tablet. After thinking for a moment, she said, Ning Yushi. It was a good name. I nodded and said I would remember it. I let her come with me. She agreed, and I sat on the electric car while she pushed me. It felt good. I could use it to get home when the car ran out of power. When we arrived home, I wrote her name on a wooden plaque and asked her where to put it. She said anywhere was fine. I suggested the kitchen, but she shook her head, saying she didn't want to be greasy every day. I had no choice but to put it in my mother's room. She finally agreed, as she wouldn't feel comfortable in my room. I let her into the tablet, and she spun around before flying inside. I breathed a sigh of relief and lit the incense for her. She asked me, do you have incense with a fruity scent? I said no. How could there be? She sighed and said with concern, I really want to eat fruit. I was speechless. How could you eat fruit when you didn't have a body? However, she is already dead, but still thinking about eating. I can only say that her mentality is not bad. I joked and said, since you are the river god, can you eat the crayfish in the river anytime? She said, of course not. I am the river god, their leader. How can I eat them? She said it so firmly that I almost believed her. She continued, can you make crayfish? There seem to be many in my river. If I eat just a little, they shouldn't blame me. I shook my head and said no. She asked me to learn, but I was speechless. I still need to make money. How can I have time for this? I told her to go to bed early, and she agreed. After she finished her busy work, I also went back to my room to sleep. Yang Chao didn't come back today, so I had some free time. In the next two days, I finally understood why she was at my house. She was pretending. Pretending what? When she first appeared, I thought she wouldn't speak, that she was a shy girl. But in the following days, I was amazed. She was a chatterbox. She didn't stop talking from the moment I woke up. This chatterbox, who would she talk to in her fishless river? Only me. She tormented me for two days, talking non-stop. Fortunately, during the day when I was doing business, someone came over, and she shut up. Once the person left, she started talking again. I was about to collapse. I couldn't understand why she talked so much. Stop talking. I want some quiet time, I said. I was on the verge of a breakdown. Okay, she said, feeling wronged. It was quiet around my ears. I turned around and saw her standing at my mother's door. It was already afternoon, and there was no sunlight in the room. I saw her barefoot. I had seen her appearance in the past few days. Maybe her ghostly form had taken shape, and she looked innocent and lovely. But her excessive talking was unbearable for me. I didn't say anything, she said. I nodded. That's good. Otherwise, I won't let you stay in my house. Understand? I had to threaten her. After all, I was a reserved person, and she was too noisy. Okay, I won't talk, she said, feeling wronged, and was about to return to her spirit position. Suddenly, she looked outside. Someone is coming, she said. I looked and saw that it was Yang Chao. He came in and looked at Ning Yushi, looking a bit surprised. He pulled me aside and asked how she ended up in our house. I said she came because no one was talking to her. Yang Chao was stunned. You mean she's a chatterbox? I nodded. 
Subconsciously, I turned to look at her. She lowered her head and played with her slender fingers. Okay, but do you know what I've been doing these past two days? Yang Chao suddenly asked me. I was puzzled and said I didn't know. He poured himself a glass of water, took a sip, and said, I asked about the words on your back. There are some initial clues. Yang Chao said so, and Ning Yushi immediately walked over. Yang Chao was serious. Don't stand so close to me. Okay, Ning Yushi nodded. What clues? I was anxious. He had deliberately gone out to ask for me, and I was a little moved. Indeed, my mother was right. I could trust him. But don't get your hopes up too much. The clues I found are just a little bit. After all, the words on your back are not clear at all. Taking photos and using a computer to restore them didn't work. Yang Chao looked at me and Ning Yushi, who were so nervous, and he first gave me a warning. I nodded, understanding his meaning. However, when he saw Ning Yushi's expression, Yang Chao suddenly looked a little strange. He pulled me aside and asked if she was curious too. Why was she curious? I briefly mentioned that she also had words on her back. Yang Chao was suddenly surprised, his eyes widened, staring at Ning Yushi. His expression seemed like he wanted to run over and uncover Ning Yushi's clothes. I pushed Yang Chao. Although she was a ghost, with that kind of expression, she would be scared and vigilant. However, Ning Yushi's expression surprised me. She walked over to me and said, you have to protect me. The meaning is to worry that Yang Chao will impulsively uncover her clothes and look at the back. I nodded, what kind of look is that? Yang Chao came back to his senses, how is that possible, no. It shouldn't be, the words behind you may not be clear, but they should be unique, how could there be? He said nothing and walked to the side, as if he was asking someone on the phone. Why isn't he saying anything? Isn't there any clue? Ning Yushi asked quietly. I also found it strange. Yang Chao's actions surprised me. His reaction to hearing that there were words on Ning Yushi's back was so extreme. It didn't quite match what he had just said, and even conflicted with it. So, why did he say that? I shook my head and couldn't explain. Ning Yushi said, oh, and I watched as Yang Chao's expression changed quickly after the phone call. You said? Could I be your older sister? She said. I asked her how old she was. She said 17, and I had just turned 17 this year. How could I be her sister? Besides, the two of us don't look anything alike. Anyway, we're the same, that can't be denied. How about I be your older sister, and you take care of me from now on? She said. I didn't want to take advantage of this opportunity. I turned to look at her, and she thought for a moment, as if she had made a difficult decision, and said, biting her lip, then I'll be your younger sister, and you take care of me. I ignored her. What's the difference? Taking care of her is simple, just light some incense. At this time, Yang Chao finished the call and came over to say, it's strange. After asking around, they said that the words on your back are the first time they've seen them, which means that the people I know haven't seen them. Some people suspect that something is sealed there. Sealed something? What does that mean? I was a little confused. How could the unclear words on my back seal something? After all, if it weren't for Ning Yushi's words, I wouldn't have known there was something on my back. There are many kinds of Taoist techniques, such as sealing souls or secrets in a person's body using this method, a kind of tattooing technique. Yours might be similar to this, Yang Chao said. Similar? Does that mean there are other possibilities? I was completely confused, and Ning Yushi didn't say a word. Anyway, for now, don't show your back to anyone else. I'll continue to ask around about this matter, Yang Chao reminded. I'm not an exhibitionist. Why would I walk around naked? Yang Chao also glanced at Ning Yushi, and she looked disdainful. Li Chen, I'm tired. I'm going to sleep. She flew into the spirit tablet in a flash. Yang Chao asked me how long she would stay. I said I wasn't sure, but with her in the house, it was much cooler on such hot days. Yang Chao asked me what my relationship was with her. I shook my head and said, for now, there was no relationship, just that she had words on her back. Otherwise, I wouldn't have let her stay at my house. Alright, remember, people shouldn't be too close to ghosts, unless it's your ghost servant. Otherwise, her ghostly aura will affect you. You should be aware of this, Yang Chao reminded. I said I understood. She's been bothering me these past few days. I might make her leave in a few days. Yang Chao slept on the floor, and I walked to my room. You haven't lit incense tonight, Ning Yushi said to me from the spirit tablet. I walked over and lit three sticks of incense for her, asking her when she would leave. She seemed to be asleep and didn't answer me. I asked her again, and she still didn't speak. I said that if she didn't speak, then she should leave. She hurriedly said, don't. There's no one in the river who can talk. If I go back, I'll be bored to death. Are you asking me to drag a child into the water to talk to me? I was speechless and told her not to do that. I know, I won't. I'm going to sleep. Don't talk anymore, she said. 
I could only walk back to my room. Yang Chao, lying on the floor, asked me, when is your mother coming back? The ghost king can't wait. He complained a bit, and I was stunned. Why can't the ghost king wait? Yang Chao closed his mouth and said nothing. Anyway, let your mother come back soon. There's something good waiting for her. Something good? I was speaking when the closed door was pushed open, and a person came in. It was my mother, who I hadn't seen for a long time. I saw that her broken left hand seemed to have healed. Did she find the mountain god's broken left hand? Did she get it from that non-human woman? Probably. I'll have to ask for the specifics. I was suddenly delighted and ran over, Mom, you're back? Her expression was a bit strange. After nodding at me and glancing at her room, she seemed a bit surprised, but didn't say much. Instead, she looked at Yang Chao, probably having heard what Yang Chao said at the door just now. Yang Chao hurriedly got up, can I talk to you when you have time? She nodded slightly, Li Chen, go to sleep. I was already tired, so I naturally nodded when she and Yang Chao wanted to talk, even though I was very curious about the agreement between Yang Chao and the Ghost King. But I suppressed my curiosity and went back to my room, lying down on the bed to sleep. Suddenly, I felt a chill beside me. I shivered, opened my eyes in confusion, and sat up from the bed. What are you doing here? It was Ning Yushi. She said, is that your mother outside? I nodded. She continued, do you know what your friend is telling your mother? I shook my head, not sure, as I hadn't eavesdropped. She smiled slightly, he's telling your mother that a powerful ghost king has taken a liking to her and wants to marry her. This surprised me. The ghost king has taken a liking to my mother? What's going on? Could it be that the ghost king has also seen my mother's true form as a human? Probably. I was speechless, but it was also acceptable. After all, she had been taking care of me and hadn't dealt with her own matters. If she really wanted to be with that ghost king, I would be happy for her. Why are you so happy? Ning Yushi looked strange. I told her that I wasn't her biological child. Ning Yushi was surprised. No wonder, I thought she wasn't human. What did my mother say? I couldn't help asking. Come and see for yourself. Ning Yushi silently floated to the door. I couldn't help but tiptoe over and peek through the crack in the door. I saw that Yang Chao had something in his hand, a particularly valuable bracelet, probably the ghost king's betrothal gift. Yang Chao had been persuading her, saying that the ghost king had liked her at first sight and hoped they could be together, and so on, a lot of incessant chatter. Compared to Ning Yushi, I really admired Yang Chao. He was originally an exorcist, but this time he was also doing this part-time? My mother looked embarrassed, no need, I don't have that kind of intention towards him. I still have to take care of Li Chen. At least when he's 20, I'll consider these things. I was touched. I was almost an adult and didn't need her to take care of me anymore. She could consider her own matters. But after seeing her true form last time, I felt that she was also very elegant among the monsters. There must be many monsters pursuing her, maybe she had already passed that stage, but just didn't tell me, and it wouldn't be appropriate for her to tell me. Yang Chao was helpless, give it a try. I've seen the true form of that ghost king. He's a refined scholar, quite suitable for you. Thank you, but I really don't have that intention. Please. My mother shook her head in embarrassment, but before she could finish her sentence, a gust of wind rose outside. I hurriedly looked out and saw a floating sedan chair flying over. Judging from the momentum, it should be the ghost king from the ghost cave. The sedan chair stopped, and a refined scholar came out, holding a folding fan, as if an ancient scholar was presenting a betrothal gift to propose. I am Yen Liang. I apologize for the sudden intrusion. This ghost king walked in, truly graceful. I was surprised. This ghost king really took a liking to my mother? Probably. It was clear that he was a bit affectionate. Yang Chao breathed a sigh of relief. My mother looked at him and nodded after a moment of silence. It's okay, please have a seat. The smile on the ghost king's face deepened as he walked over and sat down. You've been to the ghost cave several times, but I still don't know your name. My mother shook her head. There's no need to say that. There are still children at home. My name is Feng Chulan. Feng Chulan? This was the first time I had heard her name, very classical, giving me the illusion that she had lived for hundreds of years. Ning Yushi beside me was also staring intently. Yang Chao, upon hearing this name, showed a pensive expression, as if he had heard it somewhere before. After the ghost king heard it, he opened his folding fan with a swish, smiled and said, the phoenix dances in the sky, the chumun at its peak, and the lawn is as light as sweetness. This name is quite faithful, a good name. My mother remained silent and walked to the side to pour him a cup of tea. The ghost king was taken aback, his expression changed slightly because the tea was only poured halfway. What does your mother mean? Ning Yushi asked. I said, pouring tea usually has several meanings. Pouring too full means deceiving with a full cup, meaning to drive someone away. 
Normally, it's poured two-thirds full because the tea is hot, and this amount is just right to hold the cup without burning your hand, and. Before I could finish, Ning Yushi asked, what about the half? Half doesn't have any special meaning. The way my mother poured it now is to tell him that she doesn't have that intention. I said, seeing Ning Yushi's puzzled look, I continued, half a cup of tea means that this cup of tea doesn't count as tea, and the implied meaning is that you, I don't think much of. Sure enough, as I said this, the ghost king fell silent, then said, actually, there are many things you don't know. I think the two of us should. The ghost king stopped speaking halfway, and I was also stunned because I saw my mother pick up a melon seed from the table, peeled it, and took out the kernel. Yang Chao was also stunned. You, unmarried, how can you do such a thing? Shameless. The ghost king was very angry. What's going on? Ning Yushi was surprised. After all, everything was fine just now, and he suddenly got angry. I stared at the melon seed on the table and suddenly felt a bit of surprise, but the ghost king's words made me a little angry too. I don't think what you said is shameful, my mother shook her head. Is this true or false? The ghost king asked. True, my mother said. The ghost king's expression became uncertain, since you don't have that intention now, then I'll come back later. After saying that, he decisively turned and left. Yang Chao, of course, was helpless, chased after him, and said something to him. The ghost king didn't take it and left in a sedan chair, still looking very angry. My mother breathed a sigh of relief, tidied up a bit, glanced at my room, and I awkwardly hurriedly looked away. Yang Chao walked in, of course, he could see my mother's attitude, so he didn't mention the matter and just stared at the melon seed on the table for a few moments, then suddenly showed a surprised expression, glanced meaningfully at my mother's room, and silently lay down to sleep. I guess he's going to leave tomorrow. After all, this matter is embarrassing for him. What does it mean? Why did the ghost king get angry when he saw the melon seed? Ning Yushi asked. I'm not sure, because she went out for about a week, less than 10 days, I can only say that she met someone, or had met someone before, and was together in these 10 days. My mother is a fortune teller and can feel it. After being together, there may be changes in her belly in about a month, meaning that she is pregnant. But whether the child is a boy or a girl, I can't tell. But that's the meaning. In this situation, maybe in a few months, 10 months later, I will have a younger brother or sister? Human pregnancy is 10 months, but she is a spirit. How long will it take? A few months? Or just one or two months? I'm not sure about this, after all, I don't know what her true form is. I said this, and Ning Yushi was surprised, really? I nodded, maybe my mother Feng Chulan knew she was pregnant, so she was preparing money to buy something in advance, I guess that's it. You go to my mother's room to sleep, I said, I'll ask about this tomorrow. Hmm, she looked very gentle, I'll chat with her and ask about this, I'll go over now, she said, ignoring the door and leaving. I was speechless, not knowing if my mother could tolerate this chatter. I was a little tired so I closed my eyes and went to sleep. The next morning, sure enough, Yang Chao greeted me and left. I wasn't surprised, but my mother came out of the room, not looking tired at all. It seemed that she had been hypnotized well by the chatter of Ning Yushi last night. I went over to light incense for her, and Ning Yushi said to me, why doesn't your mother get annoyed with me at all? I was talking until 3 in the morning yesterday, I was even sleepy, and she was still looking at me, making me feel embarrassed. I was speechless, she knew too? I asked her how it went. She said, your mother admitted it, she said there will be a change in 10 days. 10 days later? So it's a total of 20 days? So fast, what is this about? But she didn't say anything else, Ning Yushi said. I nodded and said I knew. Since my mother was back, I told her that I had earned over 30,000 in the past few days. My mother was not surprised, she nodded, hmm, since you can make money, then I don't need to calculate fortunes with you. I asked her if she was going to the mountains. She shook her head. I need some money recently, and it's not good for you to stay with me for too long, my demonic energy will affect you, so I have to go out. I said I would give her the money I earned, but she shook her head, you keep it for yourself. Mother, this. I hesitated and said, I'll call you aunt in the future, otherwise your husband will misunderstand. I was very willing to call her mother, but it would delay her and make others think she was married and had such a big child. She shook her head, no, don't think too much. I asked her when she would give birth. I felt that it was not appropriate to ask, after all, she was humanoid, so she should be pregnant according to human time, right? She thought for a moment and said, humans take 10 months, but I'm different, 3 months will do, so in 2 months, you will have a sister. This made me pleasantly surprised, but she said so, paused for a moment, and seemed a little strange. I saw that her complexion was not very good, so I asked what was wrong. She shook her head, it's nothing, I hope she can give birth safely. This surprised me, what's going on? Will it not be smooth when giving birth? I felt a little uneasy. 
I'm leaving, I have to prepare some things, money, and some other things, the maid in the room is very talkative. After giving Ning Yushi this evaluation, she packed up and left, taking the white rabbit with her. I hurriedly stuffed my savings card into her hand, she was stunned, and smiled, no need, you keep it. After she finished speaking, she left, and I felt a little reluctant. She was leaving as soon as she came back, but in a way, I was also happy. She had raised me for so long, and now she was finally going to have her own life. In two or three months, I would have a sister? I felt very happy about this, and I would definitely spoil her. When I heard this, my mood became particularly good. In the next few days, Yang Chao didn't come over, probably feeling embarrassed, but he called me and specifically asked me to look at someone's face and sent me a photo. Because this person was not an ordinary person, I looked at it reluctantly and could only tell him to be careful. Yang Chao was in trouble, not good, I told him directly, and he said he knew. I reminded him to be careful, this is no joke after all, his job is much more dangerous than mine, and I think she should come to see me these days. But when I thought about it, I saw a car stopping at the door, the door opened, and a fashionable beauty came out, it was Guo Tingting. I was happy because she was coming to bring me money. A few days ago, Guo Tingting told me she had something to discuss with me, and I was prepared for it. To be honest, I was hoping she would come, because when she didn't come, my daily fortune-telling business was very low. Guo Tingting came in, and I saw that she was dusty, it seemed she had been very busy these days, her face was covered in glistening sweat. She asked me to pour her a glass of water, and of course I did. She took a few sips before sitting down, her eyes turned, you don't have the air conditioning on at home, why is it so cool? If I told her that there was a female ghost in my house, she would probably be scared. I subconsciously turned around and found that Ning Yushi did not come out of the spirit tablet, probably knowing that I had a visitor and didn't want to disturb me. She did well in this regard, otherwise, if a guest came, she would be chattering in my ear, and I would be annoyed. I casually made up a reason, saying that a mud house is definitely cool, and she said, oh. I started to look at her face, and after more than 10 seconds, I was a little surprised. The first time I met her, I saw that her father's company was not doing well. After I pointed it out, I saw from her face that her family's situation would improve. Now it looks almost the same as it did back then. This basic face hasn't changed much, but she has encountered new problems these days, such as a dark color appearing in the position of her forehead, but this dark color is not on her entire forehead, it's a bit elusive, like a mouse dropping in a pot of porridge. In other words, someone in her father's company has done something to affect her father's company, and this directly affects Guo Tingting's financial position, indicating that this person has caused her family to lose a lot of money in the past few days. This kind of thing is quite complicated, after all, it's difficult to find out who this person is without evidence, so I can only be anxious. She probably knows this too, so she should have come to ask me to help her find out who this person is. Guo Tingting looked at me staring at her face and said, it seems that I don't need to say anything when I come, you can see my intentions from my face. I nodded, if I couldn't even see this, what kind of fortune teller would I be? I told her what I saw from her face, and Guo Tingting breathed a sigh of relief, I knew you could help me, can you find this person for me? Money is not a problem. When I saw her say this, I saw a slight darkness on the bridge of her nose, indicating that she was going to spend money. In terms of the degree of this darkness, she is prepared to give me a reward of 1 to 2,000, maybe 3,000. I was definitely satisfied with this amount, just to go to her father's company and come back today. This is a deposit, please come with me today. Voitingding took out 10,000 in cash, and I was delighted. This woman is simply my god of wealth. I nodded, took the money, and asked her to go out first, I would pack up and then go out. She nodded, picked up the unfinished tea, and went out. I didn't have much to pack, I just had to explain to Ning Yushi. I walked to Ning Yushi's spirit tablet and told her that I was going out to make money and she could do whatever she wanted. She stuck her head out of the spirit tablet, looking scary, and said, You're not taking me with you? I asked why. Do I want to be tortured by her chatter all the way? I definitely don't want that. She couldn't say, but after thinking for a moment, she said, Just be careful, I have a feeling that you will have big trouble soon. This left me puzzled. She wasn't a fortune teller, so how did she know? I asked her why she said that. She just said, I have a feeling. I fell silent. She probably wasn't cursing me, but what was the basis for her sudden statement? I asked her, but she couldn't explain. I lit an incense for her, telling her to either stay honest or go back to her river. She nodded, but then asked, really not taking me? When it's critical, I can help you escape. I didn't think it was necessary. I said I was going to Guatingting's company, and it wasn't a big deal. Why would I take her along? Compared to that, I'd rather not endure her incessant chatter. I turned and walked out, but whether it was due to Ning Yushi's words affecting me psychologically or something else, 
I bumped into a table as soon as I turned around, and it hurt so much that I grimaced. See, I told you. You need to be careful, Ning Yu she said. I glanced at her and muttered to myself, wondering if she was right. It's better to believe in such things than to dismiss them. It's better to be cautious, after all, it's my own life. After she finished speaking, she disappeared into the spirit card. I hesitated for a moment, thinking of asking her to come along, but I felt awkward about it, so I rubbed my leg, closed the door, and walked out, getting into Guo Tingting's car directly. She drove me to her father's company. I asked her if she had any suspicions about anyone, and she mentioned a few names, which I remembered. When we arrived at her father's company, I would pay special attention to these people. When there was nothing else going on, I asked her if Gao Feng had continued to look for her. She said he had, probably wanting her to find me and tell him my location for fortune telling. I didn't mention this matter. Guo Tingting glanced at me and understood my meaning, which was not to tell Gao Feng my location. It wasn't just about money, I simply didn't want him to know. After about an hour's drive, she took me to her father's company. It was quite large. I had never been to such a high-rise building before, and I found it eye-opening. Following her into the company, the modern and luxurious decoration inside made me feel comfortable. Taking the elevator up, the first thing I saw was a beautiful receptionist. She had a good image, and her forehead showed signs of success, indicating that she had great potential for advancement and could become Guo Tingting's right-hand woman in the future, possibly as a manager. I whispered to Guo Tingting, and she laughed, are you asking me to help her just because she's pretty? I was speechless. I said that for the good of her father's company, so what did it have to do with me? Besides, this beautiful receptionist had signs of a strong and independent woman. Her lips were full, a standard feature of a powerful woman, and the area of her marriage palace indicated high standards for her partner, meaning she wouldn't easily settle for just anyone. Of course, I didn't say this out loud. After all, she had the right to have such standards. If she was capable, why couldn't she expect the same from her partner? This was about being well-matched. I thought it was normal. I said this, and Guo Tingting was a little surprised but nodded, that explains it. Many colleagues in the company pursue her, but she ignores them. It turns out she has high standards. I said it wasn't about high standards. I didn't expect the receptionist to come over to greet us and ask Guo Tingting what she needed. Guo Tingting looked at me, and I suggested she hold a meeting so that I could see all the people in her father's company at once, which would be convenient. Guo Tingting said, there will be a reception in the afternoon. You can take a good look then. I had no objections and asked if there would be people from other companies at the reception. Guo Tingting nodded, and I said no problem. No wonder Guo Tingting asked me to come at this time. She wanted me to see her company and some other friends, to see if I could make some connections. I understood her meaning. It would take a little more time, but it wasn't a big problem. Guo Tingting took me to her office to wait while she went to see her father, probably busy with the afternoon reception. When I was bored alone, unexpectedly the receptionist came in to find me. I asked her what's up. She asked me what I had just said to Gui Tingting. Of course, I couldn't say it clearly. It seemed that she had noticed when I was looking at her face earlier and thought I was speaking ill of her. I was a bit at a loss. Don't speak ill of me, she said seriously. I was helpless. I had just promoted her, and now she was warning me. I was a little unhappy. However, the warning from the receptionist was a wake-up call for me. It seemed that some things shouldn't be said, and it was unnecessary. It was thankless and could also lead to misunderstandings. But I felt it was quite unfair. After all, according to her face, there was already a bright light appearing, indicating that she would be tried out by Guo Tingting's father in the next few days and then be given more responsibilities. If I didn't speak up to remind Guo Tingting, the receptionist might continue to be overlooked for three or four years, meaning she would continue to be unsuccessful as a receptionist and would have to wait three or four years for an opportunity. I had given her the chance she had now, but she turned around and warned me. I was helpless. It seemed that I would have to be more careful in the future. Don't worry, I didn't speak ill of you, I said. She stared at me coldly and said, it's better be that way, or else we're not finished. There have been problems in the company recently, and I can tell it's the work of an insider. General manager Guai Tingting definitely wants to find this person. If you speak ill of me, the general manager will definitely not hesitate to let me go. I'm warning you, don't be such a villain. I was a little surprised. It seemed that she knew the rules of the workplace very well. But actually, it wasn't surprising. Her face showed that she was capable. If she couldn't even see through this insider's matter, what kind of strong woman would she be? I shook my head and said I wouldn't. You won't? She continued to stare at me suspiciously. Then what do you do? Are you a new employee? She was very clever and could tell that I wasn't a relative of Guitingting's, let alone a friend. After all, 
there were no friendly gestures between me and Guo Tingting. She should have guessed that I was a new employee or just a regular friend of Guo Tingting's, so she dared to warn me like that. This woman was extraordinary. If she didn't have a successful career, it would be a waste of her brain. I shook my head. No, no? Then what do you do? She asked me, a little wary. She had just questioned me suddenly, and I was already unhappy. At this time, she came again, and I couldn't help it. I'm a fortune teller, I said. You're so young and you can tell fortunes? She doubted even more. Fortune tellers under the bridge are all like faucets, they can talk. You're not a fortune teller at all. And I don't believe in that stuff at all. It's all superstitious nonsense. I hadn't even opened my mouth yet, and I was unhappy. I said everything I had seen on her face, just like turning on a faucet, gurgling. At first, she was disdainful and a little angry. Slowly, her expression changed, and she was stunned. She subconsciously said, go on, I said, there's a light coming through the bridge of your nose. This doesn't mean you have good financial luck, but that you've had plastic surgery. And according to your face, apart from your nose, the area between the corners of your eyes and the bridge of your nose is unnaturally dark, which corresponds to the front of your face, indicating that you've also had. She hurriedly interrupted me, you don't need to say that in such detail. What else? Go on. I nodded. I actually didn't want to say this. Plastic surgery and augmentation were her privacy, but I had been a little angry just now and had said it. But seeing her embarrassed expression, I felt that I shouldn't talk about that aspect. On your face, the area between your eyebrows, also known as the brother palace, is long and thick, but lacks luster and appears somewhat disorderly. This indicates that you have a younger brother and a younger sister, and you are primarily responsible for taking care of them, which makes you eager to improve yourself and provide them with a good learning environment. This is due to the environment, so it is understandable. However, you have the ability, but being too eager for quick success and instant benefits is not the way. Maintaining your original intention is the foundation for your continued success in the workplace and the basis for your rapid advancement. Continuing, I said, after all, bosses prefer sincere and reliable employees. Reporting behind the scenes and engaging in underhanded tactics may help the boss solve your opponents, but in the eyes of the boss, you will always be the person who reports behind the scenes and will never have the opportunity for advancement. There may be small gains, but there are also great losses. You need to weigh this for yourself. I have said all I can. I continued to look at her calmly. Her expression was complex. I'm sorry, I just. I shook my head and said it was okay. In fact, with just a few words, I could have had Guotingting fired, but it was unnecessary. She had heavy family burdens, and according to what I had just said, it was understandable. I understood her. After hesitating, she became more restrained. I told her there was no need for that, and I directly said, I won't say anything to Guatingting, so rest assured. She breathed a sigh of relief and asked if I needed anything else, such as water or food. I shook my head and said it was not necessary. After hesitating for a moment, she said, did you just say that I have high standards? I shook my head, I didn't say that. You have the ability to find a partner similar to you, and that's understandable. After thinking for a moment, she nodded and said, Thank you. You are a good fortune teller. I misunderstood you just now. I was speechless. Was I just giving out good person cards casually? I said it was not necessary, and she nodded and walked out. However, she seemed to remember something and turned back to say, I don't know if I should tell you, but I suspect it's Xiao Wang from the company who was causing trouble. He's betraying the company. I glanced at her, and she hurriedly said, I'm not reporting this, nor am I engaging in underhanded tactics. Please don't misunderstand. I shook my head. Your facial features tell me that you are not lying. She breathed a sigh of relief and continued. Then you can take a look at him. I said I would pay special attention to him at the afternoon reception. She nodded and left. After that, I played with my phone for a while. At one point, Watingting took me to eat downstairs in the company and then took me to the venue of their reception. Li Chen, it seems like the front desk of our company has a good impression of you. They even praised you in front of me just now, saying that I should invite you to be a company consultant, Guo Tingting said. I was speechless and waved my hand. It wasn't that she had a good impression of me, but rather that I had just spoken to her heart. However, the idea of being a company consultant that Guo Tingting mentioned was not bad. After all, based on her facial features, she would probably offer me a salary of over 300,000 yuan per year. This was a good job, equivalent to a yearly contract. However, I needed to consider it, as being on a yearly contract meant being on call at all times. This would greatly limit my freedom. How about it? What she said is true, and what I said is also true, Guo Tingting said earnestly. I said I would consider it, and she nodded with a smile. Their company's reception was held in the adjacent restaurant, 
so we arrived quickly. However, there were security guards at the entrance. I didn't follow Gui Tingting closely, which led to the security guard stopping me and saying that I couldn't enter without formal attire. How could I have such clothing? Fortunately, Gui Tingting came over and waved her hand, saying that I was her friend. The security guard respectfully stepped aside, apologizing to me. I shook my head and said it was okay. It was my responsibility, after all. My outfit really wasn't suitable for this kind of place. I had come here to make money. I followed Guitingting inside, and there were many people at the reception, both men and women. I saw Guitingting's father holding a glass of wine and talking to someone. I asked Guitingting where the Xiao Wang the front desk had mentioned was. Guitingting pointed at a person. I looked over and saw a young man in his early twenties, but when I saw his face, I was stunned. Guitingting looked at me without speaking and couldn't help but ask, "Is it him?" I was puzzled. This Xiao Wang's face looked a bit strange. I was too far away to see clearly, but I felt something was off. I asked Guo Tingting to take me over to meet him. At least I needed to get closer. Guo Tingting nodded and took me over. I discreetly observed him. Xiao Wang was very talkative. Guo Tingting introduced him to me as a new employee. Xiao Wang gave me a slight smile. At that moment, someone called him, and he apologized and walked away. How was it? Guo Tingting asked me. I didn't know how to explain. I just felt strange. Wait, I feel something strange. How come you can't see it? Guo Tingting was surprised. I shook my head. It's not that I can't see it, but how do I say this? His face looks very strange. He may or may not be the one betraying your company. I was confused myself. Guo Tingting was puzzled. What do you mean? Be clear. Is it him or not? I didn't know how to answer because it was the first time I had encountered such a face. The reason I said it was the first time was that his face, how should I put it, seemed like he was wearing a mask, making it hard for me to see through. Xiao Wang was just an ordinary person. Why did I have this feeling? There was no anger on his face, just a strange feeling, giving me the illusion that he was two people. When I said this, Wu Tingting was surprised. Is this confusing you? She smiled, not looking down on me, but couldn't help laughing. I shook my head helplessly and just kept staring at him. You do your thing. I'll go and check. I saw him go to the restroom. I told Guo Tingting, "Be careful. If it's him, come back and tell me. I'll have the security catch him. Don't do it yourself." Guo Tingting reminded me. I nodded. I was only making money from fortune telling, not from being a thug. I walked towards the restroom. By that time, Xiao Wang had already gone in. Of course, I followed him in. There was no one outside the restroom, so he should be inside. The restroom was empty, so I carefully walked in. Unfortunately, I heard a sound coming from the restroom. It seemed to be Xiao Wang's voice. I couldn't help but get closer. He seemed to be muttering to himself. I listened for a while. It didn't sound like he was on the phone. Then I heard the sound of flushing. I quickly went into the adjacent stall. After hearing footsteps, I saw him walk out. I sniffed and felt something strange, a bit stinky and eerie. I opened the stall he had used. I was sure he wasn't on the phone, but was talking to someone. However, there was no one else in the restroom just now. So who was he talking to? A ghost? That couldn't be possible, right? Although his face seemed like he was wearing a mask, making it hard for me to see through, I should be able to tell if there was a ghost around. I was puzzled. Just then, my phone rang. It was Yang Chao. Perfect. I could ask him. I answered the call, and he asked if I was at home. I said no and told him I was out making money. He acknowledged and said he needed to talk to me when I got back. He was about to hang up when I said, "Wait, I heard someone muttering to themselves just now, but I didn't see any negative energy, and there were no corresponding signs on other people's faces. Could it be possible that he has a ghost with him? According to reason, there shouldn't be any negative energy, so there shouldn't be any ghosts, unless it's a ghost with exceptionally high cultivation." I said. After all, Xiao Wang is just an ordinary employee. How could there be a ghost with such high cultivation around him? Then he must be mentally ill. But just to be safe, secretly use the demon revealing mirror to take a look. If you see anything, then call me and let me know. Yang Chao said. I nodded and hung up the phone. I was actually planning to do just that. Just as I was about to go to the bathroom, a voice suddenly appeared behind me. How come I didn't see you come in to use the bathroom? Oh no! It was Xiao Wang's voice. I quickly turned around and saw that his eyes were staring at me coldly. Making me feel a bit uneasy. I said I had come in earlier. After all, he couldn't have been staring at me the whole time. I just needed to stay calm. As I said this, he looked at me with suspicion, snorted, and walked away. I quickly took out the demon-revealing mirror to try to aim it at him, but he was walking too fast, and I couldn't get a clear shot. 
I could only put the mirror back in my pocket and follow him out. When I came out, I saw Xiao Wang talking to Guo Tingting. Guo Tingting frowned, and I guessed that Xiao Wang was saying something bad about me. I quietly walked past the crowd, took out the demon revealing mirror, and aimed it at him. Suddenly, I saw the image in the mirror and was so scared that I shuddered. I quickly put the mirror away and went back into the bathroom. I took out my phone and called Yang Chao. When he answered, he asked, you called so quickly. Did you see something? Tell me, what did you see? I took a deep breath and said, I just saw a shadow on his body that wasn't human shaped. What do you mean? Explain it clearly. I mean there was a smaller shadow inside his body than his actual body. I said, that's what I saw in the demon revealing mirror. Xiao Wang is quite tall, but inside the mirror, there was a smaller shadow inside his body. That's why I felt like he was wearing a mask. Because it wasn't Xiao Wang inside at all. That's why I said it was his doing, but it wasn't really him. Is he possessed by a ghost? I asked a very strange question. There was no ghostly energy on him at all, so how could he be possessed by a ghost? After all, Huo Tingting must have been in contact with him recently, and there was no sign of ghostly energy on her face. If there was no ghostly energy, how could he be possessed by a ghost? Unless, as Yang Chao just said, it was a high-level ghost possession. But what attraction did Xiao Wang have to make a high-level ghost possess him? So the lack of ghostly energy was the most puzzling part for me. There really is no ghostly energy? Yang Chao asked. I said no, I was sure of that. I really couldn't see through Xiao Wang, but Guo Tingting could, and there was no indication of this on her face. There was silence on the phone for several tens of seconds before Yang Chao said, I'm not sure either. So, don't rashly use any exorcism methods on him, because according to what you said, he's just a human. But I need to verify if I'm right. So, go over and accidentally splash some water on him, and see how he reacts. Then tell me. Why splash water? I asked. Don't ask, just go and do it, then tell me, he said. I agreed and hung up the phone. I went out again and found Xiao Wang still talking to Guo Tingting. I calmly walked over, took a glass of water from the table, and walked over to trip and accidentally splashed the water on Xiao Wang. Guo Tingting was also stunned because the water splashed on her face. She came over to help me up and said, why are you so careless? You. Xiao Wang was especially angry, his eyes staring at me. In that moment, I felt a chill, as if I had provoked something I shouldn't have, because he seemed to be very afraid of water. Other people gathered around, and Guo Tingting said seriously, he didn't do it on purpose. Xiao Wang glared at Guo Tingting and quickly went to the bathroom. It's okay, it's okay. Guo Tingting shook her head, and the others dispersed. I quickly got up on my own, and Guo Tingting asked me what I was doing. I didn't answer, and hurriedly went outside to call Yang Chao. He answered as soon as I called, as if he was waiting for me. What was his reaction? Yang Chao asked me. He was very scared. I splashed water on him, and he had a look of fear on his face, but he quickly covered it up, I said. There was a moment of silence on the phone, and then Yang Chao said in a deep voice, it seems that my guess was right. He is a human. What do you mean? The person you mentioned has no ghostly aura on him, and there is another shadow inside his body that is not the same size as his body. It's simple, he has been replaced by a substitute. Yang Chao said. Replaced by a substitute? I felt a chill in my heart, and I thought of something, and suddenly broke out in a cold sweat. Yes, this person was probably pulled into the water by a water ghost while playing by the water before. His own soul was pulled out by the water ghost and became a substitute for the water ghost. Then the water ghost entered his body. You can say that the person you mentioned is him and not him. His body is his, but his soul is not. In this situation, the underworld cannot handle it because he has successfully found a substitute so he is human, and that's why there is no ghostly aura on him. Yang Chao continued. I broke out in a cold sweat, no wonder he seemed to be wearing a mask and was inscrutable, it turns out he was a substitute found by the water ghost. So, some people go out once and come back with a completely changed personality, as if they have become a different person. It's possible to change for the better, but it may not be for any other reason, but because they have become a substitute for the water ghost, so their personality has changed. These words made me feel a chill. What should I do now? He is already a human being, I can't just go and kill him, can I? This situation is quite difficult to handle. This person can be said to be Xiao Wang, but it can also be said that he is not Xiao Wang. After being found by the water ghost to be a substitute, the water ghost is very greedy, so he has done things that harm others and benefit himself, causing a lot of losses to Guo Tingting's father's company. But the real Xiao Wang at this time, I don't know which river he is in as a water ghost. When I was at a loss, I asked Yang Chao what we should do, after all, the situation had become very complicated. You came to help Guo Tingting find the mole, so just find a way to expose him, don't worry about anything else. 
Yang Chao said. I nodded, and Yang Chao continued, Remember, you rarely encounter such things, so don't have sympathy for anyone, it will harm you. The person you mentioned is no longer himself, he is a water ghost, and he doesn't know how long he has been trapped in the water. That kind of thing, even if he has found a substitute, his personality will always be that of a water ghost, ruthless. Think about it, he can even drag innocent people into the water, what else is he capable of? After hearing this, I fell silent, feeling a chill in my heart. Just now in the toilet, if he had wanted to kill me, what could he have used to stab me? I would probably have been in trouble. Thinking of this, I felt a little scared and had lingering fears. Indeed, ignorance is fearless. I was very brave just now. So what you need to do is find evidence to expose him, don't have any contact with him. Although he is now a human, you can't imagine how ruthless he is. Yang Chao cautioned. I said I understood. I hung up the phone, and Guo Tingting came over and asked me what was going on. She was more anxious, and what surprised me was that as she approached, I could see a dark color appearing in her life palace. I suddenly felt bad, maybe my actions just now had angered Xiao Wang, and he had also developed the intention to kill Guo Tingting. How is it? Guo Tingting asked me. I hesitated and gave her a word of caution, telling her not to be afraid. She nodded earnestly, but after I said it, a look of fear appeared on her face. What did you say? He is a water ghost? I shook my head. That doesn't count, he's found a substitute, and it's a person. No wonder, last time when the company organized a trip, we went camping in the mountains. He said he was going to the bathroom alone, and it took him half an hour to come back, and when he did, he was all wet. When we asked him what happened, he didn't say anything at the time. It turns out that at that moment, he, Guo Tingting's words became more and more chilling, clearly she had realized that during this time, she had actually been working with a water ghost. She felt scared. What should we do? Guo Tingting was horrified. I thought for a moment and said, let's call the police, but what evidence do I have? Right, let the police check his money, the recent large sum of money in his account. How could a company employee have such unexplained money? I said this, and Guo Tingting quickly called the police. But when the police arrived, they couldn't find Xiao Wang. He had already run away. I suddenly felt that something was wrong. I should have gone to the bathroom to check. He must have known that I was suspicious of him. I saw Guo Tingting's forehead getting darker and darker, and I was extremely worried. Oh no, Xiao Wang is going to do something to Guo Tingting. The police came, but they didn't find him, so they had to regroup and continue to search with other police officers. Suddenly, a police officer came over, and of course, the party was affected and ended hastily. I stared at Guo Tingting's expression for a while and secretly hid two bottles of wine on myself. I pulled Guo Tingting out. What are you doing? Guo Tingting was still in shock. I asked her, what are you planning to do now? I, I, Guo Tingting didn't understand what I meant by asking her, but she probably knew that I wouldn't ask randomly, so she said, I'm going to the parking lot to take you home. The parking lot? He's hiding in the parking lot. When she said the word parking lot, the dark color on her forehead suddenly became heavier. It was obvious that the parking lot was dangerous. I said this, and Guo Tingting was frightened. What does he want to do to me? I said revenge. I estimated that her expression was the same. Xiao Wang was furious and wanted revenge. Guo Tingting said she was going to call the police, but I shook my head. Xiao Wang is very alert. If the police come, he will definitely run away immediately. It will be much harder to catch him later. What should we do then? I was silent for a moment and said, do as you wish, and I will catch him. For the time being, this is the only method we can use. I calmed Guo Tingting down and she took a deep breath, biting her lip and saying, okay. Just in case, I took a few more bottles of wine and put them in my backpack. Xiao Wang is now a human, so if I hit him with a wine bottle, he will definitely faint. Then we can catch him. Let's go, to the parking lot, I said. Guo Tingting nodded with determination. At that moment, Guo Tingting's father came over and asked her where she was going. She said she was taking me home. He glanced at me, smiled, and greeted me. I nodded in return. Guo Tingting came over, and I asked her to walk in front. She nodded, and I followed her into the underground parking lot. I was actually very nervous because if it was a ghost, it would be fine. After all, I still had some spiritual energy in my body, and I could fight ghosts. It would be a bit easier than fighting people. But with people, it's different. I would be unarmed, which would make it more difficult. After all, I probably have a similar personality to my mother, Feng Chulan. I haven't really fought with anyone. After all, she's a homebody, and I've been influenced by her, staying at home all the time. Who would I fight with? But despite being nervous, I was definitely not afraid. I've seen ghosts, so why would I be afraid of people? The parking lot was eerily quiet, with only the sound of Guo Tingting's high heels echoing, 
making my scalp tingle. It was too quiet. I followed Guo Tingting quietly. She walked to her car and looked around. I slowly took out a wine bottle. As soon as he appeared, I would rush over and smash it. One second, two seconds. The chilling silence continued. Guo Tingting pressed the car key. The car made two sounds, but just when I was alert, the phone suddenly rang. I was startled, and the phone rang quietly in the parking lot. Oh no! This will let Xiao Wang find out. I quickly took it out and saw that it was from Yang Chao. Guo Tingting turned to look at me, and I made a gesture to her. I quickly answered, hello. I lowered my voice and subconsciously looked at Guo Tingting, and suddenly I was shocked because when Guo Tingting turned her head, a figure suddenly appeared. In the dim light, I saw his expressionless face, even with indifference. He raised his hand and grabbed towards Guo Tingting's neck, as if he wanted to take her life like a devil, as if to strangle Guo Tingting. Ah! Guo Tingting screamed, because this hand had already grabbed her neck, and immediately turned Guo Tingting's face red, and she coughed. At this point, how could I bear it? I immediately put the phone in my pocket, grabbed the bottle, and rushed over. I rushed over. Stop. I took the bottle and was about to smash him, but he stared at me coldly, dragging Guo Tingting and retreating. Guo Tingting's face was full of pain, he was too strong, completely suffocating Guo Tingting. At this point, how could I bear it? I immediately put the phone in my pocket, grabbed the bottle, and rushed over. I rushed over. Stop. I took the bottle and was about to smash him, but he stared at me coldly, dragging Guo Tingting and retreating. Guo Tingting's face was full of pain, he was too strong, completely suffocating Guo Tingting. Sure enough, you found me, I felt that something was wrong with you. After so many years, I finally found a substitute, you can't ruin my plan. I will kill both of you. Xiao Wang roared ferociously. I knew that if this continued, Guo Tingting would be strangled by him. I ran over and smashed his head with the bottle. Crack! Xiao Wang kicked me, and I was not careful, the bottle fell to the ground, and my stomach was in pain. I quickly took out another bottle and rushed over to smash it. Crack! This time it hit, Xiao Wang was covered in blood, making him look even more terrifying and ferocious. He dragged Guo Tingting and retreated, completely without any intention of letting go. I was anxious, I was afraid that if I killed him, he would not let go. I was anxious, I was afraid that if I killed him, he would not let go. At this moment, the phone in my pocket that hadn't been hung up had a voice coming out, don't hit him like that, his body and soul are not completely integrated, you can use your internal energy to fight him. I quickly did as instructed, but my internal energy was pitifully scarce, I didn't know if it would work, but I didn't care, I took a deep breath, mobilized my internal energy to my fingers, and pointed it at his head. Internal energy is the foundation of our fortune telling, it is difficult to initially condense, I learned from my mother for so long, and only have a little bit in my body. Pitifully, I didn't know if it would work, I pointed it out, and I was also uncertain. But at this point, Wu Tingting was about to be strangled, I had to do it. When I did this, Xiao Wang stared at me ferociously and coldly, suddenly, my finger pointed to his forehead. I felt my finger was a little hot, but it seemed to be drawn away by heat, giving me a feeling of emptiness in my body, very uncomfortable, this was a sign of using up internal energy. But once it was used up, it would quickly recover. But it also made me realize that my internal energy was too little, and it was gone with just a little bit. Fortunately, when I did this, Xiao Wang immediately showed a painful expression on his face, he seemed to be going crazy, covering his head, and Guo Tingting, who was about to be strangled, fell to the ground, and I quickly helped her up. Guo Tingting coughed violently, with a look of fear on her face, I pulled her behind me, fortunately, she was not strangled to death. At this moment, I clearly saw that Xiao Wang's shadow was very painful, originally, this shadow did not match Xiao Wang's body, now it looked even more strange. He stared at me ferociously, turned and ran, at this point, could I let him go? I took off the bottle, rushed over and hit his leg, I was afraid that if I hit his head again, I would kill him. Bang, the wine bottle shattered, and he fell to the ground clutching his leg, screaming in agony, staring at me with a terrifying look, as if he would seek revenge on me if he didn't die. This look made me very uncomfortable. I took off the wine bottle to smash him again, and he fearfully covered his head, no longer daring to stare at me. I took out my phone and told Yang Chao that it was resolved. Alright, if he can come out, you'll be in trouble. Come back quickly, I need to talk to you. Yang Chao cautioned, then hung up the phone. I knew what he meant. This kind of thing could be easily handled by Yang Chao, but for me, it was different. I had too little experience with these things. I had Gui Tingting call the police. She was still in shock, so I had to make the call. The police arrived quickly, and after a brief statement, they took Xiao Wang away. This process took over an hour, and Guo Tingting only recovered after that, feeling a bit overwhelmed and cried for a while, showing her fear. I didn't know what to do, so I could only watch her cry, after all, 
I didn't have any tissues on hand. Anyone would be emotional after almost losing their life. She choked out that she would send me back. But in this situation, I'd better go back by myself. Should I let her cry and send me off? I said this, and she hesitated for a moment, took out 20,000 from her bag, hesitated again, and took out another 10,000, and handed it to me, saying thank you. I felt a bit embarrassed, so I only took the 20,000, after all, she had already given me 10,000 when I arrived. She insisted on giving it to me, so I had to accept it and told her I was leaving. She nodded, don't tell anyone that I cried, it's the first time I've cried in front of a man. Is it ugly? This sentence made me laugh, and she was surprised to see me laugh. She awkwardly got into the car. I cleared my throat and felt that it was not the right time to laugh, so I'd better leave to avoid embarrassment. But when I turned around, I stepped on something, causing a sharp pain. It turned out to be a shard of the wine bottle. I felt uneasy. Was I going to be unlucky? I pulled out the glass shard, which was so long that it had pierced through my shoes, and there was blood on it. Guo Tingting came out of the car and angrily asked why I was still laughing. After all, when I pulled out the glass, I leaned on her car and seemed to be laughing. I said it wasn't, and she saw the bloody glass in my hand and asked what happened. I shook my head, and she offered to take me to the hospital. I said it wasn't necessary and left absent-mindedly. Ning Yushi's words echoed in my ears. Maybe I really needed to be careful. What was it? Was it disaster comes from the mouth or something? It seemed that I had to be careful. Helpless, I came to my senses. While still in the city, I deposited the money and then indulged myself by taking a taxi back home. When I arrived at the door, I saw Yang Chao squatting there. He stood up when he saw me return and asked me what happened. I briefly explained, and he nodded. I opened the door, and he followed me in. I asked him what he wanted to talk to me about. When he was about to speak, Ning Yushi flew out of the spirit card and looked at me, saying seriously, you really need to be careful, I feel it. She said this, making Yang Chao subconsciously look at me, and I also felt something was wrong. I had bumped into the table when I went out and stepped on the glass when I came back. This was really a bad omen. I nodded and said okay. She yawned and said she was going to sleep, then disappeared back into the spirit card. Yang Chao asked me what happened. I briefly explained, and he nodded, your line of work relies on words, so most likely, disaster comes from the mouth. Just be careful, and don't give personal readings to others. I agreed, after all, wasn't that what happened with the receptionist at Guo Tingting's father's company today? I really had to be careful. Disaster comes from the mouth, or else what else could go wrong for me? I asked him why he was looking for me. He said I didn't seem to be in the mood, so we could talk about it tomorrow. But then he asked, is your mother pregnant? I hesitated for a moment and nodded. He asked why. How many times has your mother been pregnant? He asked subconsciously, and I said it was the first time. She didn't reveal much, but it was the first time. Forget it, she doesn't have experience. He hesitated for a moment, wanting to ask me something, but then thought of something and went to my room to get a blanket. He's used to sleeping on the floor, and I was tired today, so I took a shower and went to bed. The next day, Young left early, leaving me speechless. Wasn't he supposed to ask for help? Unexpectedly, at noon, he came back in his car, drank a few sips of water, and said to me, what is your mother's true form? I shook my head and said I didn't know, I hadn't seen it. I asked him curiously why he was asking about this. When he was about to speak, I noticed the woman who got out of his car, with a big belly but a very pale face. I suddenly noticed that she looked very unhealthy. Her appearance told me that she was pregnant and about to give birth in two or three months, but she had encountered a big problem. In her life palace, there was a deep dark color, which had been accumulating for a long time, indicating that she had a disease, a physical one. She gave me the feeling that she might not be able to hold on until the child was born. This surprised me. What's going on? Yang's wife? No, I dismissed the thought because I then noticed that she bore a resemblance to Yang, and judging by her age, she should be Yang's sister. I had never seen Yang's appearance, mainly because I couldn't, so I didn't know how many family members he had. When Yang saw his sister coming down, he hurried over to help her, saying she could just stay in the car with the air conditioning on, not to get out. She smiled with a pale face and shook her head, saying it was okay. Is this okay? Yang glared at her, and his sister smiled and said nothing. I was surprised. Is this what Yang wanted to talk to me about? I quickly got her a glass of water, and she thanked me. Even Ning Yushi came out of the spirit card, but she didn't get close, just watched from a distance, because Ning Yushi knew she was a ghost, and it wasn't good to get close to a pregnant child. I didn't know if Yang's sister could see Ning Yushi, but I understood why Yang asked me about my mother's true form yesterday. His sister's appearance told me that Yang was looking for some remedy to cure her illness. This remedy, well, her illness is not cancer, but some kind of poisoning. 
According to her complexion, it's a type of heat poison, because she had sweat on her forehead. If we talk about detoxification, using heat to counteract heat, it would require some kind of fresh blood from a spirit to treat it. I deduced this from what Yang asked me about my mother's true form. After all, he asked me about it. As I said this, Yang nodded. My sister is indeed poisoned, and it's recent. I asked some friends, and they said we could use white fox tears to suppress this toxicity. So I asked if your mother's true form is a white fox. Hearing Yang say this, I looked at his sister again. Yang meant to use white fox tears to suppress the poison? It shouldn't be that simple. I've only heard that using bull tears can make people see ghosts, so this should be the most significant use of tears I know. If white fox tears have such a great use, wouldn't all the white foxes in the world have been caught? It should be something like a bait. Why use white fox tears? I asked. White foxes are flirtatious by nature. Whenever they appear, their flirtatiousness is overwhelming, unless their cultivation is high enough to conceal it. Some white foxes with lower cultivation will use tears to cover their scent. Their tears are very fragrant, like perfume, and it's similar to bees making honey from flowers, Yang said. I understood what he meant. It's similar to cat poop coffee. White fox tears shouldn't be considered tears, but something else that's excreted from their bodies, so it has other uses. However, I shook my head helplessly, you've seen my mother, you know what her personality is like. It's completely different from the seductiveness of a fox, right? It's like night and day. How could she possibly be a white fox? Yang Chao sighed when he heard me say this, I also don't think your mother is a fox, but my sister's situation can't be delayed any longer. Look at her belly. He looked worried. I had just noticed that she was probably two or three months pregnant, so does that mean her due date is similar to my mother Fong Chulin's? What a coincidence. My mother has been preparing recently, but her situation is clearly different from Fong Chulin's. After all, Fong Chulan is just preparing, but she might not be able to hold on until the birth. I asked if it should be easy to find a white fox. After all, there are some people who specialize in raising foxes. But then again, ordinary foxes won't do. It has to be a fox that has become a spirit. But foxes are naturally suspicious and cunning, and once they become spirits, they become even more formidable. Their intelligence is probably over a hundred. They will definitely hide. It's undoubtedly extremely difficult to find them. Otherwise, Yang Chao wouldn't have come over and desperately asked if Fong Chulin's true form is a white fox. After looking at his sister's face for a while, I felt helpless. There was a lot of dark energy in her life palace, so much that it almost obscured her face, leaving me clueless. It seems that the photos Yang Chao sent me earlier are probably related to the white fox. I asked if Yang Chao had any other leads. He sighed, no, once a white fox becomes a spirit, it will always find the best way to conceal its true form, making it extremely difficult to find. Brother, don't worry, I'll be fine, his sister said. Yang Chao sighed, and I found it strange. Where was her husband? I carefully examined her marital palace and was surprised to find that it was extremely dark. At first glance, it gave the impression of a sudden darkness, which is a bad omen. It indicated that her husband had already died, and it was an accidental death, about seven months ago. She was quite pitiful. She had just become a widow when she was pregnant. Yang Chao shook his head, if only I had known, I shouldn't have taken you two there. It's my fault that my brother-in-law died. I'm not a man, nor a corpse, and I wouldn't have let that kind of poison lurk inside you until now. I was surprised to hear this. Did Yang Chao's current state have something to do with where he had been? And did it also involve his brother-in-law who had gone with him? No wonder he didn't want to talk about his past. For him, it was a sad story, and it was probably very difficult for him to talk about it. Brother, it's not your fault. I wanted to go, his sister shook her head, also showing her sadness. I couldn't bear to listen any longer. Since there were no leads on the white fox tears for the time being, I suggested giving her something to help with her pregnancy. At the very least, if she died, there would be a child to carry on her legacy. It was a last resort. I said it directly, and Yang Chao looked at me and said, white fox tears are the best suppressant, but if we find something else, it might work too. I asked what it was. What he said next left me speechless. Things like thousand-year ginseng and hundred-year spirit fruit. Where could we find those? Thousand-year ginseng must have become a spirit by now, right? It must have hidden itself deep in the earth and never come out. Who could find it? Even if it was found, it would be difficult to catch. When digging it up, it would have long since disappeared. This was probably even more difficult to find than the white fox tears. It was a real dilemma. I tried to read her fortune again, but couldn't see anything. I was at a loss. I asked her to rest in Fong Chulin's room for a while, as she was clearly in a lot of pain. It was probably the poison acting up. Yang Chao, as her older brother, had done his best. 
In her poisoned state, the child in her belly could be considered healthy, probably due to some kind of isolation method, which an ordinary person wouldn't be able to do. Yang Chao asked her, and she nodded. Yang Chao helped her inside, and Ning Yushi walked a little further away, not wanting to disturb her. Yang Chao came out of the room, and I saw him sighing repeatedly, so I offered to calculate for him. I can't do fortune telling, I have to be a third level fortune teller, after all, I am only a first level fortune teller. He had to cooperate with me to do face calculations, character calculations, and hand calculations. When Yang Chao heard me say this, he had a glimmer of hope and without hesitation, he wrote the word wrong on the table with water. This meant that he had done something wrong and harmed his sister. I looked at it for a while, my expression changed slightly, and I felt strange in my heart. Yang Chao saw my expression and became anxious, what's wrong? Wait, I said. Wait, wait for what? He asked. I pondered for a moment, quite strange, why did I say that? Because this wrong word, according to the character analysis, is at Anna. However, when he wrote, he gave it a feeling of, which is not gold, so it must be related to gold, and can be homophonic, meaning today. As for the remaining, it means the past. Today's past? This is definitely not valid, so what does today's past mean? It should mean the intersection between today and tomorrow, which is when the sun sets, representing the end of the day. For tomorrow, this time is the past. So the meaning of this wrong word calculation is the time of today's sunset. Furthermore, when he wrote this, the below it was written hastily, giving a feeling of. So I deduced that waiting here would be enough, oneself will come. This means that this fox's tears will appear on their own? There is this aspect of meaning, but not entirely, perhaps some clues will appear. When I said this, Yang Chao was suddenly delighted and asked me if it was true. I nodded, but I was puzzled, how could it come to me? Isn't this an indication of self-delivery? It shouldn't be so coincidental, right? I was puzzled, and as I said this, Ning Yushi next to me also showed a look of surprise. In that case, wait until the sun sets. Yang Chao immediately sat down, but then he thought for a moment and asked me, could it be your mother coming back? His meaning was whether Feng Chulan was still a fox spirit. I shook my head, it shouldn't be. After Yang Chao fell silent, he kept staring outside, afraid of missing something. Ning Yushi probably felt that today's situation was special, and everyone's mood was not good, so she didn't talk incessantly, but sat quietly. In the afternoon, I did three fortune tellings and earned a few dollars, just enough for living expenses. Finally, when the sun set, Yang Chao became even more anxious, and Ning Yushi also looked curiously outside, and I wanted to know if I was right, so I also focused and waited until evening, but no one appeared. Yang Chao became extremely anxious, and I could only walk to the door and saw that the sky had turned dark, but there was still no sign of anyone. It seems like she's here, suddenly, Ning Yushi stared inside, and I became nervous too. Yang Chao immediately ran to the door, and the three of us looked outside and indeed saw a person coming closer, looking somewhat eerie in the darkness. As the person approached, I saw clearly and was stunned. It was a woman dressed like a beggar, looking very messy, but I recognized her and became curious. Was she the fox spirit? This woman was the one who had taken the mountain god seal and severed Feng Chulun's arm a few days ago. She was not human, was her true form a fox? I was a little surprised, especially surprised, as foxes are usually alluring and wear exceptionally beautiful clothes, probably comparable to heavenly fairies. However, she is completely unkempt, wearing ill-fitting clothes, messy hair, and an unattractive face. It's really hard for me to associate her with a beautiful fox. After all, in my impression, a fox spirit is the kind of beauty that brings disaster to the country, like Daji, and she. My stunned expression made Yang Chao better than me. And Ning Yushi asked weakly, Li Chen, did you make a mistake? Is she a fox spirit? I shook my head. The characters didn't clearly say that she was a fox spirit. I could only say that she was Yang Chao's sister or a turning point for the fox's tears. Maybe she knows a fox spirit? After all, she is a strange creature. If she knows, it shouldn't be difficult to shed a few fox tears. When I said this, Ning Yushi fell silent, and Yang Chao stared at her. She walked out of the darkness, frowned, and snorted lightly, her voice cold, Li Chen, what do you want to do? Are you welcoming me like this? Or do you want to deal with me? I quickly said no, but when I was about to walk over, Yang Chao stopped me, there is a hostility on her body, different from your mother, and smaller. She may attack you at any time. I knew without him saying that this woman's temper was much worse than Feng Chulun's, so of course, I would be careful. I walked over, no, we. Oomph, if I find out you have other intentions, I won't let you off. She snorted coldly, which made me breathe a sigh of relief. I didn't feel scared, which meant she didn't sense that I was planning to bring someone to kill her or something. We have something to discuss with you, I said. Discuss with me? You've got the wrong person. 
I won't help anyone, she shook her head and looked at Yang Chao and Ning Yushi. She glanced at Ning Yushi a few more times, probably sensing that Ning Yushi might be different, after all, Ning Yushi was going to be the river god. She walked in. I could only follow and ask Yang Chao, is she a fox spirit? After all, he was a Taoist and should have a special way of knowing, maybe he had opened his eyes. She's dirty, but not just ordinary dirt. It should be a kind of mud mixed with herbs that covers her demon aura. This is not something an ordinary strange creature can get. Maybe. Oh, why are you asking me? Isn't the demon revealing mirror in your hands? Yang Chao said. I was speechless. If I rashly used it on her and she found out, it wouldn't be easy to resolve. I decided to let it go and said we should go in first. Yang Chao and Ning Yushi had no objections, so the three of us went in. I brought her a glass of water, and as I got closer to her, I didn't smell any foul odor. I was puzzled and wanted to use the demon revealing mirror on her immediately, but if I did, she would probably turn hostile. She glanced at me, I came to find you. What are they doing here? I briefly explained, saying that Yang Chao's sister had been poisoned. She waved her hand, rudely interrupting me, if she's poisoned, go find someone to cure her. Why are you telling me this? What does it have to do with me? This made Yang Chao a little angry, and he took out his peachwood sword with a slap, say that again? I was speechless and quickly stopped him, and Ning Yushi also pursed her lips, why argue? Can't we talk nicely? You want to scare me with a hundred-year-old peachwood sword? She sneered repeatedly, showing no fear. I was helpless. If this continued, these two might end up fighting, and how could we find clues about the fox's tears? I signaled to Yang Chao, and he snorted and put away the peachwood sword. After all, he had heard my characters clearly. I hesitated for a moment and called her aunt. She glanced at me, don't associate with me. I'm not your aunt. If you want to call me something, call me Hu Qingxi. I was surprised. Was that her name? It sounded quite nice. Where's your mother? Is she still running around while pregnant? Hu Qingxi said. I said she was preparing for the upcoming birth. She snorted, preparing for what? She just needs to exert a little force, and the baby will come out. What else is there to prepare for? If she hadn't said she was pregnant, I wouldn't have given her the severed arm. I understand now. No wonder Feng Chulan was able to get the severed arm back. But according to her, it seems like there was a conflict between two people? Probably, otherwise she wouldn't say that. I didn't know how to respond to this, and she continued, When is she coming back? I said I didn't know. I was actually quite worried because when Feng Chulan went out, it made me feel uneasy. The process of giving birth might not be smooth. Otherwise, she wouldn't have gone out while pregnant. But Hu Qingxi clearly didn't know much, but she seemed to have thought of something, showing confusion but not saying it. Probably she thought of something related to Feng Chulan. I could only ask her why she came. She just looked at me and said, what I say won't be heard by others. I don't know them. It meant that she wanted Yang Chao and Ning Yushi to avoid, and then talk to me alone. Probably she wanted me to calculate something for her. Yang Chao got angry, and I had to quickly say, Auntie, I have a question for you. Ask, Hu Qingxi impatiently waved her hand. Her sister is poisoned and pregnant, and needs to give birth. She needs. What does this have to do with me? Hu Qingxi frowned, and her teeth were showing when she spoke, emitting a cold light. Oomph. You don't want to give me face, do you? Yang Chao suddenly got furious and took out the peach with sword again to stab, and I quickly stopped him. What are you doing? Hu Qingxi narrowed her eyes, Li Chen, continue. I breathed a sigh of relief, fox tears, her sister needs fox tears to suppress the poison. Fox tears, how did you know to ask me? Hu Qingxi stared at me, and in that moment, my scalp tingled. I could only tell her about the matter of the characters. After listening, Hu Qingxi showed a hint of surprise, you calculated this? I nodded and said that it was with Yang Chao's cooperation that I could calculate it. It seems that Feng Chulan is not here, so it's barely acceptable for you to come. Hu Qingxi muttered to herself. I asked if she knew about fox tears. I know, but why should I tell you? Tell. Him. Hu Qingxi's mouth had a cold smile, which was to provoke Yang Chao. Yang Chao got really angry, and with the peachwood sword in hand, he was about to stab again. I couldn't stop him. Hu Qingxi snorted, and suddenly something shot out from her back. It was a huge tail, white and furry, very clean. What is this tail? After this tail came out, because I was holding back Yang Chao, the tail slapped over and directly hit Yang Chao and me. I was in pain, gritting my teeth, and Yang Chao frowned, staring at her tail. Fox? Are you really a fox spirit? Yang Chao showed a surprised look. I was also surprised. How could this be? Why didn't the fox spirit look like a fox spirit? Hu Qingxi had a cold smile at the corner of her mouth, and she retracted her tail, as if nothing had happened just now. Ning Yushi was also stunned, 
completely unable to understand like me. Auntie, cry, and get fox tears. I hurried over and said, Hu Qingxi frowned, cry. You want me to cry? I knew this sounded awkward, but I had no choice. I had calculated the characters, and fox tears could only be obtained from her. If she didn't help, then Yang Chao's sister would definitely not be able to give birth. What do you want? Say it, as long as you give me your fox tears. Yang Chao put away the peachwood sword. He knew that it was definitely not the time to use force, and he came over to speak nicely. What do I want? Do you have the right to say that to me? Hu Qingxi said, and a coldness appeared in Yang Chao's eyes. It seemed that Hu Qingxi didn't want to help anymore. I couldn't force her, and besides, I couldn't force her. I could only ask her why she came. Li Chen, don't expect it. I don't have any tears left, Hu Qingxi said. No tears left? What does that mean? No tears left? Although I said I haven't cried much, when I really want to cry, my tears can come out immediately. Yang Chao frowned, and Ning Yushi couldn't help but ask, why is it gone? When Ning Yushi asked this, both Yang Chao and I looked at Hu Qingxi. Her face was very cold, as if Ning Yushi's question had stirred up something in her heart. After looking at her for a few seconds, I suddenly understood a little bit. She was particularly angry at this time, and the demonic energy on her face showed signs of loosening after being surged by anger. In other words, in just a few seconds, her appearance allowed me to see a little bit. I seized this opportunity and could roughly see something from her appearance. After being surprised, I said, she really has no tears. How is it possible to have none? How can a fox have no tears? Yang Chao didn't believe it. Ning Yushi stared at her eyes without speaking. After hearing my words, Hu Qingxi looked at me in surprise, as if she found me a little pleasing. Yang Chao pulled me aside and asked me what was going on. Ning Yushi also came over curiously. I hesitated for a moment and said, there is something strange about her appearance. What's strange about it? Yang Chao asked. It's strange in the position of her celestial palace, that is, her forehead. There is a deep dark color appearing, like a gully, unable to be filled, and this dark color connects to her children's palace, making the place of her children's palace empty and dark. The place of her children's palace represents children. The appearance of this kind indicates that she once had a child, but it died, died just after birth. I said slowly, died just after birth? Why? Ning Yushi was very surprised. Yang Chao's expression also changed. I shook my head. Just now, her appearance was only revealed a little bit because of anger. I was lucky to see so much, but to analyze the specific reason, it is necessary to mainly look at her fate palace and children's palace. But at this time, I can't see it, because her anger has disappeared, and the loosened demonic energy has covered up her appearance again. My current fortune-telling level is simply impossible to see, unless she cooperates, but is that possible? So you're saying she has no fox tears? Yang Chao asked. I nodded, that's roughly the situation. Just now, I saw the dark color on her celestial palace, which, in addition to connecting to the children's palace, also had a trace connecting to her eyes, that is, her tear gland, indicating that she was particularly sad at that time, which led to her tears drying up. She did not lie. She really has no fox tears. I also felt a little complicated. Her bad temper is understandable. She was just about to become a mother but the child she gave birth to died. This is something that any woman cannot bear. Her tear glands were broken by sadness. Regardless of anything else, at least she is a good mother. But how could the child die just after birth? I asked quietly. After a moment of silence, Yang Chao sighed and looked dejected. If it's not for any other reason, then it's a divine punishment. Usually, animals that reproduce quickly, such as mice, will have divine punishment every few years to reduce their numbers. But there should be no divine punishment for foxes, after all, their numbers are not too many. He said with a sigh, and went to the room to find his sister, probably to try other methods. Ning Yushi looked at Hu Qingxi from a distance without saying anything. I hesitated for a moment and walked over. Did you just look at my appearance? Hu Qingxi asked me, otherwise how could I know? I nodded. After a moment of silence, a hint of sadness slowly appeared in her eyes, but no tears came out. I was pregnant with a son, it was particularly hard. When I gave birth that day, I was overjoyed, I wanted to tell the whole world, but I didn't expect that he died on the night he was born, she said with a hint of bitterness in her tone. I was surprised to hear that, according to her appearance, even if she was exhausted, she would take good care of the baby after giving birth. But in this situation, the baby actually died. I asked how did the baby die. She shook her head, I don't know. I fell asleep holding him, and when I woke up, he was dead, no breath, no matter how I tried, I couldn't save him. She seemed to recall the scene at that time, showing her pain. Obviously, she was so desperate at that time. Was he killed? Ning Yushi couldn't help but come over. 
Indeed, this was the only possibility, but in front of a joyful mother, killing her child, and doing it unnoticed, this was too bizarre. Yes, he was killed, Hu Qingxi said coldly. How was he killed? I and Ning Yushi asked at the same time. Hu Qingxi didn't answer my question, but looked up at me. Do you know what your mother Feng Chulan is doing? She suddenly said this, making me feel a knot in my heart. Aunt, what do you mean? Thinking of the worried look when Feng Chulan left, could it be that her daughter would also die shortly after birth, just like Hu Qingxi's son? I dared not think further. What was going on? Hu Qingxi's son died. Why would Feng Chulan's daughter also die? What was the connection between the two? There was no connection at all. What I mean is what you are thinking now, Hu Qingxi said. I took a deep breath, feeling shocked, and Ning Yushi looked at me, Li Chen, what are you thinking? My mother is pregnant, she is pregnant with a daughter, could it be? I couldn't suppress it. Yes, she can give birth, but can only live for one day, Hu Qingxi said. I completely didn't understand, why would it be like this? Did Feng Chulan and Hu Qingxi do something together? Who was retaliating? Born and then died? Feng Chulan's due date should be in a month, Hu Qingxi said. I was surprised, wasn't it still two or three months away? What's going on? I am a fox, I can give birth directly, but Feng Chulan's true form is different, I am a little envious of her true form now, she will give birth to something. You can't imagine, and then you will know, it's basically the same time as you said, it's also considered two or three months. Hu Qingxi stopped here. I was confused and wanted to ask more, but she shook her head, I don't want to mention Feng Chulan too much, and also, I came to find you, not to talk about her. This made me helpless. I could only ask other questions. She didn't want to mention this matter, as if she was avoiding something, and very much so. Feng Chulan is also bold, knowing that I have this precedent, she actually dared to get pregnant. Her tone was a bit cold, but there was also a hint of resentment, as if she didn't understand why Feng Chulan would do this, but when it came to deep feelings, the fruit of love was nothing unusual. After all, she had been staying at home for so many years, and it was not very normal for her to have an encounter when she went out this time, right? I understood, but I didn't expect the situation to be so serious. There must have been something done, and it brought back such serious consequences. Let's see if Feng Chulan can find a solution this time she goes out. You are worried in your heart, it's probably difficult, otherwise she wouldn't have gone out as soon as she got pregnant. Calculate for me, she said. I nodded, wanting her to remove the demonic aura from her face so I could see, but she shook her head, and her hand reached out again, you can't see much from my facial features, but you are good at palmistry, continue to read my palm. I nodded and asked her what she wanted to calculate. I looked at her hand at the same time. Last time, I saw that she was guarding the female corpse, that belonged to the career line, this time she definitely wasn't looking at her career, nor was it the love line, she didn't even have tears, how could she still be concerned about marriage? So it was only the lifeline. I held her hand and saw that her lifeline was rugged and bumpy. Why did I say that? Because her lifeline seems to have been injured, cut six times, it's really strange. Her lifeline has been cut six times, which means she has died six times. How is that possible? She is a spirit, but even spirits cannot come back to life after death. How did she do it? Do you see anything? Hu Qingxi asked me. I hesitated for a moment and told her what I saw. Go on, Hu Qingxi looked surprised. I paused, your lifeline. I said something, suddenly thought of something, was shocked in my heart. Ning Yushi looked at me with this expression and asked me what was wrong. I took a deep breath, stared at Hu Qingxi, Auntie, your true form is a fox, so how many tails do you have? How many do you think I have? Hu Qingxi asked me back. Foxes usually only have one tail. But some spirits can grow extra tails, three tails, five tails, six tails, and even nine tails. It is said that having an extra tail is like having an extra life, similar to a cat having nine lives. As I said this, Ning Yushi was surprised, and Hu Qingxi nodded, you're basically right. Usually, we foxes only have one tail. As our cultivation level increases, we can grow extra tails, but it's very difficult. And you also said something wrong just now. What did I say wrong? I asked subconsciously. Every time we foxes grow an extra tail, it doesn't mean we have an extra life, but it means we are one step closer to becoming an immortal, Hu Qingxi said. I was surprised, is there nothing else? Yes, why isn't there an extra life? Ning Yushi couldn't help asking. Hu Qingxi looked at Ning Yushi and said, because of the heavenly laws and the power of the rules, in this situation, it is impossible for us foxes to have extra lives. Whether it's humans or us spirits, we only have one life. If we had an extra tail, it would mean an extra life and I think the underworld would have many people voluntarily choosing to be reborn as animals. What she said made sense. But don't cats have nine lives? Ning Yushi asked. No, they only have one, it's just that cats have strong vitality, 
which makes people think they have nine lives, Hu Qingxi said simply. In other words, they have strong life force, which makes people mistakenly think they have nine lives. So, auntie, how many do you have now? I asked. Six, Ning Yushi was surprised, so many? Still more? Do you know how many years it took me to grow six tails? Hu Qingxi asked back. How would I know? But a six-tailed spirit fox is already very powerful, but the ultimate goal is to become a nine-tailed spirit fox, right? Ning Yushi said with a sneer. Yes, with nine tails, it's basically one step away from becoming an immortal, Hu Qingxi said with emotion. It seems that she was the only one who knew the bitterness behind being able to grow six tails. But I heard that the nine-tailed spirit fox is one of the four most beautiful women in the world. You are now a rare six-tailed one, so? Ning Yushi looked expectant. I subconsciously looked at her. Could it be that she also used magic to conceal her features? According to Ning Yushi's words, it was true. The nine-tailed spirit fox should be an extremely beautiful woman, and she already had six tails, so she shouldn't be far off, right? Hu Qingxi looked at her and said, you're not simple either, to be able to become a river god at such a young age. Without any other reason, being able to become a river god of a small stinking ditch is already extraordinary. What is your identity, and what are you hiding? Ning Yushi was stunned, shook her head and said she wasn't hiding anything. Hu Qingxi continued to look at her, Ning Yushi coughed, I glanced at her, she said she wasn't hiding anything, I didn't bother to ask. How could her identity be simple when there were blurry characters behind her, just like me? I said to Hu Qingxi seriously, what you are showing me now is when will the seventh tale come out, right? Yes, that's what I'm showing you. Your mother is unreliable and can't see it. She said, I'm speechless. If even Feng Chulan can't see it, how can I? I guess Feng Chulan doesn't want to talk about it. Maybe she hasn't even looked at it, or maybe she's too embarrassed to ask. I had to look carefully, and suddenly I was a bit surprised. Just before the sixth break in her lifeline, there was indeed a faint crack, indicating the appearance of the seventh tail, but this crack had a hint of darkness, suggesting that when the seventh tail grows out, the situation won't be good, something will happen. I said this, and Hu Qingxi seemed to have known already, yes, do you think I grow a tail at a certain time? I instinctively nodded, isn't it like that? No, it's the thunder tribulation, the spirit monster tribulation that can do it. I only gained my six tails after passing through six thunder tribulations, Hu Qingxi said, her tone particularly calm. But in my opinion, it's definitely not simple, after all, when watching the news, there are some snakes that were struck by lightning and died, is that also a tribulation? The most famous one should be in 1995, when a particularly large python in Huangshan was struck by lightning and died. I asked, and she nodded, it's almost the same. Do you think the thunder god and the electric mother strike lightning for no reason? Let me tell you, when there's a raging storm, lightning and thunder, there's basically a spirit monster undergoing tribulation. If successful, they'll survive, if not, they might end up like what you just mentioned in the news. Not successful means death? The snake you mentioned did indeed die from tribulation, quite unlucky. I heard that on that day, the thunder god and the electric mother who were executing the tribulation were scolded by the jade emperor, others said it was the queen mother who scolded them, anyway, it's probably the situation. They were in a bad mood, so when the lightning struck, it was a bit too heavy and killed this python. I know this python, but not very well, Hu Qingxi said. Is it that unlucky? Why were the thunder god and the electric mother like that? Ning Yushi couldn't believe it, and I also felt a bit sorry for the Huangshan Python. This can only be considered their own bad luck, there's no way around it, Hu Qingxi seemed calm. That's the only way to put it, otherwise, would you go to heaven to complain? So after this thunder tribulation, did you grow the seventh tail? I asked. Yes, that's why I asked you to take a look. What are the chances that I'll pass through it, and is there a possibility of encountering the thunder god and the electric mother in a bad mood again? Hu Qingxi asked. I couldn't see that. The thunder god and the electric mother are immortals, how could I see that? I can only say that I can see it from the aspect of her luck. The dark color of this crack isn't too dark, so it should be unlikely for the thunder god and the electric mother to be in a bad mood. As for the chances, I looked at it and felt that there was a 30% possibility, which is quite low. I hesitated for a moment and said it. I thought she would be more worried, but she breathed a sigh of relief, 30%? That's good, I thought it was only 1 or 2%. So low? Ning Yushi asked. Lo, this probability is already considered high. Usually, even a very successful tribulation only has a 20% chance. When your mother underwent tribulation last time, it was also only 20%. I was surprised, and Ning Yushi was speechless and had nothing to say. Alright, you've made me feel a bit more at ease. I owe you a favor. 
If you need anything, you can find me, she took out a carved jade plaque, it looked very ancient, and I instinctively thought about how much it could be sold for. After all, it's an antique, right? Don't think about selling it, if you do, I'll find you. Hu Qingxi stood up, and I suddenly felt embarrassed. Can she read minds? I quickly put it away and asked how to find her. She said to just shout three times at the jade pendant. I nodded, it's also a reassuring thing to have, after all, a six-tailed spirit fox must be very powerful, right? Hu Qingxi was about to leave, and at this moment, Yang Chao helped his sister out. His sister's face was pale, enduring pain. Hu Qingxi frowned, what's the meaning of this? I said, I have no tears left. I know, do you know any other foxes? Yang Chao said, his tone much better, Hu Qingxi glanced at his sister, you're due in just over two months? You're too deeply poisoned. It's useless to give birth. If your child doesn't die, you will. Is it necessary to do this? My, my husband is dead. What will happen if both my child and I die? Yang Chao's sister sighed. I can understand this. Hu Qingxi said that if the mother dies, there will be no one to take care of the child, so it's better to die together, so the child won't suffer. But Yang Chao's sister wants to give birth, as a way to leave something behind for her husband. Hu Qingxi coldly snorted, stubborn, who will take care of your child if you give birth? I, I'm not dead, Yang Chao said. You, it's not that I underestimate you, but why should you? Hu Qingxi asked. Yang Chao wanted to speak, but his sister shook her head and knelt down directly. I was surprised to see this. Hu Qingxi frowned, being a woman like you is really embarrassing. Don't be a woman in your next life, she said as she walked outside. I hesitated for a moment and followed her out. Hu Qingxi looked back at me, you care about her, the one in Feng Chulun's belly, and now you don't care? I was surprised to hear this. Right, there's Feng Chulun. Just now, Hu Qingxi mentioned the approximate time for Feng Chulun. So how should I prepare? After all, Hu Qingxi's child died as soon as it was born. If Feng Chulun is not prepared enough, she will most likely follow in Hu Qingxi's footsteps. When I first heard that Feng Chulun was pregnant, I was very happy. After all, I suddenly had a sister, so naturally I was overjoyed. But today, Hu Qingxi told me that the situation is not as I thought. I became very anxious when I thought about this. I asked her what to do. Hu Qingxi looked at me and said, It depends on what preparations Feng Chulan has made. I was helpless. What preparations could be made? Hu Qingxi didn't reveal much at all. She only said that her child died as soon as she woke up, and that it was killed. But how was it killed? By whom? These questions made me increasingly uneasy. I was worried that Feng Chulan had just started a new life, but her daughter was about to die as soon as she was born. She must be heartbroken and devastated. I asked if there was anything I could do. She looked at me and said bluntly, You? No. Why? I asked. At least I could help a little, rather than not being able to do anything at all. Your abilities are too weak. If you were a level 5 or 6 fortune teller, maybe you could help her, but now, not causing trouble for her is already good enough, Hu Qingxi said. I was speechless at her words. I am only a level 1 fortune teller now. How could I possibly reach level 5 or 6 in just a few days? Even if I were a deity, it would be impossible. So I can't help with anything now? I asked. Yes, you can't help with anything, Hu Qingxi replied just as bluntly. I felt complicated. I didn't know what to say. Feng Chulan raised me, and now, at her most difficult time, I am powerless. I wanted to do something, but I didn't know where to start. This powerlessness made me silent. Hu Qingxi glanced at Yang Chao and his sister in the room, snorted, and was about to leave. I stopped her and took out the jade pendant she had given me earlier. She was stunned, then squinted her eyes and asked coldly, You want to use it now? Are you sure? I couldn't do anything else, so I could only help Yang Chao first. Yes, I nodded. Hu Qingxi reached out to take back the jade pendant. She hesitated for a moment, then stopped the motion. She didn't touch the jade pendant and impatiently said, So annoying. If it were before, I could give it to you. I could even give you a bottle in a few minutes. But now, I don't have any fox tears. If you want mine, I definitely don't have any. Just wait for it. After saying that, she turned and left, quickly disappearing into the night. I breathed a sigh of relief. She seemed to have agreed, although she didn't explicitly say so. She mentioned that she didn't have it, but she knew other fox spirits who could provide the fox tears. I lowered my head and looked at the jade pendant in my hand, then put it away. I turned and went back inside the house, and told Yang Chao. He immediately breathed a sigh of relief, and I asked him to take his sister back to the room to rest. He nodded. I didn't expect Hu Qingxi to agree, didn't expect it, Ning Yushi muttered, probably tired, and her body emitted white smoke as she entered the spirit card. I didn't expect it either, but all I could do was wait. 
I returned to the room to rest, and Yang Chao still slept on the floor. I thought when Hu Qingxi said wait, she would bring the fox tears the next day, but what surprised me was that the next day, I got up early and waited until midnight, but Hu Qingxi didn't come back. The same thing happened on the third and fourth days. Yang Chao was getting more and more anxious because his sister's condition was worsening. It wasn't until the ninth day that his eyes were bloodshot as he told me he couldn't wait any longer. His sister's condition had worsened, and if they didn't find a solution soon, she might not make it. He drove her to a friend's place to try to stabilize her condition. I nodded, but Yang Chao's departure made me anxious, and all I could do was continue to wait. According to Hu Qingxi's personality, once she agreed, she shouldn't go back on her word. She should have gone to find her friend, but why was it taking so long? It was already the 15th day, and the day before, Guo Tingting said she had introduced a fortune teller to me, but I had to go to the city and I didn't have time, so I declined. What if Hu Qingxi came back with the fox tears while I was away? She would be angry if she saw I wasn't waiting properly, and might even leave with the fox tears. Guo Tingting said I would lose thousands, maybe even tens of thousands. I smiled bitterly. There was nothing I could do. I had to stay at home. I continued to wait in the shop, and Yang Chao had just called to ask if I was back yet. I said no, and he hung up disappointed. It seemed the situation was particularly bad. I lit incense for Ning Yushi and made some food in the kitchen, then ate quickly and returned to the shop. Ning Yushi kept talking in my ear until late at night, and I told her if she kept bothering me, she would have to leave. She obediently flew back into the spirit card, sighing slightly. I glanced at her spirit card, and she fell silent. When it was midnight and time to close the shop, I suddenly saw a figure approaching in the distance in the dark night. As I squinted to see, I felt a chill beside me, and Ning Yushi flew out of the spirit card and formed next to me, muttering, finally, she's here. I breathed a sigh of relief. As the figure in the dark night came closer, I saw clearly that it was indeed the untidy Hu Qingxi. I hurried over and called out, Auntie. She glanced at me, her face not looking too good, as if she had been busy with this matter for the past 15 days, day, and night. She didn't say anything, but turned and took out a small white bottle. The cap was still on, but a special fragrance emanated from it. Was this the fox tears? Take it, she said coldly. I instinctively took it and asked her to come inside and rest for a while, and also to tell me what had happened in these 15 days, why it took so long. But she ignored me, turned and left, muttering, is there anything good to rest in your house? I was speechless and could only say thank you to her retreating figure. She didn't respond and had already walked far away, disappearing into the night, probably tired and going home to rest. Now that I had the fox tears, I immediately called Yang Chao. When I told him about it, he was overjoyed and said it was great. I asked about his sister's condition. He fell silent for a moment, then said, not too good. I said, then don't come over, I'll send it to you overnight, just send me your location. Okay. The call ended, and soon Yang Chao sent a location over. I took a look, it wasn't too far, about a hundred kilometers. At this point, the only option was to find a taxi. But there were no taxis in our village. I could only ride an electric bike to the city and find a taxi to go overnight. I found a place to park the electric bike. With that in mind, I turned and went into the house. Ning Yushi asked if I needed help. I glanced at her and thought, with her speed, could she push me to Yang Chao's place while I ride the electric bike? I asked, and also mentioned the distance. She nodded, of course I can, I'm very fast, I just worry that you might be scared. This has nothing to do with being scared. I don't even have a helmet, and it's still an electric bike. It goes up to 80 or 90 kilometers per hour, and everyone would be worried. But since she said so, I could avoid trouble. I agreed, quickly packed some things, took some cash, and pushed the electric bike out, closing the door behind me. Ning Yushi flew up behind me, pushing my back. This time, she slowly accelerated, and I was somewhat mentally prepared. When she pushed me to the village entrance, she suddenly stopped. I turned around and asked her what was wrong. Did she forget something? She shook her head. It seems like your mother is back. What? I was suddenly surprised and quickly looked over. Sure enough, I soon saw a figure in the distance. The figure slowly approached, touching her swollen belly. It was actually Feng Chulan.